Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Traders Corner Stocks and Options Special Online Trading Summit. We have an incredible lineup today. On our panel, we've handpicked six professional trading experts of the highest caliber who are all recognized as professional stocks or options traders and analysts. We all witnessed just yesterday the Fed raising interest rates to the highest levels in 20 years. The good news, our panelists have agreed to share their insights on how to monetize the current market environment and also share with you their most consistent and profitable trading strategies in today's live event. Just as an ad lib, I am going to put a link to our YouTube channel in the chat because I get a lot of questions about if we're recorded or if replays are available, and that will be a great place to find replays and you know recordings of our presenters' presentations. But let, let's not waste any more time. Today's show is packed with great information. Our first presenter is a true expert on trading the markets. He was inducted into the Traders Hall of Fame in 2007. You've probably seen him appear on CNBC, Fox News, and Bloomberg Television. He's the founder of BigTrends.com, which provides investors with specific real-time stocks and option strategies and investment education to profit from significant market trends. Here to present how to trade same-week options in 48 hours or less is Mr. Price Headley. Welcome back to Traders Corner, Price. Oh, hey, Rob. Oh, great to be back with you, and good afternoon, everybody. Always a pleasure. Actually, uh, yeah, I want to walk you through a strategy that's really been hitting kind of on all cylinders today, and that's using the cheaper options, the $1 options, how you can make up to a quadruple, up to 300% on your money. We're going to share with you how we kind of scale out of winners, sort of gradually. A lot of traders take their winners too quick, let their losers run too long. We want you to do the opposite. We want you to get rid of your losers relatively quickly, and when a trade's working, we want you to take some money off the table at certain objectives, but we want to leave some on to let it keep working, because the good ones usually keep working longer than you expect. The bad ones usually don't turn around for you like we all would hope, so it's better to cut and run quickly on losers, let those winners run. So as we get rolling on it, just uh, want to remind you that the information provided in today's presentation is based on our proprietary research, and it's intended for illustrated purposes only. What we talk about here should not be considered specific advisory recommendations. As you know, stock and options trading have large potential rewards, but also large potential risk. The past performance of any trading system or methodology is not necessarily indicative of future results. You can see our terms of use on our bigtrends.com homepage for more information here. So with that understood, if you don't know me, I've been blessed to be trading the markets for over 33 years in stocks and options. Soon after graduate, I caught the trading bug actually while I was at Duke University and after graduating from there, I uh, was the head of research for the nation's largest options newsletter and then started bigtrends.com in 1999. So uh, we'll have our 24th anniversary this November. Uh, blessed to be inducted into Traders Hall of Fame with a lot of trading giants. And my goal for you is to kind of give you kind of the key lessons of what's worked for me over all this time so you can get a, a true shortcut to a faster, easier way to trade options effectively and cheaply with the strategy I'm going to teach you about today. But it's all about having a clear strategy that gives you a specific quantitative edge taking those trades steadily over time. Don't you ever try to get rich quick off of just one trade. Don't load the boat. There's no room for an all-in strategy here in trading. Uh, so bottom line is that we're going to walk you through what I call my favorite home run option strategy. It's actually called Grand Slam options. As you know, a Grand Slam of baseball is when the bases are loaded, you hit a home run, all four runs come in at once and one swing of the bat, right? So we want to walk you through my top two indicators to find these low-priced options. These are options that are priced for a buck or less a contract, meaning one options contract controlling 100 shares can be purchased, often on the big name tech stocks that could cost you tens of thousands, can be purchased for a hundred bucks or less. So you get tremendous leverage with a strategy. And so we'll walk you through a number of success stories and charts, of course, and how we scale out of these trades at doubles, triples, and then our final target would be 300% gainers. Uh, and show you how you can use this all-star strategy for not just the rest of 2023, but once you kind of get your feet wet with it, how you can then implement it in, into, uh, into the coming years and, and decades as well. So let's get into the charts. Let's get into the examples and start with a recent winner on eBay. You know, eBay as the online auction leader uh, is a classic example of a name that really checked the boxes for us. Now, what we've got on this chart, kind of classic candle chart, green candles mean we close higher than we open on that bar. These are hourly candles. So we're looking at every 60 minutes interval, right? So if we get our first signal, 
first signals for us on a given trading day don't come at the market open at 9.30. They come at the close of that first hour, potentially, which is 10.30 Eastern time. Uh, so the idea is that, okay, you know, we want to see that the market is starting to pick up. And we want to see it on two key indicators here on our hourly part of our grand sum option system. The first one is called the Williams percent R or percent range indicator. And then the other one in the blue line here is called the CCI, the Commodity Channel Index. We use it on big name stocks as well. So when both of these were surging into their overbought territories on the same exact hourly close, that was happening here back on July the 3rd, okay? So that was right there before the July 4th holiday. Notice where eBay was trading in the neighborhood here of about 45 bucks a share, right? 100 shares that would cost you $4,500. We bought um, option contracts at an average entry price of 84 cents. It's $84. So you're talking about a, a 50 to one plus leverage ratio against the underlying stock value. And you can pay 84 bucks a contract to control $4,500 worth of stock. So the idea here is, that, okay, notice the strike price we bought in the time frame that we bought out. We usually buy about a month out. So we were buying the August monthlies. And by the way, these options still exist, but they are not being recommended currently very close to trade out at our targets. So, so the idea here is that we bought about a month out or actually closer to six weeks out because, you know, the August expiration is August the 18th or the third Friday in August. Well, you know, we were buying it July 3rd, six weeks out, and we're saying, okay, we're buying a little out of the money in these examples. So to, in order to buy an option under $100 a contract with six weeks to go before it expires, typically you're going to have to go out of the money. And so the idea here is that, okay, when we look at this and say, um, you know, how are we focusing on uh, getting leverage, it's as it goes from out of the money to at the money is 47 and a half to then in the money above that is where you start to really get paid. But you don't have to see it even go in the money. In this case, the trade went to about the strike price or just under what got to about 47 bucks. And we said, you know what, the earnings are coming out, or in this case, I'm sorry, what earnings, it was CPI risk. We didn't want to take on the event risk of the CPI data possibly gapping us in the wrong direction, the consumer price index inflation data. So we sold our first half at a, at a double target. That's always the first rule in this system. And in a lot of my big uh, win systems, it's sell the first piece out where you can get your risk capital back into your portfolio. So think about this. If, if we're investing a thousand bucks, well, you know, say for example, a 10 lot would cost you 840 bucks, right? 84 bucks a contract. If you're controlling a thousand shares of stock for 840 bucks, or in this example, we we're controlling close to like 12 contracts for right about a um, thousand bucks invested. We're saying, okay, you know, when we can sell half of our contracts out at that double or better, in this case, we made slightly better than that 100% gain, 102% and change. Okay, we bought it for 84 cents. We're exiting out around uh i think it was about a buck 70 okay so we made like 86 cents but the point being that you know make a double sell half your contracts that if you put a thousand bucks in now it's worth two thousand at a double take half of that money off the table and put that original risk capital back into your pocket into your account in the safety of cash right the idea of that being that when you do that you're going to be not only financially in a quote unquote free trade where you have no more financial risk in the trade. Um, some people call it the market's money. I've never liked that concept because it's still your money, right? You still have the chance to make even more and you need to manage that other half effectively. We're usually gonna target then a triple on the next half of our remaining position and then the quadruple, the 300% gain on the final piece of the position. But in this case, we took the other half out just under a double. So the whole trade averaged a double we took our other half of our position off at 97.6%. All this took a total of five trading days. But a big principle of this system is that you don't want to be wrong for very long. You can see that initially it was kind of flattish, then it was slightly wrong, and then it started to come back up here. All in a matter of a few days, we're basically flat. So we don't want to be wrong for long, but you can see then we start going profitable. And, and what the big theme of this is that usually overbought will stay more and more overbought and that's what people lose sight of when you hear the term overbought and most people think that overbought is bad but my experience is that when both of these signal together like they did back here july 3rd morning of july 3rd we said look 
we've got a signal that this thing's ready to go to the upside. It was a market-based dip there a couple of days later on the 6th, and then eBay got it all back real quickly over that next session and a half. But the point being that notice, the stock only rallied from 45 to 47 bucks, right? So it's rallied two bucks or less than 5%, closer to about four and a half percent. And you say, okay, the stock's rallied four to four and a half percent and we made a hundred percent on the option, right? So we're in that neighborhood of about a 20 to 25 times leverage against the underlying stock for a week's work, right? We were, we were basically not gonna hang around uh, longer than about, in this case, that week. And so we've only lost one out of the six weeks of time. There's still five weeks of time left in this option as it sits near the money now. And regardless of what happens to eBay since, the, the principle is we've got our double and we basically sold half and then we took the other half off a little early for us on the second half because we didn't want the event risk, right? If you look at, uh, you know, since then, of course, eBay is now at 44.6, down four bucks today, right? So the point is, is that, look, we captured the sweet spot, we took the money and ran, and are happy to take a double in a week. So a big part of the reason I've been able to trade stock options effectively over more than three decades is I'm a big believer that greed is not good, okay? The, the, the Gordon Gecko quote from the movie Wall Street, which is a great movie, um, it said, you know, this, Michael Douglas played this uh, kind of uh, Carl Iconis character where he said in this in this movie greed is good um, and and the bottom line is that it's not good greed is not your friend fear and greed have no place in your trading you must banish your emotions this is why I say when you become a subscriber to Grand Slam options first rule for all new subscribers is don't try to get all your money back off of what you spent on the service in the next trade obviously um, we're going to make it super attractive where you can get it back and many more times that off of one trade. But the idea is that, look, start small. Look at this as a longer term process to being more effective in your options trading. By the way, let me ask you all a quick question uh, while, while I just get some feedback about how long you may have traded options. Just type a number in your chat box about how many years you've been trading options. If you've never traded an option, type a zero. If in your first year, type a one. If you've been trading for 20 years, type a 20. I'd love to know what type of experience level we have in these events and we've got some folks quick fingers there with that have been trading three five ten another ten years so zero okay if you're new to options don't sweat it i don't name names because i don't want to put anybody on the spot but the idea is that okay you're new to options another one new to options another 20 years so we've got a wide range of experience but the point is is that this is incredibly simple to execute let's look at one that hit all three of its targets here thanks for the feedback by the way um because I like to keep it simple for new subscribers, but also if you've been trading a while, you may say, why is this working? Well, one of the reasons this is working is because volatility levels are now down at actually multi-year lows. We're sitting at a VIX, vol CBOE volatility index, down in the 13 to 14 range. And yet the market keeps charging ahead. So you're actually able to buy relatively cheap options and get strong trend moves in very short windows of time. Your leverage is just that much better in the kind of environment we're in right now. That's why I wanted to tell you about this strategy today. Um, so that 100% gains is wonderful, but it's not the maximum. Let's look at one that got all three targets. This is an example on advanced micro devices, AMD. It's become really the go-to chip stock outside of NVIDIA, right? But NVIDIA's options are incredibly expensive, right? You gotta go super far out of the money to buy an option under a buck on NVIDIA. Well, with AMD trading, when we got that signal here, again, first, hours out of the box it's a lot of the time where we'll get our first signal this one had had this huge first uh green candle up now a lot of you would look at this green candle and say hold on yesterday the stock was in the low 80s and now you're telling me to buy it at 86 bucks you've missed the move and i say no you've seen a rocket taking off a space shuttle taking off that needs to have that first thrust wave right and then it keeps on coasting on its own momentum for quite a while, right? So you, but you got to get enough thrust to get it out of out of the Earth's gravitational field and get it into orbit where it can coast, right? So we get the first thrust in this one, and here's a great example where we got the first thrust, and then it just paused. You know, this is called a flag pattern where it just goes sideways, right? Waving in the wind, nothing happening. A lot of traders will lose patience 
with his first day to day and a half's move being sideways after getting into an out of the money option because they think, oh no, I can't wait around very long if I'm buying it. In this case, a 105 strike call that was more than 20% out of the money when we bought it, saying, look, um, it we're just about 20%. Let's say, okay, we paid 84 cents, 84 bucks a contract. And so we need to get that first target up there about a, uh, was about a buck, uh, what was that, about a buck uh, 70. And then we got it the into the beginning of the uh, 48 hours after we got in, right? The beginning of the day after entry, right? We got in on uh, the 14th, got out on the 16th. And you can see here that back in March, and this in this case, that the point is, is that while this thing went overbought, especially on the CCI, you see how it stayed in that overbought territory and never really even retested. We had what we call a retest happening here on the percent R right at that short-term low later that same day we were in. We want to see those little pullbacks out of the overbought mode hold up you know, that we shouldn't see it really break down per se. First target, 102% as the stock's moving up to about 92. Then it moves up to about 95. Notice we're still well out of the money, right? But we're getting closer to the strike price. We're now, we've gone from nearly 20 points out of the money to about 10 points out of the money. And now we're taking our second target in here at 203%. Then it spikes up to about 98, 99. Now it's about five or six points out of the money here. We're getting our final target, 300% plus, 304% officially. All of this took a whopping three trading days, right? So when you can find speed of movement, you don't have to hold on to the bitter end. In fact, you never want to with out of the money options purchasing, right? We bought it March 14th. We had a month to go before the expiration. We're out after just three trading days with plenty of time left in that thing. So what's happening here is essentially you're buying time value and you're getting rewarded for the fact that now as the, as the stock gets closer to the strike price that we purchase, those options are becoming more and more valuable. If you don't know much about options, the idea is that you know what the most expensive option is in terms of time value, it is the at the money option. So as you go from out of the money or well out of the money to closer to at the money near the near the strike price, that's where you're getting a, a huge inflation in the time premium, right? So by buying it at 84 cents, and then when it got within about five or six points of the strike price, we sold out that final piece at a four bagger, meaning more than three bucks is what the option was trading. And you say, how can an option be trading for three or three and a half bucks when it's still out of the money. Well, it still has three and a half weeks to go before its expiration. There's a lot of traders who are willing to speculate that as that thing moves on into the money, they can get further paid on that. We're happy to unload it to them and take our 100, 200, 300% profit targets out, especially in 72 hours or less. So in this case, it was a great example where, look, we're catching that breakout and it's staying overbought. So if there's one theme I want you to take away from today's presentation, it's that, overbought is not bad and in fact it can be powerfully good as that situation stays overbought that's why i use more than one indicator both the percent r and the cci giving us that now sometimes they don't get all of its all of its targets and so we do have trailing stops once we get to a double on the first piece we don't put a price stop in initially we put a time stop in after uh, two or three days in these trades where we say okay look if it's not working fairly quickly we will time stop a trade it's so, okay, we gave it a chance. It's not firing. Let's get out um, a few days into the trade. But in this case, look at another great example of overbought staying overbought on Intel, right? And again, need that first catalyst rocket launch bar the first hour, right? Intel has gone from 31 to 32 and a half. You say, oh no, how many times do you feel like you missed it? You look back and say, actually, if I'd just been, had the confidence to pull the trigger after that first breakout, there was a lot more meat on the bone. Right at 32 and a half, look what we were buying June the 12th. Um, we were buying the, the July 35 strike calls. So they're only two and a half points out of the money, right? Compared to NVIDIA, where you'd have to go like way, way out of the money. Here we're going two and a half points, or basically about six and a half, seven percent, maybe eight percent out of the money, seven percent out of the money or so, uh, seven to eight percent. And you say, okay, look to go just seven and a half percent out of the money give or take and and pay 81 bucks a contract obviously the stock's trading for 32 and a half so 100 shares only cost you 3250 dollars 
But again, we're still in the 40 to one leverage range. That's plenty of leverage. It's not like you have to get multi hundreds of, of times leverage. The beauty of this though is look at the persistence. And, and this is where I kind of, I know Larry Williams, he's a great trader and, and he developed a percent range, percent R indicator, Williams percent R, you'll see it as on a lot of platforms. But I actually like to kind of say the way we use it at Big Trends is when percent R changes and it really should be called percent T. What does percent T mean? Well, we've gone out of the range and you know it's not a range anymore when you keep making higher and higher highs, right? You can see it on the chart here and you're making higher lows. What's that called? That's called an uptrend, right? The percent T phase is as it stays in the top 20% of its readings above the 80th percentile. This is the 80-20 rule in action, right? 20% of your trades are gonna drive 80% of your profits. That 80-20 rule works for trading too. And you can see the CCI is actually giving us multiple points where it's giving us what we call a retest as well, where it's holding into these pullback lows until it doesn't, right? Starts to actually break down off of this slam down here. And this is where our trailing stop got hit on that, on that, what if those candle followers out there know what that's called, right? It's an outside day in traditional terms, a bearish outside day, it's a bearish engulfing pattern if you're a candle follower. We're out kind of in the middle of that bar because it's it's too much of a give back. So we end up getting out probably closer to about 35 and a half, 36. And you see the stock tanks back down the next couple of days because they announced plans to build a multi-billion dollar chip foundry that Wall Street voted and not so interested in all that cost outlay for Intel. We were already out. It didn't have to endure the that decline. So notice we got the first target out. 103% here as it moved up near the strike price, right? It's near 34 and a half, 35 on that first move. Goes a little bit in the money in this case because it's a cheaper, cheaper stock, cheaper options, and we're up to 36. We're a whopping one point in the money. We're selling it for about $2.40 to 245, and we're getting out there at that second piece. And then we don't quite get. We got really close. It got up to 37. We almost got these options up to that 325-ish range but it only traded about, I think, 310 or so. We just missed our 300% target. And our rule is we wanna protect our profits by giving back no more than about 100 percentage points off of that peak. And so we got out at 166% on the final piece. Still averaged out really well to where we're, we're making a tremendous bang for our buck. All this took a whopping five trading days, one full calendar week uh, there back in mid-June. So the beauty again of this is that, look, we're, we're trading an option that's got a month or more of time left typically. We're just usually in these trades about a week or so, give or take. It could be up to two weeks. It could be a two, one or two or three days. We're usually not day trading though, so it could be two or three days. But the idea is that, look, when we get a double, we take half out. We get a triple, we take the next piece out. We get a quadruple, we take the final piece out. And they don't always work. So I've, I, I, I feel like, you've got to remind yourself that there's going to be losing trades, right? This is geared around winning a lot bigger and losing a lot smaller. So the idea here is that this was an IBM trade that I thought looked really good and, and I was very confident in. It doesn't matter how confident I was in it. I invest the same amount of money in it that I would invest in any other trade. The first hour close there, stocks trading near 140. What do we have to buy? We had to go out to the about six weeks ago before expiration by the December monthlies, the 150 strike calls, 10 points out of the money, about seven and a half percent out of the money. Again, here, we paid an average of 70 cents, 70 bucks a contract to control 100 shares of stock that would have cost us 14 grand. Your leverage in theory here is like 200 to one, right? Compared to the underlying stock, that gets a lot of people uh, uh, really excited about a trade, but that shouldn't be the only reason you place a trade. And what should have happened when IBM came in for the first retest here later that day, should have held this 139 level based on our percent R retests. Um, but you see the next day, it actually opened lower and closed below that level, closer to 138. So we're going, we bought it at 140. It went down two bucks to 138. The stock's wrong by about a percent and a half. We're going to go ahead and take our nearly 23% loss and say we're taking our 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 chips off the table, we're admitting that it was not working and we're and we're going back to cash and looking to play somewhere else with a better profile. Yes, in this case, it did gap back up the following day, but you know what? If it doesn't fit your best winner profile, it shouldn't have given back that much. It's usually better to cut and run 
get what you can out of the trade, not hold and hope. Holding and hoping is a strategy for getting stuck on losers too long, and that's not going to be the way that you want to trade out of the money options um, because that time is working against you, right? We need speed of movement. I have a need for speed, right? So the idea here is that you definitely take advantage of this. William mentions he likes weeklies and takes smaller profits. In this case, yeah, we're taking a little bit less risk than a weekly by buying a month out but we're still getting tremendous leverage and we've still got a fairly short window to hold. Now, not all profitable trades will get to exactly to our quadruple, our 300% final profit target. Here's a recent one on Delta, the airline stock. And we caught it as it was just taking off. Couldn't, couldn't avoid the pun there, but the idea is that we also wanted to hop off before there was too much risk. So in this case, look, Delta launching here back in early June, you see, there's our both indicators, percent R in the red, CCI in the blue, both saying it's taking off here, folks. You need to get on board. Can't help it. How many bad puns can I get all in one in one chart? But bottom line is that look, wh where's the stock trading? 36, 36 and a half. We're buying about 10% out of the money. We're buying the 39 strike call, not even quite 10% out of the money. We paid a full buck. That's the most we will pay, 100 bucks a contract to control 100 shares of stock, right? The stock's trading 36 and a half, 3600 dollars We're controlling for $100. Our leverage is only a little better than 35 to one. Well, the idea here though is that, look, we get the first leg up. Notice what happens after the first leg up. You will get retracements. First retracement, first retest coming in right near these lows. We're back to about where we got in. You say, oh man, we were making a little money, now we're back where we got in. We might even be down a hair because of the out of the money options. Don't sweat it. The structure of these indicators, folks, is what I'm trading here. You'd almost be better off not watching bar by bar price action. You'd be better off watching the red and the blue lines here. Because when the red line goes over bot like this and stays over bot, it's clear skies ahead, clear sailing to the upside. You can see CCI actually gives us more retests that are effective in this case. You can see how many times it's giving us this retest. And, and I call this sort of uh, riding the escalator up, right? You've heard that term, probably stocks ride the escalator up and then they um, ride the elevator down sometimes, right? They crash back down too hard. This one's riding the escalator up. You can even see, what's our next one? It's over here. It's riding that escalator up. So that stop basically stays in place until the next stop is set. Of course, we're booking profits gradually here. We took the first half out in 100%. About a week later, took the next half, half out, or next half of our half, quarter of our initial investment at 200% gain. And then you know what we said? We said, okay, look, 270%, we're close to that 300% target. Looks to be losing a little momentum. We were wrong. It turned out that we would have gotten our 300% that next day, but we were concerned about some event risk in the markets, said, again, greed is not good, we're close enough, let's just take that final piece out and say it's our final quarter of our trade anyway, close enough, let's take that money and run. Uh, William has a small account, can you do this um, with a small account? Yeah, you can get these for 100 bucks or less a contracts. So you don't have to trade a ton of contracts. We'd like to see you trading four contracts in a perfect world, which would be no more than $400 invested per trade because we can't pay more than hundred bucks per contract. So four contracts, that means you could sell half at a double, have one left for the triple, one left for the quadruple. That's the ideal to be able to participate in the strategy for as little as 400 bucks a trade. So uh, you can see just one of these winning trades can generate a huge return, a huge bang for your buck on your trading portfolio, whether you're trading small or whether you're trading larger. If you go back and look at the performance history back to um, beginning of 2017 here, so we're getting like what, six and a half years, over, just a little over six and a half years of data here. If you were putting in a thousand bucks a trade, you'd be up in gross profits, adding up all winners and losers before commissions, before subscription investment, you'd be up $28,846 profit, right? So the idea being, if you started with a $5,000 account, you'd be up to $33,000. If you started with a $10,000 account, you're up to $38,000 and change. Gross. Now take your commissions into account. You shouldn't be paying more than a buck 
per contract uh, and no minimum ticket charge anymore. So in my 33 years of options trading, never been a better time to trade because you're keeping the vast majority of what you make. Jack says, do puts work the same way? They do, but in reverse. I hopefully should have a bare example on here for you, but we want to see both the percent R and the CCI going into the oversold territory when that happens. If you ask, okay, what have you done for me lately since June 1st? Here we are going back just over the last couple of months. Pretty whopping return here, right? Again, past performance never guarantees future results. Don't say you're going to make a couple of thousand dollars a month on a tiny account. That This is probably a little bit of an outlier in the last couple of months. It's been an exceptionally good period. But I like the environment we're in a lot. In fact, I love it for what we do with out-of-the-money options because volatilities are low trends are high right you're getting really good trend moves and not having to pay up for it um again we don't do this right in front of earnings that's when you would pay up for it in front of earnings we try to take the earnings risk out of the equation with this strategy and what it would only hold into earnings if we've already doubled half our position um so um if, for example you can see if you're just trading a thousand dollars a trade, just in, in just just under two months, you'd be up over forty-seven hundred dollars of gross profit. That adds up all wins and losses before commissions or before subscription and investment. So, again, we assume like if you're using a five thousand dollar account, you would have almost doubled it. You'd be up ninety-five percent gross in the last two months. Um, so we're pretty excited about that. Again, you know, don't get greedy though. Don't come in trying to double your portfolio in the next trade, just say, look, just take a small steady allocation per, per trade and, and take this as a plan to help you focus on really the best of the best trend moves. So we're going to take what the market gives us, right? If the market's not giving us bear trades, we're going we're gonna to not take, the, we're not going to just say, oh, this market's overdone. It's got to come down. We're going to say the market reading says the structure is still bullish you should still be trading the bull side. The great thing about this is it takes out that look back regret that we all have when we miss a move. When you miss a breakout, you say, look, there's a there's the market is a constant stream of opportunities. If you've missed a good chunk of the 2023 rally, if you've been in too much cash, if you've been fighting it, you can you've got to get your mindset right to say, okay, how do I get in tune? to get on the train for the next leg up or the next move down. So, so that's what I'm designing this to say, look, the indicators tell me what's the next move. I don't have any opinion about it. You, you can have all the opinions you want. They they're basically aren't worth, not only are they not worth anything on your opinions of the market, they actually can cost you a lot of money, whether you place opinions incorrectly uh, on things that are not due to reverse yet, or whether you basically are just thinking it's overbought and you're sitting in cash and missing out and saying, well, my cash is earning some yield finally. Well, you could be making a lot more on your money than just sitting in cash with this portfolio potentially. Now look, the two indicators, it's called the Commodity Channel Index. This was developed back at the start of the 1980s by a guy named Donald Lambert. And interestingly, I noticed this pattern before I read Lambert's work. When I read his work, he was doing the same thing. He was looking for the outliers. He was looking for the ones that are going overbought and then staying overbought. That's where he saw the biggest moves were developing the futures markets. Guess what? Same psychology, same principles apply in the indexes and in the stock individual stock market. I find actually it works even better on individual stocks because when a stock wants to get going, whether it's because it's got good earnings, whether it's because it's got a new product hitting, whether it's AI or anything else, you know, whatever the talk is, the key is, are the institutions wanting more of it, right? If the institutions want it, you wanna be riding that big wave. They're, the institutions are gonna be the ones that drive that. The Williams percent range or percent R indicator, we developed a tool as well, we call it Big Trends Bands. It helps me see where it goes from the range bound mode into that trend unbound mode. The, the trend uh, is basically now, un. Un, unhinged and un, un, unhindered, I should call it, no longer hindered by the overhead resistance of a top of a range or the bottom support of a bottom of a, of a, of a band. So we're breaking out or breaking down. That's a big tell. So when I combine these filters together to say both of these are taking off or breaking down at the same exact hour, that's what's resulting in the launch signal or the breakdown signal to say we must start participating in this. 
Now, when you become a Grand Slam Option subscriber, you get full access to the system settings and rules. So that way you get the parameters, how many bars back we look on those indicators and what that does in terms of the rules on not just riding the winners, but also what our rules are about getting rid of the losers. So the beauty of this is it works even on some of the biggest stocks in today's market, the Apples and Microsofts, we've traded them tons in this Grand Slam Options portfolio. Here's an outlier on Microsoft calls that our indicator picked up actually right after the first earnings season this year in late January. The interesting, this is a really interesting one is that we don't try to trade earnings, right? So we had no position on as Microsoft, I remember it well, that night it actually initially gapped up and then they made some comments that the market didn't like and then it gapped down by the next morning. That put a big E on that, right? And what I always say about earnings is whatever the earnings are, you know, Microsoft just had earnings the other day and they looked good, but the stock was down 15 points that day, right? We would grade that a negative earnings reaction. Well, this started off to look like a negative earnings reaction at the start of the day on the 25th of January. But by the end of the day there, it had recovered all those losses and was back to about where, most of all those losses were back to about where it closed the night before. So we're saying, well, there's no signal for us. Notice we didn't get a bear signal here because while this first one was breaking down on the CCI, the percent R did not cross under its threshold at the end of the first hour. This is what not overreacting right off the open will save you a lot of fake outs. It'll, it'll get you on the true breakouts. You just wait for the hourly close and it'll help you miss a whole lot of whipsaws. We won't miss all of them, but we'll miss a lot more than most. So you can see though, by the end of the first hour and just barely on that CCI I did cross over, now Microsoft's gapping up the next morning, stocks trading near 245. We're buying the 262 and a half calls out to the mid-February expiration, some three and a half weeks to go before the expiration. And you see, initially, we're off to a good start. It's moving up from 245 to about 248. Then uh, morning, or maybe second morning after the start of that next week, has this retest down here, that first pullback low. You see percent R was retesting, CCI was retesting. We held that support all day and then basically started to move back up. Interestingly enough, it spiked up right around a Fed meeting. We were still holding that trade. You say, why hold it into a Fed meeting? Well, because the stock had done everything right thus far, right? It hadn't gone crazy to the upside. It hadn't worked really that much against us either. Just kind of hanging in there, holding its retest lows, that 242 range and saying, okay, look, we still like the structure of what both percent R and CCI tell us about Microsoft and where it's likely headed is likely higher. It starts to blast on the first Fed positive reaction. We saw half out of the double. Look what we were able to buy. Uh, buying a little out of the money here. Sure, we were 17 points out of the money. Again, some 7% or 8% out of the money. We paid 85 bucks a contract. $85 controlling 100 shares of stock that would have cost us twenty four and a half thousand right so you can see how the leverage potential here two fifty to one against the underlying stock that brief first move from two forty five to two fifty two or so gets us our double right our eighty five bucks a contract's worth a buck seventy this one was interesting because after we sold half out of the double we have a risk free trade there the next day it gaps up even more and we're actually making more than our triple we got our next target out of three hundred and twenty nine percent and soon after, send our alert to sell the rest at 385%. A little bit of an outlier, right? It usually be 100, 200, 300%. This one resulted in uh, combined, you know, well beyond our profit targets. Whether it keeps running or not after that, I don't care. I'm happy to book it, take the money and run. Um, now, again, not every trade is going to win. You have the theoretical risk of a total wipeout on any option you buy, right? That could happen. You could lose what you put into a trade. You put $100 a contract in, that's your risk. If you were selling options naked, you could lose many more times than the premium you, you collect. We don't do that at Big Trends. But the idea here is that, look, we buy an option. We, we've got a short window of time where it's got to prove itself or else we'll time stop ourselves out of the trade after a brief period in it. But in the meantime, if it's got the right pattern, we'll hold and look for more continuation of the trend that's in place. And of course, if you came in late, the track record, even just looking back over the last two months, 
has been phenomenal and the long-term record has been even more phenomenal, but just the last two months up over $4,700 in pro gross profit, adding up all gains and losses before commissions or subscription investment. I've only got about five more minutes of time. So what I wanna do is share with you this special offer I've just approved to allow you to take advantage of a fantastic way to start uh, really zeroing in on the best of the best Grand Slam options trends here. So what you want to do here, we call it our, our all-star trading package, right? You want to you want to be in the all-star best performing stocks on the way up or the way down. And so what we've done is we've set up this offer for you where um, basically you take advantage of uh, the trade alerts, but you also get a lot of education along the way. So the way this works with Grand Slam options is we'll call out trade alerts for you. We'll tell you exactly when to get in, when it's time to get out, We'll tell you exactly when to get out. We send a real-time email and we follow it right behind it with a real-time text. So bam, you're getting it to your smartphone on your, on your email and your text um, as soon as we have a new signal. Um, and then you'll give you a lot of extra educational bonuses. We get questions a lot about, so what are the settings of percent R, CCI, your, your other trend filter that was on that page that I didn't get a chance to talk about. Well, that's all in the settings and rule sheet you'll get as part of your access to the Grand Slam Options trades is you'll get education that tells you, okay, you can set this up to follow it along on your computer or on your phone as you wish. The big thing is that you're ready to trade. As soon as we call out a trade, you know, okay, this is how much money I'm gonna allocate on every trade and then I'm gonna just be consistent in my allocation and it, whatever the price of the option is, I'm gonna divide that into my money invested to figure out how many contracts I can get. If it tells you you can get five and a half contracts, well then you can get five. You can't take a partial contract. So round it down to the, to the uh, so you don't over commit your capital on any trade. I'll also give you a weekly video update that tells you what I'm seeing in Grand Sum Options in the last week that's worked or not worked and also how you can um, focus on that. And Jax, we're not using the traditional percent R and CCI settings. No, they're they're custom. They're different than what most platforms auto defaults you to. So we'll add value for you right away by getting the right settings for the big trends on these stocks. Um, you also get a dedicated email to me and my analyst team when you've got questions. Uh, so on the on the trades. So basically, you know, you can validate that. That alone, if you're doing three months at our usual 297 list price per month would be an $891 cost to you if you were doing this. We're gonna cut it down dramatically with a super special offer. When you sign up for three months of Trade Alerts as part of today's Trader's Corner uh, great multi-speaker event here, multi-trader event, because I know it's all about things that where the rubber meets the road, where you don't just talk about a concept, you trade it. I'm gonna give you an instant $694 credit off of what you'd usually pay. So instead of paying almost 900 bucks, you're going to slash it down and be able to try the next three months for just a one-time investment, no future auto bill after your three months is up. I'm confident I've, even before your three months are up, you're going to be calling us and emailing us saying, how can I lock in a longer-term subscription to Grand Slam options? Because one trade, putting a thousand bucks in can make you multiples of that investment that you're making here today, many multiples. So, you know, if you've got some, usually I'll price my, my services where, even one trade basically pays for your subscription. This one, one trade can pay for it five, six, seven, eight times over when it hits all of these targets on $1,000 invested. So massive ROI potential for just 197 bucks to potentially make many more times that. So what we did is we set up this special page, members.bigtrends.com forward slash slam three. Okay, now notice it's not a www, it's a members bigtrends.com we want you thinking like a new grand slam options member of the service and basically membership has its privileges for sure because you're not just getting trades you're getting access to me and my analyst team you're getting educational updates every week you're getting the rules and setting sheet what happens after three months muhammad if you do nothing then your subscription will expire in 90 days okay if 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 you like i think you're going to do you're going to be able to contact us and say, I'd like to continue on. How do I continue on? And I think you're gonna be willing to pay closer to our normal prices when you see how much money you can be making on this. Yes, there's risk on any trade. You can lose what you put into it. We help you manage that risk. We don't get you stuck on losing trades forever. We have a plan to get you out of what's not working and let you keep riding pieces of what is working. So 
are they normally directional, Peter says, or are they higher level, more complicated? They are super normal. I'm glad you asked, Peter, because I have maybe one more minute before I got to hand it over. If I can pull this off real quick, let me just show you what a recent winner we just had uh, in Archer Daniels Midland. We got a doubler even on a on a low dollar stock like ADM. So, okay, look, we called out a new trade for our, our subscribers there. And we said, okay, here's what it looked like real quick. Just give me, you should not be buying this one by, by now, but basically let me just show you what we called out. So we said, okay, look, we, we got into ADM and it, the alert looked just like this, okay? Real quick, and then I got handed over uh, back to Rob here. I know, Rob, you're ready to go to the next speaker. One second. This is, you see here that, okay, this is what a new trade looked like. You should not be buying this one now. Don't buy it. We've already sold it out at a double. It had earnings. We didn't want the earnings risk. We bought it about 80 cents. We sold the whole thing out about a buck 60. Okay. So it gives you specific uh, instructions, what to buy, what to get at, where to get out, et cetera, et cetera. So go to that page, members.bigtrends.com slash slam three. I'll hand it back over to Rob. You can call us, uh, obviously, Muhammad, with any questions you want on that order page. It's an incredibly simple one. And our 800 numbers listed at the top are just remember 800 big trends off of that order page when you go to that special uh, setup there for the 197 access. Thank you, Rob, for having me. It's always a pleasure. And stick around, folks. There's a lot of great fellow traders coming up with a lot of great additional strategies to share with you. Price, I want to thank you. And uh, you know my trading specifically is to lesser priced options and whatnot. Oh, and yeah. And the way you manipulate buying more time than you need to not lose as much in time decay. Um, yes your indicators are everything it just seems like a great plan and amazing with the analysis to back it up you know your technical analysis is always spot on we always love having you on the show ladies and gentlemen Thank if you, you'd man. like to learn more about trading the, the sub dollar options and be in and out of the position before it you know there's too much expiration you can find prices special offer link i put it in the chat box i hope there's no typos in it and you can always find price at www.bigtrends.com Thank you again, Price. We always hope to have you back on the show. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Price Heatley of Big Trends. Thanks, Rob. We do have a great show today, and we're going to keep the ball moving right along to our next presenter, who you may have seen on Fox News, Fox Business Network, RT America, Cheddar TV, and CBS News. She's an expert stock market analyst and the founder and owner of an international education company where she teaches people how to successfully trade the stock market. Her trading methodology is based on one strategy called Golden Gaps, which pinpoint institutional money in the stock market. Here to present, make fast profits trading 30 minutes a day is Miss Melissa Armo of the Stock Swoosh. Welcome back to Traders Quarter, Melissa. Hi, can you hear me? Um, you're a little faint. Let me move the mic closer. Can you hear me now? Much better. Great. Thanks so much for having me, Rob. Thanks so much for having me on today. Welcome, everyone. Very interesting day today in the market. Lots of earnings right now. It's currently earnings season. I'm seeing everybody's chats. If you have questions, you can plop them in the room and we're going to get started. So today I'm going to talk about how you can make fast profits trading 30 minutes a day. What we did today was we actually traded eBay and love they were two earnings trades they were shorts if you want to take a look at the charts you can look at them i didn't have time to plop them in today's presentation uh but they were both earnings gaps so for those of you that don't know what i do i do trade in my live trading room where i call trades every day i do day trades on margin and i also do options and i'm taking options using momentum so the whole theme of today's lecture is going to be about <laughs> excuse me is going to be about trading momentum because that is how you can make money. And if you pull up, like I said, eBay, for example, is a great example today of momentum to the downside. This is me. If you have questions, you can email me at melissathestockswish.com. You can also call me at 929-3200-GAP. You can follow me on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, or Skype. And as Rob said, I do appear on TV everywhere. I try to put when I'm on TV on my Twitter or Facebook, so you can follow me there. And then I put the clips on my YouTube channel as well. So if you've been trading for a while and you've been attempting to be successful, but you haven't quite got there yet, I'm here today to tell you don't give up. Never give up. 
If your dream is truly to be a successful trader, then you have to keep going, okay? Because you can be successful. Many times people are not successful because they don't have a good strategy. They, they may have other things that they do that they make mistakes. Maybe they get their sizing wrong or something like that. But overall, if you have more winners than losers, you will be successful. And how do you get that? You have to have a good strategy, okay? So I developed a strategy that I trained for myself, never to teach anyone. And then it ended up developing where I had a voice to talk on TV and YouTube, and then I started a business. But I spent three years putting my system together for myself. Um, and so, you know, the fact is that I've been teaching people now for 11 years as well, and you can be successful. So think about that, stay positive. If you've been trying to do this, never, never give up until you get to the point where you've made it. So how do you make money fast? Trading momentum. So if you'd like to learn how to trade momentum, you've come to the right place today. Also, I prefer to short, even though I am gonna talk about a couple of longs today that we did. But like I said, today we did eBay and Love, which were both nice shorts. One of the reasons I prefer to short is because short moves, moves to the downside happen faster than moves to the upside most of the time. I'd say 99% of the time. And again, shorting can be profitable and fun because of the fact that panic comes into the stock. So for example, if you short 2,000 shares of a stock and it drops a dollar, you'd make what? $2,000. And that can happen sometimes in one minute, two minutes, five minutes and that's it then you have the rest of the day to yourself and you can do whatever you want and like i'm here talking to you right now done for the day and i'm talking to you and it's you know almost one o'clock here eastern time after this i have the rest of the day to myself so it is a nice career if you trade and you learn how to do it and you develop a way to go into the market or learn mine that you can make money as quickly as possible so that you can be done in 30 minutes but time is money and so the idea of trading is to make it as fast as you can. And you also want to get in and out of trades fast so they are not affected by things that could hurt your trades. For example, the market or economic data or something like where the Fed raises interest rates that can hurt your trades. So if you're up in something, you get out of it before the data even reports. I'm going to show you the results here to date. I didn't have the last week in here, but year to date through what is July 18th, I'll update this and put a video on YouTube sometime in the next couple of days. For 2023, year to date, 349,794 are the stats this year. This so far, this has been a good year. We are mostly short, like I said. These are all day trades on margin. So again, how do you make it? How do you become successful trading? You have to be consistent. You have to have more wins than losses. And on top of that, you have to have some very large wins. The market can be a magical thing if you know what to do. And what do I mean by that? What do I mean by magical? It's, you're not really working. You're basically using your brain, okay? So it's almost like the smartest people are the ones that, that win, okay? So we always wanna develop our skill set. So my skill set is that I can predict price action in something before it happens. That is a skill set that I've developed over 15 years, and I see it in the gap. If you come and learn from me, you're going to learn my skill set. But once you develop those skills, it's magical because you're really not going to work and slaving or toiling away for you know 40 hours a week or more at a job to make this kind of money. And it also sometimes is very, very magical because of the fact that you can make an astounding amount of money with very little risk, very, very quickly. Do I get trades to the dream target every day? No. Do, they some, do I sometimes get trades to what I call the dream target? Yes. And every time that happens, I'm reminded why I love to do this, why trading is so fun. And then of course, the people that are with me that are getting my calls recognize that too. So I'm gonna get over what has been a trade that we did last week. It was the biggest trade of the year so far. It doesn't mean that we won't have another trade like this this year, but we might. It was an options trade, and I'm gonna go over here, advanced risk, but I talk a little bit later about a beginner risk for this trade too. We went long Microsoft. We did Microsoft calls at the very, very moment. I was happened to sit at my desk, 
and I called on the options newsletter, Microsoft calls, and it went and it went big and it went fast. And we're talking today about making money fast. And we're also talking about momentum. If you saw the news on Microsoft that hit last week on this particular day, it was about a week ago, um, then you know exactly what I'm talking about. It had earnings this week. Actually, it was the night of the 25th down on the 26th, and we actually shorted Microsoft here. But back in here on the 18th of July, we did a trade that so far was the biggest trade of the year because of the return on investment of the trade. For every single person that did it, it was a huge trade. It was minimal cost, and it went very big, very fast, and very quick, and we're going to go over it. So what happened here at Microsoft? This was a gap up, okay? So again, the date was July 18th. So we did the Microsoft 360 calls on the 18th that expired on the Friday. So I trade options, like I said, I'm trading options very different than a lot of people because I'm trading options based on momentum. What does that mean? It means I win or lose in the trades. I'm not worried about deltas or this thing or that thing or fancy dancy types of things to do. I see the momentum is going to come into the stock and I take it and I get in and I get out. So again, how fast it goes or how big it goes I have an idea, you know, I have my targets and see it. Sometimes things go bigger than we think. This did go. So the cost was 50 cents. Somebody on the newsletter actually actually paid 30 cents for this. It was ridiculous. So this is an advanced trader risk. This is a lot of risk, $9,000 for the contract position of total of 180 contracts. You could have bought more. You could have bought less. The point is you got a very low risk, low cost option that went huge. This was 1,700%. This wasn't even the high of the options chain with an exit. It almost got to 10. This was a trade that I helped people through. I sent like 10 emails on this from the time I sent the call up until the point that it ran up. This was a momentum trade, and I'm going to show you the one minute in a little bit. But the newsletter, if you want to trade options with me, I sent it out with the strike, the expiration date, the call. This went out right when I saw it, right when I saw the news, right when it hit. So let's take a look at this chart. Here it is. So this is it. It ran up. See ya? So this ran all the way up. Excuse me. Dream target in this was 365, and it happened to go there within an hour. <laughs> so again, while that was not necessarily planned, as soon as it happened, I realized that it was going. If you had risked a thousand dollars on this trade, you would have made 17 grand. So this trade made everybody's week, made everybody's month. Okay, this was the biggest trade of the year. The only way you wouldn't have made that much money in this trade is if you didn't do it. And and funny enough, there was a couple of people in the newsletter that missed it, you know, that that they were in meetings or whatever because it was a late trade. Typically I trade in the morning. But in this case here, I did do this trade when I saw it, which was you know, closer to lunch. That's not always the case. This is an example though of momentum. It's also an example of what? It's an example of institutional buying, okay? Institutional money coming in and buying the stock. So while that doesn't happen all the time, okay? This can happen and it can happen like that. And again, this is what I'm talking about, about the magic of trading. So while people should never blow up their accounts and risk all their money in a trade, I know that people are very often frustrated, particularly people that have smaller accounts. They get frustrated when they um, are not seeing the results that they want. You can't push it in the market. For example, if you have $5,000 in a trading account and an options account, you should be risking probably around $500 per trade. That would have made you money in this, still well over a thousand percent. Sometimes what I see is people that have small accounts and they want to risk half their account because they have a small account. You can't do that. When you get the big ones is when you will have the opportunity to grow a small account and then with consistency, meaning having consistent wins and having more wins than losses, which again is a whole put point. This was an awesome call. This was an awesome trade. Uh, ironically, we did Microsoft as well this week too. We did it yesterday and we shorted it, uh, but this was an options trade. And again, I have an options newsletter, but the way that I trade options is the same way similar that I'm doing day trades is I'm trading momentum. 
The benefit of doing options is that you can open an options account with as little as $2,000 and you don't need a margin account to do options. And people want to get moves in stocks like NVIDIA, like Microsoft, um, you know, like, like the QQQs and not have to worry about taking the trades on margin. Well, you can do them as options. So how can you make that much money that fast? Again, trading momentum and getting the timing right. Being able to predict what it was going to do, which I did, and then taking it, no hesitation, getting in and getting out. So I also put this in here. This is NVIDIA, and I'm, I'm just letting you know right now, we just did this today. So I called on the options newsletter, NVIDIA calls, the 470 calls. This trade is up. This trade is working. This is a nice call. Again, how do I take trades based on momentum in the gap? So what happened to NVIDIA? NVIDIA closed here yesterday, gapped up this morning, rallied, and is rallying, okay? So again, this is a long, this is a call similar to Microsoft. It is not going within an hour like Microsoft. Not every trade goes like that, but this is a nice solid momentum trade in an option, okay, in NVIDIA. So here I'm giving you a free idea right now here today if you happen to be listening to me right now, okay? This is a good trade. So again, you know, for options for me, it's about the idea of being able to get capture a move overnight if I want to hold it to get a bigger move or just the low cost of doing an option versus doing a trade on margin. Something like for NVIDIA, for example, over $470 a share is expensive to do a margin. While I'll do it, it's a heck of a lot cheaper to do it as an options trade. So how do you get these kinds of results? How do I make these picks? I have a checklist, I have a system that I use to trade and I go through and apply it each and every day. When before I take a trade, I go through the checklist. Most of the work I do in the pre-market in the morning, I will go through, I will see what is moving. I will look at the gap ups, I will look at the gap downs and I will make a choice of what to do and what to trade. And I prefer to short just because of the speed of execution of moves to the downside. But like I showed you here today, NVIDIA is a good long, Microsoft was a good long, I will go long too, okay? But I qualify my picks using a checklist. I think it's important for people to get clear with their financial goals. If you are not meeting your financial goals trading, you may be wasting your time. You know, if you're back and forth for the first seven months of the year, we're almost at the end of July. Next week is August. On the Tuesday is August 1st. If you're not meeting your goals so far this year, it's a good time to just step back because you still have five more months left in the year that you can meet your goals. You can achieve your goals. You can get there but you've got to change course. And if you're not on the right course to make the money that you want to make in the market, chances are whatever you're doing, whatever strategy you're using isn't working. And, and you have time to still pull out a year, okay? You can turn your year around in a week, in a month, okay? But it doesn't make any sense to continue trading a system that isn't working if you're losing. But if you're going to trade and be profitable, you need a system to pick the best trade daily that will capture the largest move. Just like I showed you with the Microsoft and today with the NVIDIA. You can't trade everything every day, even in the trend or even with the market. And look how tricky the market can be, too. You need a system that produces results in order to make money trading. You need a system that produces results in a volatile market, which I still think we're in, even though we're in a bullish market. I still think this market is volatile, okay? meaning it could break off at a moment's notice in any second for many, many reasons. Could be Ukraine, Russia, could be they continue raising rates, which everyone today is convinced that they're not going to do, but I disagree. I think they will raise rates at least one more time this year. So again, all of this creates a volatile environment to trade, but that is opportunity for you to trade as a trader, okay? So my system and what I do, how I make the picks, like I said, is based on gaps. So again, what is a gap? Here's an example of what we did yesterday. This was Microsoft. Stock closed here, gap down, fell, boom. We shorted it and we also bought puts in it, okay? It fell. So again, a put is a short. Just doing it as an options trade, we also shorted this as a trade on margin in the day trade room. I like to short, I prefer to short, but like again, sometimes I will go long. That was the long back from the other week. Now, what is a gap? A gap is a break in continuity, a difference, a divergence, a disparity. What is a gap? A stock gap from the opening price today is different from the closing price of the previous day's trading. A gap is a break in the price action from one day to the next. Simple. So almost everything gaps almost every single day. Something rarely closes at 3202 and, and then opens the next day at 3202. Okay. 
but do I trade every gap in the world? Is every single gap that happens predictable? No, no. So I'm looking for the good ones. Okay, so I'm looking for the good ones. And that's where the rating system that I developed over the course of three years comes in. If anyone has any questions, I'm just looking under the questions sec section. You can plop them in the room as I'm going on as well. But getting back to what I'm saying, the importance of a system is that is what you will follow each and every day. That tells you that it has a high odds of working. So while I know that my system sometimes will result in some trades losing, like I showed you the stats for the year we had losses in there, the, the ones in parentheses or losses, the trades lost. We do have trades that lose, but I know if I follow the system, I will have more winners than losers. So that is why a system's important. Otherwise, what I find most people doing is trying to trend trade, buy the dip, or people are trying to go with the news of something. And many, many times what happens is the reflection of the news or whatever the news was is already built into the price. It's too late, too late to take the trade, too late to do the, the eBay or whatever it happens to be. And then people don't get the momentum either. So I developed a system called the Golden Gap, which pinpoints the direction that a stock is going to go. The Golden Gap trading system looks at 26 points to examine and rate the stock. That is gapping. This is how you can find which gap is the best one to trade each day. I do focus on shorting. But the reason I point out the longs that I that I did recently is because the longs that I did recently, again, NVIDIA is on, that has a huge potential. And Microsoft was a huge trade. So because I focus so much on shorting, I very easily can see then when an excellent bullish move happens because I'm so used to reading weakness. So I've become very good at reading strength because I know how to read weakness so well. And I rarely go long, okay? And when I happen to go long, it's usually a phenomenal trade. So again, we're not going long every day. We're mostly shorting. But I showed you two nice longs. One is on, the NVIDIA play. Anyways, why do I like to short? Just because of the fact that I can get in and out quickly. Fast trains are the best in this market or any market. You know, I mean, again, if someone could say, well, you can make $2,000 in five minutes or you can make $2,000 in two days, you'll take the two minutes, okay? And again, the money isn't yours until the fat lady sings and you're out of the trade and you book it. I mean, so again, holding, holding, holding this buy and sell mentality and holding trades really doesn't work in any market, right? You know, not in this environment, didn't work in 2022. And even though the trend of the market is up, even though it's bullish, things slosh around a lot. But shorting, again, shorting, what I love about shorting and selling, particularly selling pressure, like we saw recently in Netflix, Tesla, we shorted those uh, stocks last week. Those were earnings trades. It's like a pressure, like a cooker, pressure cooker, like a fire, like an emergency where people want to exit and sell their positions, okay? And so that's why stocks go very, 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 very quickly. There's, it's rare that you see something called panic buying coming into stock. Actually, that is what happened in Microsoft. So Microsoft went so big, so fast, so quick because it was panic buying. In fact, let me just go back to this one minute and just show you. This is so rare. It almost never happens. Um, but this is what happened here. Again, we captured as quickly as we could, but down in here was around 345-ish. The news came out and it ran up more than 20 points. It was like 21 points. And that happened within a little over an hour. So what happened in Microsoft was something called panic buying. That is very, very rare. Panic selling, okay, is not that rare. and actually happens a lot, like all the time, okay? And that is what I'm looking for in most of the moves and most of the things that I want to do. So again, it's the whole concept of being able to make money fast that is important and why I veer to the downside first. Now let's talk about last week's trade. So I, Microsoft was one of the trades from last week. Again, I have an options newsletter. The trades gets emailed to you in live time if you want to do them. I'm using a beginner risk here to show people if you had risked $1,000 on average and all the trades I called for last week's expiration, what would you have made? This, this, you know, again, included the Microsoft trade, but even if you take the Microsoft trade out, which, which was one that we did, it still was a great week. 
So the average ROI for last week was 333%. We're going to go over all of the trades. Okay, this was the expiration date for 721. It was 100% win ratio. There were eight trades, zero break even, zero losers last week. And this is an average risk of $1,000. You would have had to be able to take all the trades and you would have had to do all the trades. So first we did BABA. So I called this on the 14th. It expired on the 21st. I'm usually doing the weeklies, okay? Like today's Thursday. The video that we did today is out till next Friday, August 4th. I did not do an expiration date of tomorrow. Anyways, the cost is pretty reasonable. 215, five contracts. Again, average risk of that you take should be close to the same every day. 1,075 sold at four, profit $925. That's a good solid trade. Return on investment was 86%. So let's take a look at it. Again, I called a put in this on the Friday the 14th. So let's take a look at it. This is BABA. Pick it up. Stock close here, gap down, dropped, closed, boom. You would get out and exit the trade on the Monday into the gap down. It was up a tiny bit here on this day. And again, do you see where it opened, where it dropped through the strike? And again, a put is a short, okay? So you would have taken the trade on a Friday, exited it on a Monday. Now, if that had gone more on Friday, it would have gotten out of it Friday. It started to go late. Nice trade either way. And actually, again, you could have held it a little bit longer. All right. So that was a good one. Again, this is momentum. In the case of BABA, instead of happening in one day, okay, it happened in the gaps. Amazon. Then we did Amazon. We did Amazon on the 13th. We did the calls. This was cheap too, I thought. $1. seventy six contracts, cost ten twenty. sold at three. You could have made $780. This was a 76% return on investment. So let's look at that. 135 Amazons that expired last week. So here was the gap. So Amazon, again, this was a call. So this was a long, okay. So Amazon closed here, gapped up, pick it over. We did the 135, shot up like a rocket, boom, you're out. Again, this ran up through the strike. Again, you're playing the momentum and you're always exiting a trade into the momentum, not against the momentum. That's a stinky exit, okay? In other words, you would not get out of Amazon here. It would be bad. You wanna get out of a call when it's moving up. Same thing with NVIDIA. If we did the NVIDIAs today. Here we did NVIDIA this week too. We did the 450 NVIDIAs. Again, these are a little pricing. Cost was 1075. One contract cost 1075. This was a really, really good trade too. Sold at 31, profit 2025. Return on investment for this NVIDIA was 188%. Let's take a look at it. The 450s, again, here. So closed here, gapped up, rallied, had the pop, out, done. Again, this gapped up here, ran up, boom, out. And again, this is momentum. The momentum is moving higher. So here we bought the 450s on the day that I called it, then it moved up, gapped up, moved up, you're out. And again, if you can't watch trades, I do have targets in the newsletter. If you can't watch trades, what you can do is put a sell order, a sell order at trades at 50%, 100%, 75%, and just go look at it or check it. We also did this 5450s. Again, it expired on the 21st. This was a call, um, interestingly enough. 220, five cost 1100, sold at 340. Again, this was 55%. Let's take a look at it. This is a 5450s. So this was feels like a long time ago here. The 13th was here. Closed here, gapped up, ran up, boom, 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 popped. Actually, I got out of this before the last day. If I had held this, I would have made more money. I did not hold this into the very last day. I like to get out of things before the last day, but this did actually make more on the day of the, um, when it continued up here. The QQQs, the 378s calls, cost was three, four, risk was 1,200, 125%. This was a good move. This was the 378s on the 13th. Again, stock close here gapped up, rallying, had the pop, boom. Again, this actually kept going. 
You could have even held this right up until the very last point if you had wanted to. But again, every trade I look at, 100%, 75%, that's funny. Take it, book it, take it, book it, take it, book it. You chunk it out. That's how you put together a day. That's how you put together a week. And you could have actually done all these trades and got out of all of them at the same time, all the calls. We did the Google 130 calls. Profit was 660. Again, this was the same day, the 13th. Let's take a look at it. Here we are. Closed here, gapped up, rallied. Boom. So again, this was Google, ran up. It's a call, it's a long. And this was the Microsoft that we just talked about, but this is with a lot less of a risk. So 50 cents, if you paid again, somebody paid 30 cents for the other one. 20 contracts was $1,000, sold at nine. 17 grand you could have made. And so this was just a phenomenal trade. 1,700% you would have taken the trade here, you would have gotten the run up and you would have gotten out, okay? And again, you're exiting the trade into momentum. You were still up the next day, but this was a terrible, terrible, terrible exit because of the fact that the you were up so much money so quick. To be able to get Microsoft at 50 cents is insane too, quite frankly. But again, at the time I called it, it was very, 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 very far away from the 360s, which is kind of ironic. And I did have 365 on the letter as the dream target. It, it basically got there. It got to 366 and change. A golden gap is a gap that rates 26 points or more per my 26 point rating system. So a golden gap is my strategy that I teach in my class. So that's what I was talking about earlier, whoever was asking that. It's a gap that is predictable, that has a big move and that has a momentum move and that has a move in the same direction of the gap. For example, we went long and did calls in Microsoft because it had a gap up. We shorted it to did a put in Microsoft here because it was a gap down. I'm never going against the gap, especially if it rates per the 26 point system. So it is a gap that is considered like finding gold in the market. Actually a friend of mine years and years ago when I started developing the system is the one that coined the term. He said, Melissa, this is like finding gold. And then I named my system that. <clears throat> so, you know, it's, Things kind of develop and happen in your life where you don't expect them and all of a sudden you're doing it. When I started trading, I was day trading. I wasn't doing options at all. And I had made an enormous amount of money doing options, adding to my day trades, simply because of the fact that many times I get moves like Microsoft or I get something like an overnight trade that is a big trade that I capture overnight by holding the gap. Again, NVIDIA was a good trade, you know, but, but we've done some this year where some have gone so big in holding them overnight. Many times they happen really from a Friday to a Monday, which is kind of interesting too, holding something over the weekend. BABA was like that. That was a good drop that that, that gap down overnight from the Friday to the Monday. Um, so then JPM we did, this was a little one. Again, I think I got out of this a little bit too early. This kept going. We did the 147s. I did get out of this too early. Um, what day did I do this? I did this on Tuesday. Um, I definitely got out of this too early. Here was this, called the 147 calls, and I got out of it in the push up, and it kept going. Look, it kept going. So again, I booked profit in that JPM, but theoretically, it went 10 points through the strike. I did not hold that all the way through there. The 21st is here. Even the last day, if you were still in it, it was, you know, it was nine points through the strike. So again, I'm more of a get out and book it kind of girl, but a couple of these you could have held longer. So someone's asking about the system. The system is called the Golden Gap. The Golden Gap is a 26 point rating system that I use to find what stock to trade each day. How to make the pick? How did I know that we the right one today was eBay? The right one was Love. We also looked at EW. You could look at it. I didn't do it. I thought it was thin and spready, but that one worked too. And so again, I'm looking at hundreds and hundreds of thousands of things every morning. And then I make a small watch list that I rate. I'm not rating thousands of gaps. There's no need to, okay? Very quickly, I can scan through lots and lots of stuff in the morning. And then I make a small list and those are the ones that I rate. But if I could come up with 126 points in order to never ever get anything wrong, then I would do it. But I do get very good results using the 26 points. And then I wait until the open to get the setup. So if I don't get the setup, I'm not taking the train. That's another thing too. So my system teaches you how to find 
stocks that have a high probability of directional bias for the entire day in the gap. Again, I just showed you NVIDIA. That's that's going right now. Big moves on the day. Obviously, you want a big move so that you can take a trade position for 500 shares, 1,000 shares, even 3,000 shares and make money without having to borrow an excess amount of money to trade. Early confirmation of my bias and the move quickly in the morning out of the gate and precise entries with follow through, which I'm taking on the on the one minute chart. And again, I teach that in the class too. Now, this was a short that we did. This was a while back. I didn't have time to put the eBay in here. This was CCL. This was a short closed here gap down. We did this at the end of June. This was a day entry. So I shorted this on margin. This is pretty cheap. You have to have a margin account to do day trades. I call the trades live in the room. So in the room, I say 45 by 80. You got to know we're doing CCL. So you say, okay. And you know exactly then you're doing this, whether the stop's 35 cents, 45 cents, 55 cents. That's how much times the share quantity that you're taking that you're at risk. So 5,000 shares times the stop, the difference between the bid and, the, I mean, the entry and the stop is the uh, position size times the risk. So if you want to risk a thousand, a thousand dollars, then you would take less than 5,000 shares. Now we did an ad with this because it was going in our favor, cost averaged it, 1462 cost average it up. 14 was a target, broke 14, got out, great trade. Again, $6,700 and something like that, you could have done an option in that too, if you wanted to. But in this case here, I don't know how much cheaper it really would have been. You just would have done it as an as an option if you didn't have a margin account. Then we did Baidu. Baidu has had a lot of moves. Um, the day we did the Baidu was 629. We shorted it at 136.55. Then we did the ad. Um, and let's take a look at the 629 Baidu. Stock closed your gap down, we shorted it, get the draw. Again, you could have bought a put, this is a day trade. Again, the idea of getting in and, in and out quick is that you make the money fast. You do need a margin account to do this. And again, $136 a share, you know, if you're taking a thousand shares, still make good money. But these are all trades that happen very fast. They're all trades that happen on momentum. They're all trades mostly that are shorts, with the exception of the few that I'm talking to you about, because shorting and selling pressure happens and comes in quickly and fast. If the market decides to break off, if it decides to go and move to the downside, it's going to happen quick, it's going to happen fast, and it's not going to give any warning whatsoever at all. And that could happen. Even though people don't think it could, it could, okay? And when it does, I'll be all over it, okay? So... We did not go long the market today. The market gapped up today. I did not think it was a good gap up to go long, but we did theoretically gap up today in the market. In fact, you could have shorted the gap up in the market today and made money in the morning. We did not do that. I do not go against the gap. But how I look at everything is based on this checklist. This is the rating system, which I named the golden gap because it is like finding gold in the market because you can get big, big, big moves and big trades. You have to have the right pick. You're screwed without the right pick anyways. You're losing more than you're winning. And then the lo losers, the winners that you have never cover the losses in full because you don't get big moves. And so the whole point of trading is to trade momentum. We don't trade penny stocks. We don't trade low float stocks. I don't trade anything that's something that you don't even know what it is. If I'm saying that we're doing Amazon, you know exactly what I'm talking about. So everything that I'm looking to trade is something that has volume, has the capability, okay, of having a big move in the first place. And that is all based on how the stock moves and also the price point. But it's based on looking for institutional money in the chart, in the gap. That's the philosophy, the cornerstone of the philosophy behind everything that I do. I'm looking for institutional money. Microsoft was a great example of that. eBay today, the sell-off in eBay was a great example of that. NVIDIA today is a long, as a call is a great example of institutional money. Institutional money is buying a video. Why do you think it's going up? So institutional money is big money and big positions and stocks in the market. Large professional traders, hedge funds, investment banks, all take positions in stocks in the market, okay? If you are with these big position players, it will be a lot easier for you to profit versus going against them. Learn how to trade with institutional money. They're not the enemy. They're not the enemy. And a lot of people say, oh, you know, do, 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 do. no. You want to trade with this big money, okay? And if you can do that, you're going to be successful and you're going to make a lot of money. We did Netflix last week. We shorted this last week. We did puts. This close here gap down fell. 
actually, again, I could have held this trade longer. It fell again yesterday. I didn't see what this was doing today. But momentum means right now, because the faster you can make the money, the better. And again, it's it's big movement. If you have a big movement, whether you have 100 shares, 1,000 shares, or 10,000 shares, you're going to get the biggest bang for your buck, no matter how much size you can take. The size you can, you can, you have the size of your account is the size of your account. Okay, I, you have five grand in an options account, that's it. That's what you got, okay? You got to work with what you got. People always say, well, I'm going to save up to have more money, I have more money. No, if you were trading and you knew what you were doing, you could take a $5,000 account and turn it into a $10,000 account in a month. If you don't know what you're doing, it doesn't matter if you have 25 grand or 100 grand, you'll lose it all in a month. So it's not about how much you have. It's taking what you have and taking good trades and then moving forward and doing it. You know, not waiting until you have a million dollars, which, you know, most people don't and can't. But if you knew what to do in five years from now, you'd be way ahead of the game if you just start with what you have. This was another example of momentum. We shorted Tesla. We did puts in Tesla that fell. That was last week. So momentum traders take positions in stocks in anticipation that the stock will have an explosive move. You saw that in Tesla. Yes, I see. I know I started five minutes late, but I am watching the time so the, the next person can start on time, Rob. I do see that. Um, the stock will have an explosive move after the big money comes in. So the big money buys it or the big money sells it, okay? This enormous move in one direction is what you want to play on, okay? And it's a very, very profitable way to make money. Again, momentum trading and shorts for me really is the best because they happen so fast. I'm just gonna fast forward here to, to the end um, so the next presenter can begin on time. But my system is called the Golden Gap. It is a 26 point Golden Gap rating system. It will give you an edge if you want to trade it. And again, if you're not doing well, then the point is change what you're doing. Uh, my success rate is around 80%. Sometimes it's a little higher than that, like we had no losers last week. But I would say on average, 80% over the course of the year. So if this is something that you are interested in, if this is something that you want to learn, it is a complete system. I teach the entries, the exits. I teach the rating system in the class. It will teach you how to rate, pick, and play bearish professional gaps. The purpose of the system is to help you evaluate which gap to trade each morning using a checklist. And since there are so many stocks each day, that gap using a system is significant to your success. And again, this is very, very unique. It seems like a lot of things, but the reality is that it really doesn't take you that long once you learn how to do it. Again, I'm calling the trades in the room. I'm giving the picks in the room. I'm sending out the options newsletters. You can go over your rating with my rating to see if you get the same thing. Did you rate eBay today as well as I did? And that's the whole point of learning it. If you learn what to do, you're gonna do a lot better than just taking the trains. The options newsletter, there are no prerequisites. You can sign up for that without having taken the class. The class itself, you must take the class to join the live trading room because the day trades in the room happen very quick and very fast and people need to understand how to do those because we're trading in the one minute. But the class is called a full two-day course on how to strategically find, play, pick, and play stocks that are professional bearish gaps. Class is online. You can be anywhere in the world and the class is in August. The next class I do it once a month is August 19th and 20th. Class tuition is $69.99, class is online. You could be anywhere in the world and take it. I'm doing a Shark Week special. I don't know if you love Shark Week, I do. I've been watching Shark Week and Discovery Channel all week. Um, it started last weekend and I'm doing a Shark Week special, which is $1,000 off the class. It's normally $69.99. This ends tomorrow. And as a bonus, you get the trading room and the newsletter free through the end of 2023. So that's the rest of this year to get all my calls and you save $1,000 on the class. This ends tomorrow. Any questions? Let me just see if there's any other questions from anybody. Um, the success rate is about 80%. I think I answered that question. Uh, good presentation, thank you. Anyways, uh, again, just, I was rushing through here the last couple of minutes, but again, going back, Gaps are a very, very specific way to look at something to see how it's trading. 
right now it's earning season. Why is earnings season a good time to trade and make money? Because most stocks do gap during their earnings. They could gap up, they could gap down. I don't know how they're gonna gap. I'm not taking the trade before the earnings or into the earnings. So I wait until I see the gap, then I see it in the pre-market or the post-market. And then I make a determination how I'm going to play it. For example, Meta was last night. It blew out their earnings. We did not trade it today. We didn't do anything with it today. It wasn't good enough to go long. I will assess that and look at that later today, this afternoon or tomorrow, but we did not go long that stock. So you cannot go long every bullish gap up. You cannot short every gap down. That's why you got to know the 26 points and how to do it. Um, something's that someone's asked about options. Um, I provide uh, the newsletter comes to your email in real time. So that's the alert, whoever is asking about the options. You're gonna get the trade to your email the second that I send it. So if I was doing a trade right now, if I wanted to go long better right now, which I'm not, but it's 1.30, I would send it out right now. You do it when you get it. Thanks so much for having me, everybody. Thanks, Rob, for having me. Any Melissa, th thank you so much. And I didn't mean anything you know, negative. I just have a timer set. I instinctually send yeah. everybody a polite five-ish minute reminder. <laughs> Next um, person, I, I, I'm so I'm fine with it. I, I don't worry. No, so, but great, great presentation. I am very curious of what these 26 points are because your <laughs> strategy and the returns just look amazing. It's been a good, it's been a good week. I just gave you one. I gave you Nvidia. Boom, do it, do it. It's not too late. Uh, I'm out of margin for the day, <laughs> and you know, hosting <laughs> today, so I'm off the markets. But your All topic. Right, well, Good day. Your topic based fast profits trading 30 minutes a day. Obviously, had everybody on the edge of their seat. The Golden Gap course looks amazing. I want to thank you for making such a generous offer with a discount to our audience today. It's always great to have you here. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Melissa Armo of the Stock Swoosh. And if you're learning a, interested in learning a strategy that has the potential to garner fast trading profits in just 30 minutes a day, you can find her special offer in our chat box, and she can always be found at thestockswoosh.com. Thanks again for joining us today, Melissa. Have a great rest of your week. Ladies and gentlemen, our Stop It Traders Corner sifts through hundreds of pro traders and brings you the most credible and qualified traders to participate on our investor summits. And our next presenter is no exception. He's a professional trader, registered investment advisor, and commodity trading advisor. He's an active trader of his own account, but he also manages option-oriented accounts. He speaks on option strategies at many seminars around the world, and he's per perhaps best known as the author of Options as a Strategic Investment, the best-selling work on stock and index option strategies, widely considered as the Bible of options trading. He sold over 300,000 copies. He's regularly quoted in publications such as the Wall Street Journal, Barron's, Technical Analysis of Stocks and Commodities, Data Broadcasting Exchange Magazine, Futures Magazine, TheStreet.com, and Active Trader Magazine. Ladies and gentlemen, here to present Macmillan's Market Outlook, what options indicators are saying now. It is always an honor to introduce Mr. Lawrence Macmillan of Macmillan Analysis Group. Welcome back to Trader's Corner, Larry. <laughs> Thanks, Rob. That was a pretty uh, uh, you know, nice introduction there. Thank you very much. Hey, um, there's things we wanted to include, and we made sure we got them all. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay, so uh, we're going to spend about 45 minutes here talking about uh, what our indicators are saying about the market, and uh, they're you know they're uh, a number of them are option oriented, a few of them are just uh, straight technical analysis. But uh, let's get started. Um, just a little background on our company. I, I started the company as a derivatives research firm back uh, in. 1990, and we published data and, uh, you know, sold uh, newsletters, things like that. But then we moved into money management um, in 2008 after the uh, financial crisis when we made some pretty good recommendations uh, during that time. And then we also have a uh, option education area, which includes mentoring and, of course, uh, webinars like this. Um, I'll come back to this later, but we are offering a... Uh, a special on the, at this URL here uh, for a special offer, as well as the fact that you can download the PDFs uh, of the seminar that I'm just about to give. So uh, here are the main indicators we look at. Uh, number one being the chart of the S&P 500. 
um, that's the most important um, indicator because you know that is the market. So uh, you know price is king. If you uh, want to uh, have some other indicators that are, and they're leading you the other way, uh, you really need to you know uh, modify them to stay with the trend of the market. Uh, we'll also look at equity-only put call ratios, a very interesting and usually very accurate sentiment indicator. We'll look at market breadth, where we also have a uh, an option-oriented way of looking at that. And then we'll look at uh, VIX and the volatility derivatives and the other things have, having to do with uh, volatility. So uh, there's a very important rule, and that's that oversold does not mean buy. Oversold markets can continue to fall for quite some time, so we, you know, we don't really um, jump on the first oversold condition. Uh, more appropriate to today, uh, overbought does not mean sell either. So as you'll see, we have several overbought indicators, but they have avoided giving sell signals correctly so far. We may see uh, some of them pop up soon, but. So far, uh, no confirmed sell signals from the indicators that we're going to be talking about today. <clears throat> so here's a long-term two-year chart of the S&P, and uh, we we had the bear market there in 2022, that which is the the downtrending uh, blue line, uh, this this line right here, and now we've got the uptrending blue line, which is uh, the new market. I guess it's a bull market by. Uh, certain definitions, we're just really more interested in the trend and the trend is positive. So when it broke out over 4,200, you can see it struggled with 4,200 a few times uh, all in this area, but it finally broke out over 4,200. That was very bullish. And then uh, there had been a peak back here of 4,300 in the middle of last year, broke through that right away again. And since those two breakouts, this thing has really been in a very accelerated uh, uptrend. So as a result, um, that's a very bullish chart, and we've been holding a core position uh, really since about March, uh, core bullish position in the uh, S&P 500, or more appropriately in, in spy calls and, and bull spreads. Uh, there, the next resistance area is this one from, uh, from uh, March of uh, 2020. I'm uh, sorry, 2022, uh, when it rose up on the first reflex rally of the bear market and then fell back. And then beyond that, there's the all-time highs at 4,800. So, you know, a few months ago, it seemed like those were impossible targets, but now they're really quite uh, much in play. And we'll see if the oversold can, overbought conditions, uh, you know, retard that advance, but uh, they probably, even if there is an oversold or overbought pullback, we'll probably still be able to achieve those goals in the coming months. So here's a one-year chart of the S&P, just to zoom in a little bit. Again, uh, not too much different there. You can see a couple of things here, though, that weren't obvious on the other one. Um, first of all, there's, uh, there's a bunch of gaps in here. So I wouldn't be surprised to see the market pull back to about this 4440 level. That just fills in all those gaps, and then it can move uh, higher freely after that. Otherwise, um, you know, it's, uh, there's nothing really stellar uh, that stands out from the uh, one-year chart that you really don't see in the two-year chart. We're in an uptrend, and we're above those support levels. Uh, if we were to fall back below 4,300, um, I wouldn't like that. I'd probably cancel out our core position, stop ourselves out of that, because uh, even though 4,200 is still support, the 4,330 is an important level, and the whole game is basically market sentiment, and you you want to try to be with the sentiment, um, or, or at least anticipate what's going to happen with the sentiment. So just to summarize, those two breakouts over 4,200 and 4,330 were significant. Uh, we're looking for a move towards 4,650 now, and then per perhaps the all-time highs. But uh, we always run a trailing stop, so a drop back below 4,330 would be negative and would cause us to uh, back away from what is now our core bullish position, which we took uh, back in March. And what we roll these positions, and as the market advances, we roll our strikes of our calls higher, we raise trailing stops, et cetera. Uh, but basically, we've been holding a bullish position 
of one sort or another, uh, not only from the chart, but from some of the indicators that you'll see later. So uh, one of the things we do with the uh, S&P chart is we draw what I call modified Bollinger Bands on it. When uh, John Bollinger invented Bollinger Bands, he used, uh, as the definition of volatility, he used the standard deviation of closing prices. And that seems like a good definition of volatility, but that's not what the uh, you know math guys at MIT or whatever are using, and in particular, not what's used in the Black-Scholes model. In the Black-Scholes model, it, they use the standard deviation of daily percentage price uh, changes. So we draw those bands, uh, modified Bollinger bands, using that definition of volatility. And when the uh, index moves outside of plus four standard deviations or below minus four standard deviations, then a trade sets up. So this has been a very good indicator of ours uh, in our long-term newsletter, uh, the option strategist newsletter. Uh, you know, over the years we're we probably piled up almost twenty thousand dollars in gains on a, on small one or two lot positions. So we did notice, however, that it gave some uh, false signals. So we put a further confirmation criterion on it, and that's what we call the McMillan volatility band uh, signal. So uh, you may have heard of us mention that before. So here's the uh, chart of the S&P with the uh, bands drawn on it. So if we're looking, let's say, on the top band right here, uh, that's plus that's plus four sigma, and then the band right inside that is plus three sigma. So you can see in this situation, we moved outside the upper band and then back inside the lower band. That was a sell signal, and typically uh, it will move then to the opposite band, so that sell signal was successfully completed there. Now the blue letters are uh, false signals, ones we took a, a loss on, the red ones are uh, gains. So you would tip, not every system, or certainly at least not every system we have makes gains every time, but um, this has been a, a very trustworthy indicator. So we moved outside, you can see here uh, in, in uh, June, <clears throat> but we quickly moved back higher again, moved outside there and that stopped that trade out. Now we're waiting for a new one to set up and you can see we've been outside the uh, the upper Bollinger Band, modified Bollinger Band uh, here recently. And as soon as we move back inside the, the three standard deviation band, we will have what's called a classic sell signal. But we even require further confirmation to actually get the uh, MVB sell signal. But this has, again, been, a, you know, a, as I said, a very successful indicator. Today, um, that sell signal, the classic signal, would occur on a close below 4560, which uh, this morning I didn't really think was possible. Now we're back down to 4575 uh, right now. So it's possible that that classic sell signal would occur today. But as I said, we wait uh, for further confirmation, which is essentially just a close below today's bar, uh, would confirm for a McMillan volatility ban. But in any case, um, this in, this indicates an overbought S&P chart when you're up above that plus four standard deviation band. So it's just one of many indicators that are showing the market as being somewhat overbought at the current state. Um, we have a subscription service built around these uh, McMillan volatility bands in which we look not only at the S&P chart, but at all stocks, ETFs, and futures that we email you out every day which ones are, are giving signals. The, the charts look something like this. The green arrows are, uh, the green triangles are buy signals. The red are sell signals, et cetera. This happens to be the S&P chart um, from earlier this year. <clears throat> Any case, let's move on. Uh, put call ratios are a very valuable uh, sentiment indicator, and it's a contrary indicator as well. So uh, we use the equity only put call ratios, in other words, all stock options that trade uh, to indicate where the broad market is going. Um, the, the theory of this was first identified by Marty Zweig back in the 1950s, and he was getting the put and call volume from Barron's every Sunday where the put and call dealers would advertise how, how much volume they did that week in puts and calls. And he started to realize that if there was a heavy preponderance of put buying, 
pretty soon the market went up. And it knows conversely, if there was a heavy preponderance of call buying, pretty soon the market went down. So it's a it's a contrary indicator trying to go against perhaps what the public is doing, uh, but in any case, what uh, option speculative option buyers are doing uh, for the most part. So the simple ratio was just calculated. Let's say it's we're looking at IBM. At the end of every day, we sum up the volume of all the puts traded in IBM. Separately, we sum up the volume of all the calls right, uh, traded, and we divide the two, and that's our put call ratio. Now, notice uh, that if the numerator is increasing, in other words, the volume of puts is increasing, that will make the ratio uh, go higher, right? Pretty simple, just a little arithmetic there. But on the other hand, uh, what's going to make the ratio, of the number of puts uh, go up? You know, put buying uh, generated higher numbers. Well, that's if the market's going down or the stock is going down. So the put call ratio and the stock move in opposite directions. You do the same thing with you know call buying. Uh, increase in the the uh, denominator of a fraction will make the fraction go down. But what's going to make heavy call buying happen? Well, that's when the stocks are going up. So we keep a moving average 21 days just in case there's something to Fibonacci. And we look at all, uh, basically all stocks, all futures, all indices, and of course the broad market. And we post about 1,650 put call ratio charts on our website every day in an area called the strategy zone. If you're interested in that, I'd suggest just go to our website and look at the products that are available. It's, it's a very cheap, uh, I think, website uh, that gives a lot of uh, data and information, but that particular part of our website does not have recommendations. Uh, so since the, um, the stock price and the put call uh, ratio move in opposite directions, this is what you like to see on a put call ratio chart, and, our, and ours show the stock price as well as the underlying. So let's say, as well as the put call ratio. So let's say the uh, stock price is going down. That forces the public to be buying puts. So during the trend, the public is right. Eventually, the put buying will um, exhaust itself and you'll create a local maximum on the put call ratio. The local maximum on the put call ratio is a buy signal for the stock. So then the stock starts to move higher. Let's move back over to the side of the chart. So the stock's moving higher. When that happens, a lot of call buying is taking place and that's forcing the ratio lower and lower. Eventually the, the uh, put call ratio bottoms out to a local minimum here. And that is a sell signal for the stock. So that's the theory. If you're looking at a put call ratio chart and you don't see this mirror image, then something else is happening mostly are most likely arbitrage or some other sort of thing that's distorting the uh, speculative nature of the call buyers and, and put buyers. And so you should not trade that uh, particular chart. But uh, this is not a current chart, but this is the S&P uh, 500 graph on top. And on the bottom is the equity only put call ratio. In other words, all uh, puts and calls that trade on stocks all stock options and you can see that most of the time there's this nice inverse symmetry between uh, the top chart and the bottom chart and that's why we use the equity only put call ratio to predict the broad market so here's the current ratio uh, you can see that we reached uh, <clears throat> most uh, the last signal we had was um, let's see if we can locate my pointer here here we go uh, right in here and it was a local local maximum on the chart, so that's a buy signal for the stock market. Obviously, the stock market's gone up a lot since then. And this ratio is still trending lower. Now, it's not trending at nearly the same pace that it was, but it's down here at a very low level. In fact, the lowest level it's been at in more than a year. However, the, the level itself is not important. It's the direction. So uh, eventually, this thing is going to roll over and begin to rise, and that will be the sell signal, as suppose the case here or here. But um, until that happens, it's just in an overbought state. It's near the bottom of the chart. It's it's surpassed areas where previous sell signals occurred on this chart. And the, you know, a year ago, in August, there was a, a nice sell signal, but it occurred at this level on the chart, and we're well below that now. 
in any case, uh, it has the ratio has been much lower uh, during the big bull market of 20 and 21 after the pandemic. Uh, it got way down into the 40s. You can see here, it's in the in, in the, around the 50 or 60 level. 60 meaning 60 puts are trading for every 100 calls, which is, you know, uh, a little well, quite a bit below average for equity only, but we, we don't really get, uh, in, in general, in stock options, you have more uh, calls trading than puts all the time, no matter whether it's a bull market or bear market. So anyways, this indicator is on a buy signal and it's uh, extended, but it's still on that buy signal. Now, as computers came along, we were able to calculate what's called the, the weighted or dollar weighted put call ratio, which is a more a complex uh, calculation, but it gives you, I think, a better handle on uh, the sentiment. So at the end of the day, uh, for every option, we calculate its dollar volume, which means its closing price times the volume that it traded that day. Now, we could do this tick by tick, every trade price times volume. That's an expensive data set. Um, we tried that for a while. didn't really produce any better results than just using this uh, way, this you know, formula. So let's say again it's IBM. We calculate this dollar volume for every option. Then we sum up all the puts separately, sum up all the calls, divide the two, and that's the dollar weighted put call ratio of IBM for the day. Now, now we're measuring the dollars being spent on bearish opinion versus the dollars being spent on bullish opinion, as opposed to just the pure volume, which is what the other ratio did. So we call the other ratio the standard ratio, this is the weighted ratio. So here's how it looks. Now, from a much lower level, it also had, though, a local maximum here, which is a buy signal back in March. And it's still going on that buy signal. You can see it. this is charted uh, through last night. So you can see it actually even made a new low last night. So, but eventually, it'll do this. And that will be the sell signal. Again, uh, it's it's very low on this chart. It's as low as it's been in over a year, but it's not nearly as low as as the uh, put call ratio was in 2021 when the when that bull market ended and we rolled over into a bear market there in the beginning of 2022. Uh, on the other hand, when we had these uh, last during that bear market, the put call ratio rose up to. Um, these highs, let me again let's see if I can find here we go. These highs in here, and by the way, 220 means $220 are being spent on puts for every $100 being spent on calls. That was the highest ratio that we'd actually seen since just after the pandemic lows. So sentiment was very negative then, and that generated buy signals. And then, you know, now we're getting down here where sentiment's very positive. We just haven't generated a sell signal yet. So just to sum, sum this up, these are very strong signals. Again, uh, the uh, put call ratios that we uh, have in our uh, newsletters have done very well over the years. And uh, currently, we're operating on broad market buy signals from, from March. And we are in this, of course, extremely overbought state. But that's not a sell signal until the ratios actually begin to rise. So uh, what do we buy when we get these signals? Well, <clears throat> uh, typically when, when I'm doing speculative buying, I like to buy an option that has a modestly high delta. Uh, the delta of a call option ranges between zero and one. Uh, zero meaning it doesn't move at all when the stock moves. I think we've all owned options like that at one time or another. Uh, one means it moves right along with the stock. So that'd be a very deeply in the money option. But the higher the call's delta, the more it's going to behave like the underlying stock. And since we're in the business here predicting the underlying, I don't want to be right about the direction of the market and then lose money because I bought the wrong call. So uh, that can happen too if you buy calls with the delta uh, being too low. So what we tend to do is buy slightly in the money, uh, looking for a delta of somewhere between 55 and 70 at the money option, call option, has a delta of about 55. Uh, a little bit in the money, it'll have a delta of 0.70. And again, it depends on the length of time of your um, option expiration. But I'm talking here usually about a one month option or so. So um, we typically buy SPY calls one or two uh, points in the money. And uh, and the same with puts, of course, if we're trading those. 
and we look for you know to take partial profits or to roll our calls up uh, when they become more deeply in the money when the delta advances uh, towards one. <clears throat> so a lot of times on TV you'll see this they, all their trades are bull spreads, and by a bull spread I mean you buy a call at, at the lowest at one strike, and you hope that the stock moves higher. Uh, but you also sell the call at a higher strike, so uh, ostensibly to reduce your cost. But what happens is you cut your profit potential off here at this higher strike. That's a very detrimental thing to a speculator because, especially if you get a big move, speculators can you know grind out small losses for a long time and then make some big gains, and overall it's a it's a winning uh, scenario. But if you're going to cut off your gains, uh, then you're going to have problems. So the only time we ever spread is when the underlying uh, options, when the options are very expensive in terms of implied volatility. And so <clears throat> typically, uh, that's not very often, <laughs> you know, just occasionally. Now, we did have that for a lot of last year because VIX was high and SPY options were expensive. But just take a look at this chart. So the red line is uh, if you just bought the call, and the black line, of course, is the bull spread you created by by spreading. So you you often hear them say, "Well, you're risking less." You're actually not risking less. In both cases, you're risking 100% of what your broker requires you to put up. So if you really are worried just about dollars, then buy a few less calls uh, than you would have bull spreads, but if you just have the call on, then you have this large profit potential to the upside, which your spread um, will, of course, decapitate if you uh, keep it on. Now, if you if you do spread, if options are expensive and you do spread, there's two ways you can um, mitigate the, the negative effect of that spread. Uh, one is widen the difference in the strikes. So in terms of SPY, uh, last year we... We typically on a call bull spread, we're widening the strikes out to 50 or 20, uh, 15 or 20 points. And on a put spread, much larger, 30 to 50. Currently, we're not spreading calls at all. But VIX is down to 13. I don't see that that's necessary. Now, puts might be a slightly different case because the implied volatility of out of the money puts is quite high. So uh, if you were going to say do a put spread out in October, then you might use something very wide, like a 40-point spread. Secondly, so that's the first thing you can do, widen the strikes. That'll help you. And secondly, then, when you hit the short strike, with that means things are going well for you. Uh, if you're in a call bull spread, the short strike is the higher one. So that means the stock is moving up. But now you've hit that short strike, so you're pretty much going to uh, uh, cut off your profit potential going further. So roll the whole spread up at that point. Similarly, on the downside, if you have a put spread on, the short strike is the lower one. So that means the underlying is moving down, and uh, those things are in your favor. In any case, uh, before we leave this subject, I just want to show you a couple of recent uh, put call ratio charts. So this is Edwards Life Sciences, and you can see that um, the put call ratio in the last year or so has ranged from here, and that, that was actually a local maximum. That's a pretty good buy signal. And then there's been some. Uh, it has dropped from there all the way down to where it is today. And here it just made a local minimum, which is a new sell signal. Now, when we're looking at the individual stock uh, put call charts, we only trade these outer extremes. We don't trade uh, like that. That right there would technically be a buy signal, but we're not trading that one. It's just too much in the middle of the chart. So we have a recent sell signal in Edwards Life Sciences. Also, uh, and this is the Emerging Markets ETF, and you can see the put call ratio here exploded uh, during the last month or so. I'm not exactly sure why, uh, but it did. And so it rose all the way up here and now has seemed to make a local uh, maximum, which is a buy signal. And so, uh, and you can see not only that, but the the ETF is starting to break out on the upside there. My line is a little wavy. But uh, so if that technical breakout coupled with the put call ratio buy signal uh, indicates a, you know, a potential bullish move for emerging markets. 
We can also uh, calculate PICO ratios on futures. Now, what we do here is we calculate the ratio using uh, the futures option. So this is soybeans, and um, the chart on the bottom here is strictly the uh, chart created by using soybean options that trade on the Chicago Board of Trade. But you don't have to trade soybean options in, if you don't want to, uh, because there's often an ETF that mimics the, um, the futures contract. In this case, there's an ETF with the symbol SOYB. So we, this chart is uh, recent, but not, not, uh, not uh, the buy signal occurred a couple of months ago. So we bought so SOYB calls. And you can see that even though the ratio, the ratio first it was descending rapidly, now it's descending less rapidly, but it still made a new low right there. So this buy signal is still intact. So when we buy individual futures or ETF or stock um, calls and puts based on the put-call ratio, we'll stay with it as long as the put-call ratio uh, is is uh, signal is still intact. And in this case, it is. It's still a buy signal. All right, so let's move on uh, to market breadth. <clears throat> and um, market breadth sim simply is advances minus declines. You can keep a cumulative total or you can calculate an oscillator. We do the oscillator, well, we do both. But um, the oscillator that we calculate is determined this way. It's 90% 90% of yesterday's oscillator value plus 10% of the difference between today's advances minus declines. And we can do this either with New York Stock Exchange data, which is the most common way to look at advances and declines, or we can look at what we call stocks only data, and that's all optionable stocks. So that's more difficult for you to calculate at home, but we do that uh, for you as a subscriber to our services. So here's the oscillator going back uh, 10 years or so. You can see the uh, the green lines are uh, oversold conditions, and when the market was really advancing through most of the time between 2013 and 2021, with the exception of the pandemic and also that uh, very violent decline in 2018 a couple of times, it rarely was oversold. But then last year we had a bear market and it got oversold quite a bit. In any case, um, oversold does not mean buy. Where we actually buy is when it stops being oversold. So our most recent buy was right there on uh, June 27th. And since then, it's gone into overbought territory. So the red lines are overbought. And again, not a sell signal until it stops being overbought. So another condition, another overbought condition in the market. Um, just to summarize here, we, these are this is our most short-term indicator. Uh, it can flip back and forth quickly. I said it typically gives one or two signals a month, but it can be much more extreme than that. And as a result, the whipsaws are potentially larger here or more frequent. So we're, we're pretty careful with this. We don't always trade every signal coming out of this uh, indicator, but it is right now overbought, and it's probably going to give a sell signal pretty soon. It's interesting to note that today the market market is still up, but Brent is negative now on the day. So that's not going to be helpful in any sense <laughs> when the market is up and Brent is negative. Another thing we look at is new highs versus new lows. Uh, we, there's three categories here. One is the New York Stock Exchange data. There's also then the stocks only data. As I said, that's all optional stocks. And there's NASDAQ. In any case, this gave a buy signal on June 6th. It's not quite shown on this chart. But you can see here, new highs are very numerous and new lows are minuscule. And that's pretty much continued all the way down to today. So uh, yes, yesterday, for example, there were 113 new highs on the New York Stock Exchange and only six new lows. So this indicator is still bullish. Uh, it will it will stop at that bullish sign if new lows uh, exceed new highs for two days in a row. So what about VIX? VIX is uh, you know something a lot of people follow. I, I think quite a few people don't understand VIX probably as well as they should. But it, the VIX is the CBOE's volatility indicator. And there's two things about VIX that are quite important. One is its trend. It should be trending opposite to the market. 
And number two, if it spikes up and back down again, that's a buy signal. So this chart, uh, so um, also low VIX is overbought. VIX right now is 13. That's as low as it's been since January of 2020. So that's, I'd say, pretty low. Uh, not, it got much lower then, back then. But it's overbought too, so another sort of overbought indicator. In any case, uh, these are the spike peaks on the chart. The um, red, red ones are uh, successful buy signals. Uh, the orange ones are an overlapping signal. In other words, uh, when we get this buy signal, it's in place for 22 trading days. This just means a second signal came along within that 22 trading days. The same thing back over here on the left. We don't trade the second signal, just the first one. And then these are losing signals. Uh, there are a few of those during the bear market. But uh, so it's probably a little bit more oriented towards a bull market indicator, but it hasn't given a signal now for a while. And you can see the VIX is just sitting down in here uh, in, in the 13 area thing. In fact, today at one point was down to just below 13. And so this is just sort of, you know, nothing. It's just neutral. It's not. It's not negative for the market. If it stays down, you can see the 200-day moving average continues to fall, and that's a trend of VIX is downwards. So, with the trend of VIX being downward, that's that's bullish for stocks. Um, you know, what's you might ask? Well, why is VIX staying near 13? Well, basically, because uh, there are some big big money players that trade SPX options that still are worried about the market. So they are buying some out of the money puts, which holds the price of VIX up. Uh, and also, as I'm going to show you later, there's a seasonality to VIX right now, too, that uh, it typically rises during August. So some traders are probably getting ready to try to trade that. <clears throat> um, you can't trade VIX itself, but you can trade the futures and you can trade VIX options, where, which are based on the futures, not on VIX. So in a bull market, we look at the term structure of the VIX future. So there's a one month future, two months, et cetera, and the term structure slopes upwards. In a bear market, the opposite happens, and especially like a bad bear market like March of 2020, uh, you really had some deep, deep discounts. So where are we right now? I took these prices this afternoon. VIX was at 1288 at that time, and you can see that all the futures are, each one is successively higher than the, its predecessor. So the term structure slopes upwards, and they're all trading at a premium to VIX. In other words, 14.75 minus the VIX price of 12.88 equals a premium of 187. So all of that's bullish. Uh, if you don't, you can, by the way, you can look at the futures prices on a uh, slightly delayed basis by just going to the CBOE website and looking at the VIX uh, futures part, portion of it. Also, the CBO we publishes six volatility indices. Um, VIX is the 30-day index. That's the one you're most familiar with. So we, as we just saw in the previous chart, uh, that's trading at 1288. But there's a nine-day. And then recently, they introduced a one-day. So it gives you a little idea if you're trading the zero-day expiration option, just how expensive they are. There's the three-month, six-month, and one-year. Again. You can see the term structure slopes upwards, so that's that's not it says mostly bullish. That's outright bullish. So I should erase that word mostly. So that's bullish. So the volatility construct, which is all these term structures and the premiums and CBOE indices and futures, it's all bullish, and it will stay that way until the two front months invert. If that happens, then you'll get a sell signal. So the front month is. Right now is August trading at 14.75, and the next month is September trading at 16.25. That's a premium of $1.50. That's a big, healthy, bullish premium. But if that inverts and goes negative, then that's a sell signal, and you should act on that because in the past when that has happened, it's been a really quick and nasty predictor of almost like market uh, almost crashes, not necessarily a crash, but a very bad market. So uh, this sums it all up. Now, I, I had so much on the bullish side, I couldn't even get the equity put call ratios in here. They're supposed to be over here in this column too. So all this stuff is bullish. The chart of SPX, 
the construct of volatility derivatives we just talked about, the trend of VIX, the breadth oscillators, new highs versus new lows, and the put call ratios. Now we know some of these are overbought, uh, but none of them are on sell signals yet, and we have no, no bearish signals right now. So as a result, we continue to hold our core bullish position uh, just based strictly on the S&P chart, that would be an easy call, but these others are chiming in as well. If we fell below 43.30, though, that, that would interrupt that entire uh, bullish scenario. And, you know, I, I don't think that's going to happen right away, but it eventually could. And, of course, we raise our trailing stops as, as the market uh, advances, so that number could go higher uh, later. <clears throat> Um, I wanted to mention two other things quickly before we end. One is what we call cumulative volume breadth. In other words, every day, uh, you know, advanced decline accumulated, we just take the number of advances, we subtract the number of declines, and we look at the, uh, the running total. But here, we take advancing volume minus declining volume and do a running total on that. So that's this yellow line right here. And... It's been quite uh, accurate all the way back to where we have this uh, over 20 years of data here, uh, that when this makes a new high, if it precedes the S&P making a new high, then S&P will follow. So this is this was the pandemic sell-off here. S&P sold all the way down to here. Cumulative volume fell way, way back. But then by June of that year, cumulative volume made a new high. At that time, S&P was still about right here. Eventually, S&P followed, so that was a gain of 198 S&P points uh, following along. Then we went higher, uh, cumulative volume made a new high in late, uh, <laughs> those dates are all the same. Something's wrong with this part of the chart. Uh, that that was uh, right at the end of 2021, uh, December 2021. And, uh, you know, S&P moved to a new high in January, whatever, fine. But now we're back here to our cumulative uh, volume breadth is ready to make another new high. In fact, it, it could do it today. Uh, let me just check some data here. Um, yeah, no, right now we've got more downside volume than upside volume, so it's not going to do it today. But when it does, and I think it's... It's coming pretty close here. That means that S&P will also follow to a new all-time high. Now, the all-time high in S&P is 48.08. You know, today, we're, we're around 45.60-ish. So that's a pretty big move. So if this does confirm, uh, we would buy some long-term out-of-the-money calls to try to capitalize on that. Then just one last chart, the seasonality of VIX. So VIX has a, a definite seasonality. and that one very important part of that seasonality is that the yearly low in VIX is typically in July. Now, it used to be right around the 1st of July, and it probably uh, technically, uh, you know, on this chart still is, but it's, it remains low through most of July. Then it begins to advance, and many years there's a bad sell-off in September and October, and then VIX peaks out in that area and declines again to get back to where it was at the beginning of the year. Now, prior to the pandemic of 2020, this this B peak was not that high, but if you recall, VIX went to 90 back in 2020, so it pushed that higher. But in any case, we're right there at letter C, or somewhere in that neighborhood. And so we're looking to, uh, you know, we're watching carefully for VIX to start to increase the upside. That would be not only a negative for the market, but a positive for VIX. And so you could trade VIX as well. If you're trading VIX, so you need to buy VIX options, and they're based on the underlying future. So uh, without going into a whole lot of detail, you need to stay short term when you're doing that. So one, two, three week options, maybe a month, that sort of thing. So I mentioned earlier that at this website, you could download the PDFs of today's presentation. You can also uh, take advantage of this offer where we're offering the book options as a strategic investment, the uh, daily strategy, uh, the option strategist newsletter, and then the home study course, which is a uh, a set of uh, 
downloadable videos that are we recorded last year. I believe there's 14 in all. And then a money management cons consult if you're interested. So that is all available at that same website. Um, just be, if you want to delve into the option strategies a little more, the track record is available on the website. Uh, also, the 14-part uh, home study course, uh, each, each uh, part of that is about an hour and a half or more in length. And then there's the book, of course. Uh, we have a money management website as well. I'll show you that URL in a second. We have a couple of other newsletters, actually four other newsletters that we publish, and we have a, a Monday. Uh, we have a YouTube channel where I update the, our market comment on Monday mornings. So I invite you to take a look at that as well. And uh, meanwhile, there's our contact information, and here's the contact information for money management if you're interested in that. So, Rob, I think we're just about on time. I'm going to turn back to you. Uh, I don't know if there were questions or not. I really, I don't see them in here. But... Larry, you are perfectly on time. And I got to say, watching your presentation over and over, um, oh, my God, does it just hammer home that put call ratio and the way the charts are inverses of each other. That is absolutely brilliant. <laughs> you know, right. incredible. Incredible information from you as usual. Ladies and gentlemen, that was Mr. Lawrence McMillan of McMillan Analysis Group. And we refer to Larry as the EF Hutton of options traders here on Traders Corner because when Mr. McMillan is speaking options, it is really a good idea to listen. And I will guarantee that you learn something. Keep up the great work, Larry. You know, it right. does look amazing. I've been waiting all day to listen to your perspective on the current <laughs> market environment. And I truthfully made a little money on puts this morning before the you know webinar, but um, <laughs> I think I'm gonna bias myself long starting tomorrow. <laughs> All right, well, you know, market market is selling off right now, so we might start getting some of those sales. So we'll have to see. <laughs> hey, um, I can't wait to your next presentation just to you know take a little bit of bias moving forward the next couple of days before anything changes dramatically. But, right. ladies and gentlemen. If you're interested in receiving trade alerts from the author of the Bible of Options Trading at a steeply discounted Special Traders Corner price, we've placed Larry's promotional link in the chat box. You can also learn more by going to optionsstrategist.com. Larry, thank you so much for joining us today. I wish okay. you a great everything. All right, thanks. Talk Not a later. problem, sir. Um, I just want to take time out to thank all of the over thousand uh, registered attendees that have come here today to you know see the presentations to everything you guys are what makes traders corner great and we appreciate you and i told you at the top of the show we had a great lineup and our next presenter who possesses more than 25 years experience in equity and options trading with expertise in technical analysis using options to hedge and special speculate and portfolio assets management he uses technical analysis market internals, sentiment gauges, and volatility to trade stocks and options using Master Trader's techno-fundamental approach. He formed Master Trader with Greg Capra, an icon in technical analysis, to educate self-directed traders in trading and investing. Here to present Learn to Trade Wide Range Bar Setups on All Time Frames is Mr. Dan Gibby of Master Trader. Welcome back to Trader's Corner, Dan. Thanks so much. Pleasure to be here. Thanks for those kind comments. As always, we have an amazing program here for you today. Now, we are technical-based traders, and that's the foundation for us trading anything that moves on any time frame, stocks, and options. We have a total, we need a bias before we decide if we want to buy or sell options. But I'm going to concentrate today's session on the power of what we call wide-range bars, and a bar in and of itself is just, it's just a fact, it's a big bar. But I'm gonna show you how to combine that to find tradable opportunity, both what we call igniting moves and ending moves. And we always start with this slide because this is our technical approach to, to trading. There's many ways to skin the cat in the financial markets, and ours is with this summary right here. Price is king. Give me a compelling setup, no setup, no action, end of story. Then if we have a compelling setup, then we overlay our other concepts, some of which are listed here. 
like, okay, where is this compelling pattern in connection with the overall trend? Is it on support or resistance? What does multiple time frame say about the probability of this setup moving as intended? Hey, what are the broader markets doing also? Am I fighting it? Am I not? We use market internals to tell us when the bulls or bears are getting at extremes. And it just gives us a warning shot of, hey, you know, there could be accidents, this same pattern, it's not gonna have the same degree of follow through as if the market internals were neutral and not flagging a red, um, you know, bearish or, or bullish extremes. Trader psychology as always is an integral part of trading. You need a trading plan, you need a successful and objective method, and then you need the discipline and patience to, to follow your method. That's what successful trading is all about. So what are, what are these? We are looking, today's subject is gonna focus on big bars. Now, what's a big bar, Dan? Well, it's gonna jump out at you. It's a wide range real body relative to all the other prior bars. We don't, we, it, there's no, we don't define it where you say, oh, it's 47% of this or that. They're gonna jump out at you as I'm gonna show you in numerous examples. So that's a range expansion bar. This is a narrow range bar. They're, it's, they're just bars, it's not a tradable event. So a bottoming tail, we call this, even though it's not a big green bar like this, see that this opened here, no bottoming tail, closed at the high, no topping tail. So that, that's a wide range bar, big body, big range, little to no tails. Now this is still a range expansion bar. So the low to the high could be the absolute same as this one but it occurred the setup intra period i say because if it's a daily bar well then it's intraday if it's a 15 minute bar well then you know within the 15 minutes before the bar closed it formed differently so instead of this one opening flat and closing at the high this one opened here went down and then closed at the high with a green real body but it's still a bullish range expansion bar where buyers took control in, in both situations. Opposite, obviously, for the bearish side. So these are just nine beautiful red and green candlesticks that are all bullish trade setups. Today's session, do you see any wide range bars or, 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 or range expansion bars? This is what we call a, a, just a master trader buy setup. It's in an uptrend, it's a retracement, reversal on support. So no, there doesn't have, there doesn't have to be a, a wide range bar. What about this one, breakdown failure? It trapped the bears on a breakdown and closed with a wide range engulfing bar. Now you got my attention. Does that mean I buy this? No, it means go back to the other page and overlay the other concepts, and then I'll tell you if I have a high probability setup or not. This one is a range expansion bar, so that, that again, that's it's not a tradable event. I need to look at more. This, yes, we define a bull 180 is a wide range red bar, immediately followed by a wide range green bar. So in essence, this is a two bar bullish turn, whereas this is a one bar bullish turn. One of our patterns called the bull one, two, three continuation. I want a wide range igniting bar here. I want one or more inside bars that stay in the upper third. And we buy over the high of, of that couple of bar set up, stop under the low, manage in between. W bottom, we're looking for some type of bullish retest after a big momentum move down. It may or may not occur with a wide range bar, but obviously if it does, then that's a plus. All right, let's 
now look at a bunch of charts and, and implement the power of the wide range bar and talk about setups because we're here to, to make money. This is the, it's an older chart of the diamonds here. So can you identify the wide range bars and their messages? So just, you know, we're, I'm not going to say a word now, but can you see any wide range bars, range expansions and their messages? All of our daily charts are this simple. Red and green candlesticks, color coded volume, and we use three moving averages on the daily chart. 20, 50, 200. They help speed up the analysis. We don't believe in oscillators, uh, you know, GAN lines, all, all this crazy stuff because they are what we call subjective indicators, which the majority of the time lead to incorrect decision making. That if you just take all that garbage off your screen, I can see what's going on with supply and demand, which is all we trade. And the reason technical analysis works is because it reflects the sum total of all market participants. So th this bar was this sell off in this, this one bar is the sum total of, of fundamental traders, of retracement traders, of technical traders. But we say that charts don't lie. And that's why you, we, you got to get rid of the noise, the news, um, and, then, and then just trade these compelling setups. This is what uh, we use for scanning. It's called Telechart 2000, and it's an amazing piece of software where we can, we have all, we have different setups scanned in here that allow us to quickly find opportunity on any time frame that you're trading. Uh, we, don't, we don't own it, we have no association with it, um, but my partner, Greg Capper, has been using it for 30 years, and it's, it's amazing. So for today's subject, these would be some of the, uh, we have a wide range bar. So green wide range bar, you can be on daily, weekly, intraday, red wide range bar. We also have a, a one, two, three continuation setup, like I showed you on the other page. And since I told you where I'm gonna show you how, how to, the power of wide range bars, but I'm going to show you setups because we only make money on setups. We don't make money on one bar. Two more definitions here. This was just a beautiful example of defining um, our, our definition, wide range bar igniting and wide range bar ending. We define a wide range bar ending as a fluid move down far from the 20 period moving average and then notice it is the biggest red bar in this entire collapse from february here so think of the psychology of patterns that that's telling us that the end is near it's the last of the mohicans so to speak that are throwing in the towel saying, I can't take it anymore. I'll never trade this stupid stock again. And you, they hit their puke point. Now, does that mean that's the low? Would I buy right there? 100% no. It is on my list, whether it's, it's the next day, the next day, the next day. But unless it goes right to zero, to bankruptcy, the odds of this reversing in the very near future is staggeringly high, but I need a, a tradable pattern. Volume also comes into play in these ending moves. So notice we had the biggest volume showing capitulation again. What happened the next day? I got a 180 reversal. Now I have two kind of inside bars here. Now that was a tradable event for the short term. You know, it's still kind of dead money going sideways here. But voila, my 20 MA flattened out, my 50 flattened out. This is what I call a price void. Momentum moves leave little 
to no congestion or resistance to the left. So when I get a compelling setup, then it has room to move into the void. This now is a wide range igniting bar from consolidation. And I have a one, two, three. This is an extremely high probability setup trade. Remember, it's one of my nine on that on that bullish money setups. So we buy over the high. Initial stop is under the low. And wow, look at that. We call this ignited volume also because the, the positive volume, there, there's the bullish demand is overwhelming. Uh, the, the available supply, which is how this bar got created. Inside bar stayed in the upper third, just no brainer, one, two, three. Examples now, Intuit, this is one we traded a week or so ago. Big trading range, look, look, at, look at these just flat moving averages. And, you know, my, my eye always, you know, even though we're trading this, my eye looks at many events that that support the bullishness of the of the setup that we're trading and that's why i'm starting here this was a very ugly red bar closing breakdown it gapped so it it's, makes total sense that your your bias is bearish under this low now a gap down notice that there's no tail so demand stepped up right out of the gate it's not what we call a 180 reversal because it's it's not back at the high but it's what we call a deep retracement notice that it closed greater than 60 percent into this bar that has my attention Danger, not danger. Um, hello, I'm not going down anymore. So does that mean I buy it right here? No, because there's no pattern. Now it went almost 100% back up into here. It's still slopping around. Now it went 100% again. So that this is an excellent retracement analysis showing strength. Still going sideways here, retest of this pivot. Now I have an igniting closing breakout, rising 20, rising 50. The 200's been consolidating for a while, and it's ready to start a new move. So this actually was a breakout on, the, on all three time frames: daily, weekly, monthly. Remember on the first slide of our concepts, multiple, um, time frame alignment increases the probability of the trade working. And now I have a one, two, three continuation again. And I, I like to think of the one, two, threes uh, as if you divide the six and a half hours of the market on a 15 minute chart, I say that this inside bar is 26 bullish 15 minute bars. So in essence, it's resting. It's resting after the power of this bar. So we entered right, in, right into the close here. And this is a closed trade in our all of our trades that we give subscribers. We have three advisory letters. We give the date, the symbol, the stock or option strategy, the technical setup, initial trade management, and we send telegram alerts uh, as we manage it throughout the life of the trade. So th this is a closed trade. We held it for 10 days. We actually, if, if you can read in here, we, since we had it 10 days, we, we had two weekly cycles and we legged into covered calls to reduce our cost basis. And then we got assigned at 490 right on this last day. And we made, you know, 351 bucks, 1270. If you just had one contract, we made 29.25 points, $2,900 uh, gain on 100 shares. 
This one, big bottoming pattern. Look at the moving averages. Again, a great visual aid. Here again, breakdown failure. Gap reversal. There's so much, so much data here saying I'm not going any lower. So look, look at these moving averages all converging, which suggests an expansion of volatility. But I, I could take these candlesticks off in this beautiful example and because it's it's the lines by definition what, what is a moving average it's taking the closing price of x days and dividing by by that number right and then as soon as i have a new day you lob off the last one so i have a long-term uptrend with a 200 rising i have a short and intermediate term retracement that is now flattened out and starting to, to break out. Look at my price weight over here. This bottoming tail, tail is what we call a tail. You know, similar to the poker analogy, when, they, when something happens where you're, shown, you're, you're showing your hands and you're like, got you. I now have the confidence that you are ready to go. And, and in the trader analogy, ready to go means the pattern, you're ready to, to hit the mouse and then are the trade. So once I have this bottoming tail that traded under these two bars lows, traded back at the high, the next day over this high, we bought the stock, break out daily, weekly, sold it in the thirds, eight day swing trade, Swing trade to us is, you know, generally a holding period, two to 10 days. We have a longer term ETF trader that we trade, you know, weekly and monthly price voids, and they have a holding period of, of weeks to months. So nice profit here, 14% return. And here, another bottoming pattern, wide range bar, inside bar, traded back over the red bar. So we, we actually coined this a, a bear sandwich because it, it's not a, it's, it's, it was, it's a 180 reversal followed by another 180 reversal. So it is a bullish setup, but again, don't forget the other uh, um, concepts that make up our method that tell us when to enter the trade. Here's my big price void. Here's my big bottoming pattern. Over the high of this red bar, over the high of these two bars, we entered it right on this where the arrow is. Bought the stock. We had a, a we just held it for two days. Two day swing trade. Rallied to the 200 in resistance. Another beautiful gain. Transports here. You know we had a beautiful breakout in the market and so many ETFs. So we, we've been extremely aggressive over the last, uh, you know, since this June breakout. And as I'm speaking to you today, you know, we, we, we cautioned in our green trading room, which is our live trading room, that, you know, that we, we say we have one eye on the exit door because there's still too much bullishness out there. And looking at my charts over here, which you can't see, uh, this is this is a fairly ugly reversal uh, going on right now. But but it was like shooting ducks on a pond with all of these these bullish um, bottoming patterns. But the, obviously the charts that I'm showing you here today are the power of the WRB. So here's a WRB. But look, the next two bars, I had no entry, right? So I'm gonna keep emphasizing that. A bar is not a tradable event. You have to give me a tradable setup with the void and multiple time frames, et cetera. Now that I have this closing breakout over these three bars, now I'm ready to go. Nine day swing trade. There's our return, and and this our closing spreadsheet just um it's set up to manually calculate the number of share size based upon a hypothetical um, a trading you know 
plan and so it, we just do that for ease um, but uh, obviously you can you pick your own share size per per your own account uh, square here has been on our our list for a while for a long term bottom notice the weekly chart notice look this this i wouldn't call this a a wide range red bar why well because it's not as big as this one it's not as big as this one it's not as big as this one but the fact that this red bar was a closing weekly multi-month breakdown it's the concept of no follow through to that red bar so that is bullish now this bottoming tail was a retest of that now this is a range expansion bar and it's still just going sideways for another couple of months but that's allowing the 20 ma to flatten out and build a bigger base of demand down here but now let's go take a look at the weekly chart. So the, this is 60 bucks right here. This is 60 bucks here. So this small little dip right here is this dip right here. So notice that it made a new low and snapped right back. Do I do anything now? Well, no, because I don't have a, I don't have a pattern. I, I would have had a small pattern over the high of this green bar into this void. But now look at the arrow that I'm pointing to. I have a wide range closing breakout with a bullish weekly. So we actually gave that as, as a long term trade at that point in time. This is our live trading room that I mentioned earlier that we were giving the caution about this market environment. We start at 9 a.m. every morning. My partner, Greg Capra, starts off with, with a market review, uh, intermarket analysis, uh, bonds, currencies, et cetera. And then I, I look at our hit list, gap trades, and then throughout the whole day. And, and we, we show it on YouTube for free from 9 a.m. to 9.30. Then we turn it off and, and just focus on our green trading room. But I, I call this, it, it's where you can come watch us like walk the talk. I mean, everybody in this 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 beautiful um, presentation here today for Traders Corner. I mean, we're giving you fantastic education. I hope everyone walks away with with some takeaways and and trying to increase your trading mastery. But you know, we're we're unless somebody's showing you real time how to trade, that's what this green room does. You're watching us implement our approach all day long in real time so we're scanning we're answering questions we're we're trading we're tr moving stops around so we, we have a no-brainer seven dollar trial and spend an entire week with us and 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 watch us implement our, our method all right what do we got here big old bottoming pattern we're talking about wide range bars today ugly wide range bar followed by a deep, so I, I'd call that a 180 reversal, close enough for government work. Okay, Dan, so are you telling me to buy it? No, sir. Remember I've said it 18 times already? I don't have a pattern. Look to the left here. I have no, I, it, I, had, I say there's no void. There, there's, there's resistance there. All right, so I'm gonna keep watching it. Uh-oh. Red bar suggested lower prices. Not so fast. I have another 180 reversal. So now I got two 180 reversals. Do I trade it now? No, same answer I just gave you 10 seconds ago. What about now? I have a closing breakout. Yes, you could. And remember I said we use our technical based approach for trading options. For directional trades, we buy puts and calls which I prefer when options are liquid because you have three benefits. You have leverage, you have limited risk, and the way we trade them, over nine out of 10 times, we're gonna lose less money 
than we do if you're trading the underlying. Provided they're liquid, they offer phenomenal benefits, but we also use our technical approach to say, after the close of this green bar right here, point with this arrow, the odds of this holding are substantially high. So I would go through my short credit spread checklist. I would make sure that the options are liquid, see um, what I can get paid to sell an out of the money put spread under support, how many days to expiration, and finally make sure there's no pending news like earnings. And we, and we one of our three newsletters is called uh, the Weekly Options Trader. And we only sell options and spreads at a, around compelling patterns that expire 10 days or less. And we call those income trades. And they, they work fabulously. We, we, we make money. You know, you all, I'm assuming, know, know the option Greeks a little bit, right? So we make money through time decay. We make money through volatility contraction. And we make money as the stock moves in the intended direction because the delta of the short option we sold is getting further away, which means it's cheaper and our unrealized gain rises. So I would definitely sell a put spread on this day. Now, look at this red bar, today's subject. This, this is a range expansion bar that suggested lower prices. Two bars later, it negated it. Now I have a closing breakout with a price void. You know, we, we my partner Greg and I in the green room, and we we tell our subscribers, you know, you 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 want to get to the point of saying it's a no-brainer setup because the odds are in your favor that if it you know triggers like over this bar's high the odds are overwhelming that it's gonna go higher. This pattern suggests it's going to these prior highs of 260. And we put our protective stop in. Does that mean that news can't come out and it'll gap under our stop? Of course not, but we're probability traders. We have a bias, we share size it, and that's why we have trade management. So this is actually Bitcoin. I grabbed this, I think two days ago. And, you know, just look at these wide range bars. So this was a breakdown, 180 reversal. But again, remember, there's no trade right here, so I wouldn't buy it. Red bar suggested lower prices, not so fast. Now I have a three bar reversal. Now, would I have bought this? No, because there's no good price void here. But if there were um, liquid puts, on the, on after this bar right here, I would have shorted an out of the money put. Now, unfortunately with Bitcoin futures, to my knowledge, there's still no US broker that allows us to do that. There's some Bitcoin ETFs, there are some Bitcoin stocks like MSTR, Mara, Riot, um, Block, so on and so forth that, that we do um, sell, sell credit spreads on. So this bar looked fantastic over the high, then this looked like on a weekly chart, it was going up to the next resistance area. Not so fast, 180 reversal. Bearish consolidation in the bottom part of this wide range bar with a price void. Now I have another wide range bar closing breakdown with a price void, so that, that is a bearish setup now. You know, look how clean these charts are, folks. If you, I mean, it's, I mean, pity the people who just overlay all this nonsense and try to tell you about their mystical um, Fibonacci's and crossovers, and you, you, it just clouds your decision making. Look at this. We had a little breakout here. We had a gap breakout, igniting bar that rested look at the flat 20 ma now i have another igniting closing breakout now i have a red bar ignored 180 reversal a gap breakout amazing strength right there intraday these work the same 
So whatever this was, a, gap, a little gap here, I'm showing you the daily here. So it had a small bullish gap. Look at my converging 20 and 50. So volatility is getting tight. I have a big old price void. It gapped open and ripped at the open. So it's on my long watch list. Red bar suggested lower prices. Red bar ignored. Bullish consolidation until the afternoon uh, reversal period at three o'clock. Closing breakout. 100% high probability late day breakout right there that we traded in our green room. Gap reversal. This is what we call a bull one, two, three, four consolidation, closing breakout, off to the races. Intraday again, gap down. This was a this was a one, two, three that we would have traded, <clears throat> but it didn't trigger. Next day, these vertical line this is a 15 minute chart, vertical line is the next day. Small gap up, another one, two, three. That's tradable for day trade. Next day, gap up, closing breakout, another one, two, three. That's tradable for day trade. You see, it's identical concepts on different time frames. Bear one, two, three continuation. I've shown you a couple of bullish ones. Everything we teach works the, the same on bearish setups. Look at my moving averages. I have a multi-month consolidation in a downtrend. Look at these topping tails. Look at green bars ignored right at the 50. So this is what we call bearish price action. Now I have a wide range bar, closing breakdown, inside bar, that's my bear one, two, three continuation. Short under the low of those two bars, initial stop here until you get the stock moving as intended, and then you just go into trail mode. Again, just no brainer setups once you learn what those setups are downtrend could this have, could this have been a big bottoming pattern absolutely it could have been but guess what green bar ignored 100% retracement all the way back down here now i have two inside bars it's then it then it's trading under this no brainer short. 500 shares, 25% return just in, in two day swing trade. This, this is our telegram alert. So it was in our master trader swing and options trader. This is an adjustment. So what we're doing is, so we covered a half lot, move the stop, trail over prior days high. You could be at work, golf course, and we send you in Telegram uh, new alerts and trade management. You don't even have to look at the chart if you don't want to. But if you want to learn to do it yourself, then you need our course. You need a systematic objective method and learn how, how, how to do it. 100% retracement, 180 reversal, closing breakout. Off to the races, price void. You know, Greg has this saying, uh, it's the same but different. And so, you know, I'm starting to not get in the habit of saying that too. 100% retracement. I mean, no chart is going to look identical, but we give you the knowledge to interpret the bars, the candles, the patterns, price action, price voids, bar by bar analysis. And you, have the knowledge to understand what I'm saying. Now, once you have the knowledge, however, you know, with anything, I, you know, I'm a private pilot also, I only have a couple hundred hours. Do you think I have the same intuition and skill as my professional pilot friends who have 30, 40,000 hours? Of course not. I've been doing this full time for over 25 years, full time. I'm not even counting the 
you know, 15 years that I was before charts were even out and I'm trading in a local Schwab office using the Wall Street Journal quotes, I'm not even counting that stuff. So you need seasoning to, to understand the power uh, and, and the confidence of when you see these setups over and over and over again. Today's subject, bearish gap, wide range bar. This is just another word I came up with called, uh, the, it's a bearish gap. And I say that it bullies. Why does it bully? Well, because it negated a bearish gap within the first 30 minutes. So that's a bullish event. Well, so does that mean I buy it, Dan? No, we've gone over this 20 times. It means you need a you need a tradable pattern. Okay, well, what's the tradable pattern here, Dan? Well, you this this gap reversal on support turned this into a double bottom with a beautiful price void. This is when we entered it on the 15-minute chart the next day when it broke through this incurred 15 minute resistance. That's when we entered. Now, if you were swing trading it, you would need a bigger stop, but that you could also day trade this over this over this line was our entry. And then your stop is under this 15 minute um, base for day trading. Here, let's see, I got two slides here. You got my attention here, it pulled back snapped right back and it's going sideways at resistance. So it's kind of like a little inverse head and shoulder for you classical people, you know, a left shoulder, head, right shoulder. Here's my, here's my neckline, small little gap up the next day. Okay. Let's see what happened the next day. Here's my 15 minute chart, which is, I say it's a microscope, right? Here's my, I mentioned 26, 15 minute bars per daily bar. These vertical lines pre-market, it gapped up over the prior day's high. Bullish price action pre-market, igniting bar, today's subject, and a buy setup into that wide range bar. Now, if you were quick enough, we, we would have given it a five minute high, and then this would be an ad. And it's up to you if you're trading it as a day trade or a swing trade. We gave it as a swing trade. So you bought the stock, uh, a bullish gap, breakout bullish consolidation at the 20. We legged into covered calls because we wanted to keep the stock. And we, we got it signed six days later. So here down a lot, 180 reversal and going sideways a bunch of bars. So it's building a big base of support, closing breakout, price void. For y'all, I sure hope, you know, we'll just spend 45 minutes with you and I do my absolute best to give you as much information as, as possible. But do, do you see the power of this? All these examples involving bars, 180 reversal, and it's consolidating the upper 50% of this bar. That's bullish price action. So the more bars you have here, it's building more support. Same, down a lot, gap down, igniting bar, a bunch of it's same, but different, right? Closing breakout, price void, buy over the high, stopping at a low. This is a range expansion bar, right? That we, we started with on one of the earlier pages. This is a wide range bar. The, the, the beauty of this um, bottoming tail is that it traded under these two red bars and snapped right back. That's my tell, the back to the poker guy. It's my tell. No brainer setup, over the high, stop under the low. Here's where we started. We'll finish up here. We got a minute or two left. So this was the same slide I showed you at the beginning. Wide range bar NFT means no follow through. So that's bullish. Gap reversal. That should have gone more and it failed. This is a small breakout failure. This is an igniting 
an igniting bar down after breakout failure. This is an igniting bar from a cell setup. Here's my range expansion after a climactic buy setup. Here's my same, you know, remember, same but different, same but different. I got a bunch of inside bars, no follow through to the red bar, range expansion after trading under three bars. There's my entry. It's not going anymore. It's not going anymore. Wide range closing breakdown. Sell out of the money bear call credit spreads there. Folks, we have this amazing opportunity here for you. So uh, Greg put this together. We have, we have a top-down approach um, swing trading course. We're going to throw in nine months of weekly lessons. Our swing and options letter, many of these trades came from there. We're going to give you three months of that, three months of the weekly options trader where we sell these credit spreads, lifetime coaching, the layouts from TC2000 that Greg um, has been making over the last 30 years. You add all that up, 1100 bucks. go to mastertrader.com forward slash happy July. 197. We want you to come check us out, uh, particularly if you if you don't know us, of course. Phenomenal deal. Come visit us in the green trading room. Email my partner Greg or me with any questions. Hope you enjoyed that, and look forward to seeing you in in the next webinar here with with the uh, Traders Corner. Thank you so much, Dan. I have to say, it's presenters like you that make me love my job. You know, just learning, watching everything. You know, you and Greg have really provided the trading community with incredibly valuable services and education over the last 25 years. And the technical bar buy bar analysis you guys do at Master Trader, second to none. Love your presentation on trading wide range bar setups. You know, the confirmation, the follow through, the breakout, the stop. Everything's just so easily put there and illustrated the way you showed it. Thank you so much for being here on Trader's Corner. We hope you come back and see us. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Mr. Dan Gibby of Master Trader. You can learn more on, by clicking one of the links I put in the chat box. We thank you for making such a generous offer to our audience. I made sure I put that in there too. Thank you so much again, Dan. We hope you come back and see us soon. Well, we're gonna keep the ball rolling, ladies and gentlemen, and make sure you're listening to our next presenter who is born and raised in New York, where he fell in love with trading while visiting his then-girlfriend and now wife, Lisa, at her job on the NYMEX floor in the fall of 1982. In 2008, he moved from New York to LA, or excuse me, not LA, LV, Las Vegas, and established Omni Trading Academy, where he teaches select students the Omni Trading Triangulation Formula. He's filled us with vast knowledge of trading, analysis, and trend formation by simply following trend lines and identifying formations on the chart will tell you all you need to know. As he said many times before, the chart is just a graphical representation of the day's news. Ladies and gentlemen, here to present, according to the charts, not the word on the street, is Mr. Oscar Carboni of LiveWithOscar.com. Welcome back to Trader's Corner, Oscar. Well, thank you. Thank you for having me. And thank you for all the presenters before me. Fantastic stuff today. I hope you traders out there are learning some great tips and tricks. And hopefully you will participate in some of what you've seen in the past. And again, I thank Traders Corner and of course, Trade Mastery for inviting me to this event. So I have basically, I've been showing Wall Street and the trading world at large since the early 1980s, that the chart is a roadmap to the absolute best pricing that you can do. Figuring out where a market's gonna move forward, nothing works as well as a chart. And I've been able to illustrate that in many, many, many videos and, and of course sessions like these to show people that as opposed to systems, which when the market changes gears, systems need to have parameters tweaked and they change and blow up, analysis just continues to morph with the markets. So at the beginning of this year, the analysis told me to tell everyone watching, my Omniacs around the world, that this bottom, that the bottom was in right now, February of this year, bottom is in, in the stock market. I actually did 
a webinar for Traders Corner in the beginning of the year. In fact, right here, I did a webinar for Traders Corner, and I started doing these webinars on 207 Calling the Bottom. If you wouldn't mind, before we get started on what I want to show you now, what I have planned is we did a webinar in February. I used a bunch of charts to prove bottom was in. I am I'm going to show you a quick clip of the previous webinar we did together in February, and then I'm going to move forward looking at every one of those very same charts that we looked at in February to see is the bottom in, were we right, and where are we going next to show you the power of technical analysis. Now, while I do this presentation, I promise you, on many of these charts, there will be tips and tricks that will work very well for you to use in the future. So let me start off, if you don't mind, with a quick clip. This was the last webinar I did for Traders Corner. Ladies and gentlemen, here to present, forget the news, read the charts. Mr. Oscar Carboni. Uh, let's see where the volume is here. Welcome to Corner, Oscar. Thank you, thank you for the invitation and a round of applause for all you great presenters before me. This will, you're learning a lot out there, and this is fantastic for all of you. Uh, I will say that uh, I've been trading for 41, over 41 years now. Grew up on the exchange as an 18-year-old kid and literally held point-and-figure charts. Before there were computers, this is actually one of my charts from the days of old. And I have to tell you, there is no better roadmap than reading a chart. That is absolutely the roadmap, if you will, to further pricing. And no matter what you look at, no matter who thinks or feels anything, has nothing to do with where the market is going to go. If you want to know where the market is going to go, you need to view a chart. That is the that is the roadmap. So I have a thesis that I put out, which I also did back in 2007, called it the top of 2007-8. Forget about that. I put out a thesis earlier this month that the bottom has formed using charts. I received a lot of pushback afterwards, as you might have imagined, right? <laughs> but most of that pushback was, I feel, I think, and let me tell you right now, when you feel or think, that is a useless opinion, it has nothing to do with where the market's going to go. The charts will tell you where the market is going to go, I promise you. Now, I have nothing to sell you. There is nothing I'm going to sell you at the end of this presentation. Uh, my job is to show you market direction, where it looks like we're going next, to prove to you the bottom's in, and give you some good information that you can use moving forward. Traders, that was my last webinar. We were here. This is the date. Oscar, but, yes. as unprofessional as it is for me to interrupt, I absolutely remember that was a webinar, and as hesitant as I was to believe you, you nailed it. I remember that you actually spoke to me afterwards and said you didn't think that the bottom was in. So, that's <laughs> Oscar, cr credit where it's due, you made that call 100% accurate and ridiculously so. Congratulations. That Now, that is the power of technical analysis because even though I do have a crystal ball, <laughs> I don't actually use it for trading, I promise. So what we do have is technical analysis, and let me show you where we are now. So we were here when I came up with my thesis, the bottom was in, and showed a vast amount of charts to prove that the bottom technically was in. The market has traveled dramatically higher since then. This is the NASDAQ daily bar. Before we get into anything else, please remember how risky trading can be. Never trade without stops. I don't care if you're trading options, stocks, cryptos, you name it. If you're trading it, ETFs, it's going to be risky. Never trade without stops, okay? They are number one, you put them in first. Anyway, what the chart will show you is exactly what the big boys on Wall Street are doing in a very simplistic way that you can understand. So you've got the NASDAQ racing higher ever since we called bottom and we do videos almost every night to day trade so we're not always long of course we buy and sell but the bigger picture is the bottom was in and what i want to show you on the nasdaq is that freakishly it started using a very small average or algorithm if you will um an average is an algorithm i mean the difference between an algo and an, al an, an algorithm and an average 
It's just not as complicated, but if you have something like an average, that's a small algorithm to begin with, just so that you know. Might be an algorithm from the days of old, but it's still an algorithm. In any event, the NASDAQ started to catch this right here. It started to catch on to something that I found slightly amazing. It's the 20 bar moving average. It's a very small moving average, but Wall Street is buying it every time we get down there. Look at that. It just runs up, hits the average, runs up, hits the average, and it's been happening every time. So what you can use to time NASDAQ on a daily basis, which is right now, because these algorithms or averages tend to morph and change, right now, top day, you can get away with the 20 ball moving average on the NASDAQ. Use it, I promise you, it's working really well. So that has been helping us amongst other things that we use, of course, time the day trading but as you can see the market has put its bottom in obviously it has rallied dramatically since we thought the bottom would be in and i want you to use the 20 ball moving average to time your nasdaq trades because if you ask me it's working like a charm that is what wall street is using right now how can we tell well look at it stops every time it gets near it and I don't know that me trading five, 10 or two lots is enough to stop the market, right? So it's not me, it's gotta be Wall Street doing it. Collectively, we're all Wall Street. So the NASDAQ chart, very easy to read. The tip for you on this chart is use the 20 ball moving average. If in fact we morph out of that into a different average, if you contact me, of course, I'll be more than happy to tell you what that new average is. In our last video, we did look at NASDAQ in our last webinar and we were here. So we've moved up dramatically. The call has been correct. The charts have proven to be correct. We looked at Apple as well. So let's go see where Apple is now. When, okay, another one, look at this. This is an interesting one. On Apple, and Apple is the market. I'm telling you right now, this is huge. It is a creature of habit. And you know what that creature of habit is? The same exact average that you see in the NASDAQ. For whatever reason, they are just teeing off when you get to that average, and guess where we're about to get to by today or tomorrow? Another tap of that average. This is Apple. It is a creature of habit. It is the 20 ball moving average. Now, let's go back a little bit. It worked for a long time, right? It started working here, and it has just held on ever since. And then we went into a frenzied up move. So a tip for you today, is if you want to time Apple, time Apple with the 20 bar moving average. Same thing with NASDAQ at the moment, which makes a lot of sense because Apple's such a big piece of the market. So I hope this works. It'll time Apple for you. And if that changes, of course, you come see me in my trading room. I'll be more than happy to tell you what it looks like Wall Street has grabbed onto next. But very nice move. And if you can see, it's created a channel as well. It fails at the top of the channel and cracks, gets just about to the bottom of the channel, hits the 20 bar average and rallies again. And it has just over and over. And you know the fund managers are taking full advantage of this, right? Absolutely, every time it hits that average, they come in and buy like mad. What will they do here? Your job is to wait and see. If it hits the average, you back off. It holds and closes, you can then get long. Gets through the average and starts to drop, you wait and see if it gets through the green line. It gets through the green line, it is time to go short. That's how we will use this average on Apple. I hope that will help you moving forward. Let's go take a look, another chart that we looked at together, but now averages or algorithms, if you will, will switch up a little bit, is Amazon. The Amazon chart, same sort of thing, but the average has changed. Look at this one. It's no longer a 20. They've grabbed onto a 32 algorithm for whatever reason. Whatever, whatever, I don't care what they use, as long as I can spot it and put it to work for our Omniac so that we trade on the right side, does not matter to me how to invent the wheel. I just want to know how to slap it on my car and go fast. So look at how well the 32 ball algorithm or moving average, if you will, has worked on Amazon. Look at this. It's freakish how well this has worked. Look at every instance. So, all right. So if Wall Street's going to use it, guess what we're going to do, kids? We are going to use it because we are smart enough to know that if Wall Street's using it, that's what we want to be using.
So a tip for you on Amazon, if you're an Amazon trader, is use the 32 bar simple moving average, or it's a 32 bar algorithm from what I can see, a simple one, but Wall Street is using it for sure. So we are just penetrating right here. You're getting through that average. You may come down and hit the black trend line, but that is what happens if you get through the average, like you see here and like you've seen there. So let's let this tell us what's going to happen next. We know it's been holding the average really well and staying inside of this black channel. Falls out of that. We've got something new to look at. But the tip for you is use the 32 bar simple moving average on Amazon. I know that will help you. Look at how well it works and look at how simple this is. Now, I will, I will say the analysis I do, which I give out to my Omniax, the platinum service, if you will, <clears throat> is when I'm going, when I'm personally getting in and out of a market, or if the Omni wants to get in and out of a market, whether I take the trade or not, I send out signals. And they're day trade. We get in at some time in the day and we're out by the close. We don't scalp, but we're in and out. That is much more intricate analysis than this. This is technical analysis 101. I can, you know, I can share these charts with you. If I was laying on a cot in kindergarten drinking milk and cookies, I promise you, this is my low level analysis. But there's a lot of you out there that I know this is going to help. What I have learned over my years is the more complicated I was in the beginning, the further from the market I was keeping myself. When I finally learned to be simple, I became at one with the market and started figuring out what I see and what's going on. It takes simplicity to figure this out, but you gotta go through complication to learn. Push the complication off from the side, get simple. You either learn that for yourself or you come hang out with me in my live trading room and I will help to teach you how to be much more simple than you may be today because simple works. Let's move on. Amazon. Next one we looked at was Meta and this is a fantastic chart. Facebook. Now, if you are an Omniac, you will know that I've seen Facebook way, way back here in November and called the bottom. We said Meta has found its legs. Meta will be the foundation of the metaverse, and it is going to just take over the world and explode, and it seriously has done that since. But another one, look how far back this average has been working on Meta. It grabbed on right here and has been working really, really well. And oddly enough, what average is it? The 32 bar, same thing that's working on Amazon. Look at how well this 32 ball moving average is working. Not only is it working well, look at how it's mimicking this trend line. This shows you that Wall Street is involved in this. This trend line and this average, they just ride one another. And every time the market gets near it, somehow it gets purchased and goes straight up. Well, that tells you Wall Street is all over this and they're using this as their algorithm. And that is the 32 bar. So your tip for Facebook, if you want to time it correctly, is use your 32 bar moving average because as you can see, it works like magic on Facebook, like magic. So my job today is to just give you a few tips, tricks and techniques that'll help you trade moving forward to show you that the market did, the charts did call bottom, they are right. So you should believe in these charts right now. They were right then, they will be right now because the market is always right. There are two rules I believe in. Rule number one, the market is always right. Rule number two, if the market seems incorrect or wrong to you, please refer back to rule number one. The market's always right. It's you seeing it incorrectly. If this is always right, it's a chart. The market is a chart. The chart's a market. If you can read the chart right, you call the market right. That's just the way this works. So if you find what Wall Street's using, it makes life a lot easier, right? The 32 bar moving average or algorithm on Meta, Facebook will help. So it did find its legs. The analysis is working fantastically well. We had earnings yesterday, so you had this major run up and turn around and come back down. So be it, nothing goes straight up. But as you can see, Meta, which is a huge component to the stock market, is bouncing off that 32 bar moving average, as is Amazon and some other major stocks out there. So Wall Street's using it on several stocks, not just these two. What else did we look at in our last presentation? Ah, oh, we talked about if the bottom is in, 
That means the lows in Bitcoin should be in. So we pulled the Bitcoin chart to see if that was going to be true. And let's see, when we did the video, we were here. So when I did that video, we were here. And it looks like the bottom did come in in Bitcoin as well as it did for the stock market. Now, what's great about this Bitcoin chart is it's telegraphing once again what Wall Street is using. Now, if you don't think Wall Street trades Bitcoin, there's a Bitcoin futures market in Chicago. It is it, it, the traders around the world are allowed to use it legally, right? It's an it's a absolute market set up in Chicago, and the big guys trade it. So. They have algorithms. I spot their algorithms. You call them average, call it whatever you want. If you want to time Bitcoin, you use the 80 bar algorithm. Look at how well this has been working. All the way back here. We can go back further. Look. It comes in right here, right? It's just about starting to come into play. Not quite. Boom, comes into play right here. And look at how well from that day forward, November of last year, it just becomes a magnet for Bitcoin. You get above it. Bam, it stops right at it, explodes, stops at it, stops at it. Through for only two days, then it starts to have a little time under, but look what happens as soon as it gets above, and we're about to test it again. Nothing's 100%, nothing's perfect, but this is a pretty good one, kids. So use the 80 bar moving average, or algorithm, if you will, to time your Bitcoin. It'll let you know if funds are getting in or getting out on the futures market in Chicago. So livewithoscar.com is where you'll always find me, kids. Again, I've nothing to sell you, but I'd like for you to come hang out with me in my live trading room and spend your life with me like I spend mine, looking at charts and watching markets and going through this crazy environment that we live in. And it's a free sign up. No credit cards are required. So if you get around to it, come to my site. What, what else did we look at? I think we looked at, I've got a list. We looked at Ethereum. And same sort of thing happened in Ethereum. Let's pull this down a little bit. And oddly enough, Ethereum is using the same moving average, the 80 bar. It's behaving the same way. Almost always holds. If it gets through, down to the green line. Gets through, down to the green line. Right back up. Right? Gets through, down to the green line. Right back up. Let's see what it does. Maybe this is our next buy point if it doesn't hold here, where day traders will let the market tell us. So 80 bar moving average on Bitcoin and Ethereum will help you dramatically. And then there's a really fantastic chart that we looked at that basically sums up the bottom is in and is really easy to understand. And I'm going to go over it with you right now because I think once you see this, you'll understand that if you're thinking the bottom's not in yet, this should change your mind that maybe it's time to think the bottom probably is in and we could go higher. You are looking at the NASDAQ weekly bar chart. Now, I have debuted this chart in almost every video for the last year and a half because it's a really strong chart to show us future pricing. So let's go and take a look at the past before we come and take a look at the present up here. Your weekly bar, meaning every one of these days, if you will, is not a day. Every one of these is a week. So Monday through Friday, Monday through Friday, Monday through Friday, weekly bar. Something interesting about the 200 bar moving average and the weekly bar chart in the NASDAQ I want to show you. So this blue line is your 200 bar moving average. Now, let's go look at history. As we go back, I want you to note we never break the 200 ball moving average. It just does not get broken. It doesn't happen. We do not break it. That's that. Oh, wait a minute. It breaks. When? 2008. That's the only time you could get through this in this century, practically. 2008, we had a crash. Understandably, the NASDAQ weekly gets under the 200 ball moving average. You know what comes back out? 2009. And never again to be seen. Now, follow me on this. What happens after we hit the 200 ball moving average? A rally ensues. Hit the average, a rally ensues. Hit the average, a rally ensues. Hit the average, should I continue to repeat myself? Hit the average, a major rally ensues. Now, let's move forward. We come back down again, we hit the average almost, didn't even get there, and look at the size of the rally that ensues next. 
200 ball moving average on the NASDAQ weekly. Look at the size of that rally, then it continues. It just continues forever. And what happens next? We come all the way crashing back down and almost hit the 200 ball moving average. What does that do for us? Major, major rally ensues. All right, let's continue. What happens next? 2019, we come all the way back down from 8,500 NASDAQ all the way back down to 6,000, almost hit the 200 ball moving average. A major rally ensues. All right, now, I think you understand the pattern here, right? If you don't get the pattern by now, you don't have eyes or ears. This is simple, right? So let's move forward. Here we are. The market comes crashing down for COVID. Bam, bam, bam. What does it do? Even during the event of COVID and the shutdown, it stops cold at the 200 and bounces. Major rally ensues. Then we came down to February. When I had 50 other reasons to call market bottom, the NASDAQ provides me with a hit on the 200 ball moving average. And I went, that's it. The bottom is in. It has to be. I've done work on 50 markets. It's telling me the bottom's in. And then I pull this NASDAQ and that confirms the bottom is in, right? Well, that was the beginning of this year. Look at what has happened since. We bounced off the average and just started to explode. Goes into a bull flag. Simple technical analysis, breaks out of the bull flag, and we have been in an extended rally ever since. Traders, that is how this works. It is simple. Anyone can do this. If you've got a good pair of eyes and a clean chart, you can see what's coming forward. So these are many of the charts that we looked at. We also looked at some daily charts of the E-mini S&P. I just want to finish the charts that we did in that first presentation. And then if you guys have some questions, I'll be more than happy to take them. We also looked at the E-mini S&P. Now let's get a little closer. What's happening right now? So, all right, so we did call the bottom. All that stuff happened, but we need to know what's going to happen next week. So let's take a look at what's happening now. We are absolutely in a bull market. This is the E-mini S&P daily chart. How do we know we're in a bull market? Well, before we started doing this, we were coming down for two years, or about a year, coming down. So we were making a high, a low, a lower high, a lower low, a lower high, a lower low, bear market. We stopped February, it stopped doing that. And by March, the bottom was in, and we went low and rallied up to a high. Then a, a higher low, right? It's higher than this one, up to a higher high, higher than that one. We drop to a higher low. All right, we are in a bull market rally now, right? We go up to a higher high. We drop to a higher low. We go up to a higher high. Even though it doesn't look it, this high is higher than that high. So it makes a higher high. Makes a higher low. That is a bull market, kids. Makes a higher high. Makes a higher low. Makes a higher high. It is working. It is a bull market. So what does this chart tell us moving forward? The one thing that we do know is every time we hit the top of this channel, the market takes a breather. Right here, takes a breather. Right here, it takes a breather. All right, so if that's what happened in the past and markets charts are creatures of habits, technical and analysts are creatures of habits, look what happened when it hit up here. It took a breather and look what just happened today. You could call that a hit. I mean, it was close enough and it took a breather. That is usual, that is normal, that's what we expect. Every time we get up here, it is not the beginning of the end. If you've got people out there screaming, I told you so, told you that whole rally you're looking at was just a bare leg, it's not. <laughs> it's just a down day that we're having, right? If it turns into a bear market, we'll find out on our own, but it's not one right now. So this average on here doesn't mean anything. Let's remove it so that we're not confused by it. So for top day, we are expecting a little bit of downward movement now. Hopefully it won't make a lower low. Maybe the low's in already, but we'll let this tell us. Here's what I want you to realize though, when you hit up here, expect the breather. It happens every time. That's your E-mini S&P. Okay, what else did we look at? I think the Russ was involved in our last uh, little gathering. So we'll bring the Russ back up. Now, the Russell has a 100-ball moving average that started this whole parade, so we'll drop it on there for you so you can see what it looks like. 
The Ross literally started the whole rally. It started here. It bounced off that 100, the recent rally in the last couple of weeks. It bounced off the 100 bar moving average perfectly. It gets above, bounces, holds, and just explodes, gets out of this huge pennant, and just takes off. It just fell out of what I call a channel that was building here. Let's make it continuous. See this channel right here? It just fell out of that channel, but we are expecting a breather because we just seen the S&P hit the top of its uh, trend channel. So a breather for the next few days makes perfect sense in the E-mini e S&P, NASDAQ, and Russ, according to what I'm seeing. Um, that's, let's see. We looked at one more chart. Let me show you this one. Now, this is just insanity. This has been and is the leader of markets. It has been since, <clears throat> since Charles Dow coined the Dow, the stock market, the Dow Jones. He also came up with a theory. The Dow theory is that the transportation average in many cases leads. The man has been right since they named the market after him. It does lead, not always, but it does lead. Here's your transportation average. And look at how everything else I've shown you is moving up somewhat. This is just exploding higher. So transportation average is a leader. And there's a reason why the transportation average would be an indicating leader. So keep this in mind. If you've got a product, you make a product in any way, shape, or form, and you've got a factory, you've got to transport raw materials to your factory, you've got to create the product, you've got to then transport that product to a dis distribution center and or to a retail center where others have to come pick it up. There's traveling, there's transportation involved in every aspect of building something, everything. So if you need that much transportation before you even built the product, it shows up in the transportation average first. Conversely, if you don't need to make products because orders are slowing down and you're not filling your warehouse with as much, you're not pulling in as many raw materials, you're not shipping as many finished products, the transportation slows down first and then the rest of the market catches on. Well, that's how this works. It's a simplistic explanation of the Dow theory and I didn't bother bringing in the waves of the ocean, but that's simple enough. And this is what's been happening for this whole year. The transportation average has literally been leading us up and having little downspurts and then leading us back up. That has been our leader. And there was one more chart I wanted to show you with a fantastic tip that I think you will appreciate. And from there, I will open it up to questions and answers. Check this one out. Look at NVIDIA and let me snap the average on there. Back to the 20, they're only using a couple of averages these days, the 20, the 22, and the 32. That's about it. So let's get rid of this average and leave the 20 out there and take a look at this. In fact, did I click the right one? I did, okay. So check this one out. Previous webinar, when we called bottom, we were right here, Trader's Corner webinar. And we talked about bottom is in, NVIDIA is a fantastic chart. I know I do videos all the time about NVIDIA. And we were down here, and that's about when, well, actually further back, but that's about when I started paying attention to the 20 ball moving average. And look what it's done since. I mean, it's ridiculous. There's a great tip for you, kids. If you're an NVIDIA trader, look at this thing. It's like the simplest Wall Street secret unveiled for, unveiled for us. So you get back down, down to that average and that green trend line, and it's probably another buy for you right there. So these are the charts that we looked at. You see this massive breakaway gap showing you that it is real. Unfilled gap probably won't be filled for a long time. This right here likely, likely, likely is building a bull flag. I think, let me just see if I can illustrate a quick one for you. I think you're building a small bull flag right here. So. In other words, I think this is probably just a bull flag that had a little bit of a blow through. Come back down to the bottom of the flag, which will catch the average. It'll catch the trend line. It'll catch the bottom of the flag. It'll probably be a very smart spot to get yourself long NVIDIA. So today's presentation is my gift to you all. I hope this helps. If you would like to join me, it's really easy to find me. Just come to livewithoscar.com. You 
register if you don't have a membership no credit cards are required very simple check your spam i promise you it, your email will go to spam you gotta wait for an email it'll go to spam check your spam come back and you'll be logged into the site and if you log into the site then you can find me simply by clicking oscar's chat room and here is where i'll be in a live trading room where i actually am right now i can wave to you guys from the camera behind me I'm using the front camera for this presentation. Otherwise, there'd be another camera on me. Eh, hello, Mikey. So I spend my life here. It's a free trading room. And if you guys want to get through these rough and tumble markets with me, you just come on down to livewithoscar.com. Join for free and let's see what we can do together. With that, thank you, Ken. That's what I wanted to show everybody. Um, if you've got some questions, I'll be more than happy to answer them. Oscar, can I ask a question? Absolutely. How about an analysis on Tesla? On Tesla, let's go take a look. Mm -hmm. So first of all, you see you fell out of that channel, right? Looks ugly, and that looks like quick analysis, like a bare flag. Now, I don't know that this is the actual average that I would be using on Tesla, because it's not, it just looks really sloppy and not for me. Um, Wall Street loves the 50 and the 100, right? So let's look at those just because Wall Street seems to like them. Let's see what they're doing on it. All right, so it's got nothing to do with the 100. Let's turn that into a 50 and see if they're playing with that at all. And then I'll show you what I think of the chart. All right, so they're not playing with anything right now that I care about or that Wall Street uses as a mainstay. So we don't need to invent stuff. I don't want to use an average that Wall Street's not using, right? We don't want to invent the things. So here's what I don't like. Tesla had a target of 13.13.80, which would have made it a double top, right? Got a top there, got a top here. We were waiting for a test of that double top. I had it labeled. It never showed up. What I don't like is that we fell out of this channel where all the other stocks I showed you are inside of their channels, including the indices I've shown you are inside their channels. But Tesla is outside of its channel, and, you know, I would call this a weird unorthodox bear flag if i had to come up with something to call this i'd slap i'd slap this around it and call that a flag right which would make it a bear flag so you gotta think lower tesla and if that was a bear flag that projects easily down to 240 if not lower somewhere down here so i don't like tesla right here as a day trader i would be selling it not buying it thank you sir of course of course is there anything else I can help you with? So, I don't know how many of you are listening, and I don't know where you're from, but if you are near Rockland County, anywhere in the tri-state area, I will be there. I'm flying out of here tomorrow, late tonight, tomorrow morning, and I will be in Rockland County where I'm going to hold an Omni Camp, which I didn't bother to mention to you guys, but I hold a four-day seminar where I teach people my techniques, uh, only a few people at a time. But after the Omni Camp, I'm throwing a soiree. We're going to have a little Omni Camp gathering, an Omni Camp party, an Omni Act party, if you will. And I've got Omni Acts from the tri-state area coming to hang out with me. If you'd like to join our party, it is Thursday, August 4th. Am I right about that, kids? Let me check my calendar. It is Thursday, yeah, da, 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 August 4th. That works. Um, at around 1 o'clock, if you're interested, contact me in some way. Call me. You can get to me if you really want to find me. Go to the site. I'll give you the address. We'd August love 3rd. to have you. It's August 3rd, not the 4th. Are you sure about that? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. It's August 3rd, not the 4th. Thursday, August 3rd. You are correct. So if you want to join me for that, it's just a party, but we'll get to shake hands. You know me. I'm always looking at charts. We'll be looking at some cool stuff while I'm there. And thank you, Denny. It is August 3rd. And by the way, my chat room is reminding me. They're watching me make a mistake. I'm like, no, Oscar. It's August 3rd. <laughs> thank you, guys. So um, Metastock will likely come up from Utah and join me in Rockland. So we'll have some presenters from Metastock there as well. An open invitation to any of you if you'd like to come join me in Rockland this week coming. So, um, anything else you guys want to look at? Is there a stock you have in mind? Because what I showed you is um, what I was looking at for the last 24 hours, but I don't always look at everything. I'm sure some of you may have a couple of stocks that you're looking at or a couple of commodities. You know what? We haven't looked at, kids. Let's go look at crude. Mm-hmm. 
So crude right here is testing major resistance. So what happens here? Simple analysis. We won't even bother con considering doing an Omni or anything else. Simple analysis. What do you do? For me, you get above this and hold for three days. One, two, three, you can become a buyer. If you start to fail here, you see what comes next, right? You fail here, you see what comes next. You need three closes above crude, above that resistance line to call it broke, to call that broken out. So if you can break out for three days, settlement has to be above, not just a dash above. The settlement, which is the dash to the right, if that is above this red line for three closes in a row, I think it'll be time for us to get long crude. What should happen, however, is that crude is a creature of habit, right? It drops at the line, it drops at the line, it drops at the line, usually. All right, well, what's the dollar doing? If the dollar is going up, it's going to put pressure on crude. Dollar stopped going up for one day, which was the Fed meeting, but look at this bar today. Look at that outside reversal upward bar in, well, the Fed meeting's over now, in the dollar. So if the dollar is rallying like this, I promise you, it's going to put pressure on crude. It's not going to stay above. Well, let's try that again. I don't think crude stays above unless, you know, of, of course, something happens in the Middle East to make things crazier than it is now. Technically, if the dollar is rallying and crude's hitting resistance, the likelihood is crude is hitting resistance. So that's my presentation to you kids. Make sure you come join me at livewithoscar.com. I will put that in front of you again just so that you can see it. Make sure you join me. Simple. Register or log in if you haven't logged in. Check your email if you're registering and come join me in my live chat room. Oscar, I can't tell you how impressed I am. I am going to short crude on a micro contract in my futures account. And uh, your Give call on the bottom on the spy. Um, Apple, Amazon are going on my watch list as soon as they stop dropping. And you are amazing. Thank you. That was great information. Ladies and gentlemen, you heard it here on Trader's Corner. According to the charts, not the word on the street. And that was Mr. Oscar Carboni. You can find him daily in his chat room where you might also find me in the near future um, on his nightly YouTube videos, which are extremely fun to watch. If you can't tell by the presentation or streaming live on his YouTube channel. You can keep up with him on Twitter, StockTwits, LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook, Discord. Or you can go to his website, www.livewithoscar.com, which I will put in the chat box momentarily. And by the way, Oscar, I do love your videos. I'm a huge fan. Your personality and mine just do seem to mesh. <laughs> great information with a great sense of humor mixed in. Please come back and see us on Trader's Corner sometime soon. Okay, thank you for the invite. I hope that helps, everybody. Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Oscar Carboni of Trade with Oscar or LiveWithOscar.com. Thank you for being here, Oscar, and have a great week. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that will bring us to our anchor presenter group. And today has been a professional options trader for the past 13 years. He has verified live performance with Reddit and has been mentoring his students for close to a decade. He's been able to maintain an incredible. 90% win rate trading his own live account. He also has his own options live trading room and alert service that he's garnered members with consistent profits. And the good news is he's going to tell us exactly how he does it. So here to present how I win 90% of my options picks is Mr. David Wise of Right Line Trading. Welcome back to Trader's Corner, David. Thank you very much. Appreciate the uh, appreciate the intro, and um, thanks for the uh, for the intro. I want to just make sure everybody can see my screen. And uh, yes, sir. And, and you can hear what I'm saying. Okay, very good. I appreciate that. Thank you very much for the intro. We'll get started. I know it's been a, a long day for everybody, so um, I will try to make this very worthwhile for you. And uh, I'm very cognizant of your time, so we'll get started. Thanks a lot. Again, uh, my name is Dave, and I'm with the uh, I have a, a Compass Options trading room. 
uh, and an alert service that, uh, that I provide uh, through WriteLine. And um, we I use some specific software uh, to find these trades and to trade only the highest probability trade setups. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over the, uh, the services we have, and I'm going to let you know how we come up with these trades. Uh, alert services are nice. A lot of people like alert services. I think it's very important uh, for for the uh, folks who are members of alert services to have a good idea of where the trades are coming from. So I'm going to go into some pretty good detail to show you how I find the trades that I find and uh, and send them out. So when you if you're a member of the alert service or if you're in my room, you understand where these high probability trades is set up are coming from. Okay, so we'll move along here. Again, my name is Dave, and I'll do my uh, the the usual. Uh, Disclaimer that we have to do. Uh, all signals and trading opportunities we provide here are for uh, educational and demonstration purposes only. Trading is very risky and you should never trade with more money than you can afford to lose. And neither myself or Right Line Trading are licensed financial advisors. All right, so we'll move ahead here. I just want to talk uh, briefly about the market. And knowing what drives the market is it's, it's really important. And um, this is just kind of a a graphic representation. These little marbles here, which probably should be much smaller. This is retail traders like myself, and I suspect most everybody else here in the room uh, are retail traders. So this is us in here trying to trying to fight the market every day, and um, we don't have any ability to move the market. Retail traders don't move the market. Uh, we just we just trade against each other, and uh, when only retail traders are in the market, you get a lot of chop. You get a lot of chaos. It's just not a good time to trade. Now, the big marble back here, which should be even huger, these are the institutions. And the institutions are things like HSBC and Goldman Sachs and um, Vanguard Fund and T. Rowe Price and hedge funds and 401ks, all of the big boys. These folks, they have trillions of dollars that they can, that they can put into the market and take out of the market. So when they're trading, they are, they are, they would drive the trend. We have no ability to do that. So our job to be successful traders, consistently successful traders, is to be able to join the trend when the institutions are driving it, whether it's bullish or bearish, and be out of the trend if the institutions aren't in there. If just the retail traders are trading, we don't want to be part of that trade. So in my job is to using the software that 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 I have is to know when an institution is in trading and when they're not. That way I can I can join the trades when the institutions are are uh, involved in it and I can avoid them when they're not. So that's what we'll be that's what we'll be looking for and I'll show you exactly how how we do that. It's it's not that simple. You have to have the right the right tools to be able to do that. And uh, traders who have the better tools are the traders who are going to be consistently profitable. All right, so this is, I, I just want to talk a little bit about the, the two pieces of software that I use. One is called the Compass System, and one is called the Dominator System. And this graph, this, this slide right here, is really just to um, show you the difference, of how, the, how the trades, uh, pr what they produced when I was using the Compass System and when I added the Dominator System to it. Now, the Compass System is the system, and I'll go into this, that identifies when the institutions are in the trades. The dominator system shows me what the market internals are. In other words, um, are, are there more stocks going up and up volume and up ticks than going down on down volume and down ticks? I need to know that. Um, and the dominator system is fairly new. It was, it was just uh, introduced uh, last October. It's less than a year. So trading the compass system between October 1st and 12, 28 of last year. Uh, and the reason I use this is because I wanted to compare trades that I took that had Institutional involvement, but uh, but didn't necessarily have um, it didn't necessarily have market internals in their favor. They were neutral. Uh, there wasn't any huge amount of buying or selling, uh, more buying or, or more selling. It was basically fairly flat. So in compass trades that I took from 10 1 to 12 28, I had 129 wins and 12 losses. That was a 90 basically a 90 percent win rate, and pretty good. Now between that same date, 10 1 and 12 28. I took 113 wins and two losses when the compass system and the dominator system lined up. This told me that the institutions were trading and the market internals were in my favor. So when both of these line up, you can see the win rate was astronomically high, 97.4. Very, very difficult to, to 
maintain any kind of a win rate like that, but we did this as a test and that's what it was. Um, so this is this is pretty uh, pretty impressive uh, with these two pieces of software. So just so I want you to see what the results were and and how I how those those results were produced. All right. So uh, and I, what I want to do is I want to kind of go over my results first, and then I want to go into the trades that we took and the charts to show you exactly how we found those trades. Just so you know. So um, this we we this was our best. Uh, Winning streak uh, up to the date so far was <clears throat> uh, 29 trades in a row from uh, finished April with 19 wins, followed by 10 in May. And by investing $2,000 in each trade, and these are option trades, uh, by investing $2,000 in each trade, we made a little over $11,000 profit in those uh, those from April 20th to May 5th. A pretty nice, a pretty nice run. Listen, we have losses just like everybody has losses, but but again with a, with a 85 to 90, 92 percent win rate. You can get some fairly, uh, some fairly long streaks, but that was the uh, that was from April 28th to May 5th. Um, now this is the uh, the results we've had in the trading room, <clears throat> in the alert service uh, from March through June, uh, which I've just recently just updated. So uh, and again, this is investing 2,000 in each trade. Now that doesn't mean you have to invest 2,000 in each trade. I'm just using this as kind of a baseline. Um, I take all these trades and I, I take them uh, with with real money. Every single one of these trades is, uh, I take when I call them out or when I send out an alert, I've taken the trade. But this is just a baseline, so I've got something to go by. So basically, this was our these are our results. In March, we had 37 wins, six losses, 86% win rate, um, $8,900 profit. Um, April, 35 wins, five losses, 87.5, 47.40, less less profit. Some of the trades didn't make as much money. We had to we had to take them off before we hit those profits. A lot of it depends on the market. If the market's trending in your favor, you can make bigger wins. Uh, May, 41 wins and six losses, another 87.5% win rate for 7,600. In June, 37 wins, six losses, 86% win rate, uh, $8,000. So you can see we we maintained here, we, we roughly got around 87% win rate uh, for those four months. And that's 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 a lot of trades. Uh, and about close to thirty thousand dollars profit, but that's that's what we produced in the trading room um, and in the uh, in this alert service. So that just kind of gives you an idea of what we have been able to produce with the uh, with this with these systems. And I just shot this, shot this quickly. This was a one I just kept. Up here. This is actually a spreadsheet I've had of the uh, the trades we took. Those are the the nineteen April trades that we took. Um, and you can see that they're up. The, the, the kind of the stocks are all over the lot here. But most of the stocks we take are are fairly. Um, everybody, most everybody knows. I mean, is AT and T, is Tesla for 10 percent, AT and T for 16. Uh, Baba, we had 30 percent win rate in Baba, 24 uh, percent Twilo. So you can see that these these are the the actual uh, 19 trades in a row we had in April. I just wanted to put that up there to show you. Uh, what, what we produced, and again, you know, 34%, 25%, 31%. We don't, we're typically not taking 200, 300, 500, thousand percent wins. I, I know you hear about that a lot. Um, it's not realistic <laughs> to, to do that kind of, you know, taking 20 to 40, 50, 60%, and occasionally 100% is uh, is typically what you're going to see um, out, of my, out of my service. And I think that the the fact that we're so disciplined and we we are able to maintain this kind of win rate is is ex extremely important to most traders. Um, and again, here's some recent May trades. Uh, this is this these are the actual May trades that we took. You know, and we did have some losers in there. You can see um, sometimes you have a news event will come out or whatever, and you get uh, you, you take a hit on it. But this just kind of gives you a rundown of the trades. And I just like people to see exactly the the tickers which which were. Uh, trading and what kind of profits we take on them. And this May, this is June right here, um, same thing, couple of couple of losers, but uh, mostly wins, obviously, and uh, some nice little percentage gains right here. Now, uh, this is the July trade so far that we've closed out. Uh, we closed out two more today. Uh, so we've actually closed 16 trades in July and we've got 16 wins and zero losses. We still have, we do have positions on that are uh, are, are underwater right now, but that's uh, that's the way it is in trading. But so far, we've closed 16 trades uh, and all profitable. And um, 
just did we we use a few different strategies which i'll cover here in just a little bit so that's what we've done in july so far um, and these are specific alerted trades i just kind of wanted to run past anybody who's interested in the alerts this is what you'd see uh, these are some of the, the stocks that we've, that we've had alerts in um, b and tx uh, we entered for 81 cents we get out at a dollar one dollar 21 the next morning that's a nice 50 percent profit and again if you're investing 2000 it's going to create about a thousand dollar profit uh, run was another one in a 33 out of 43 doesn't sound like much 10 cents but it's 30 percent profit uh, so this these are the uh some of the trades that we've we've alerted out recently uh, 266 for alta and out for 366 and again that produced 700 dollars profit so you can see these these different trades that uh, there's uh, a, a list of them here we got uh, some other additional ones here uh, these again more recently alerted uh, in for 64 out for 84 so uh, you can see a fairly good uh, consistency as far as profitability is here concerned. 30 percent we have a smaller one here 13 percent this was in the same day we were in gold in at 380 out at 430 pretty small gain but still 13 percent profit so uh, this was tsm here and uh, again in at 580 out for 870 that was just overnight we took this just a quick overnight trade 50 percent profit all right so let me let me just talk first about the alert service uh that we have uh, it's called the compass options alert service and uh it's basically designed for day trades and short-term swing trades I'm, I'm not i'm not doing any investment type uh, advice this is all just for people who want to day trade or short-term swing trade and when i say short-term swing trade usually it's, it's a, a day or two three days sometimes up, up to two weeks but but generally not longer than that just depends on the price action in the in the in the particular stock of course and it's designed for traders who can't watch the market all day which is a lot of people i mean a lot of people are they would like to trade some but they they obviously they work they, they can't be by their computer all day so i am by my computer all day so we send the alerts out to those folks and you're going to get real-time alerts on the highest probability trade setups and i'm going to show you how i find the highest probability trade setups um, it takes a lot of patience and you have to be very disciplined uh, to do this uh, but those are the ones that are going to pay off for you and the highest probability trades we find we, by identifying institutional involvement we do not take any trades if the institutions are not trading in the same direction if the institutions are in buying and we can tell that they are then we're going to go along with stock if they're selling we're going to go short the stock if there's no institutional involvement in a, in a, in a particular ticker we're not going to be there we're not going to trade it so we're, these real-time alerts will be in the highest probability trade setups and uh, again we identify institutional involvement we look at the market internals that i'll show you we want to know how most of the stocks in the market going up versus going down right now we do that by looking at uh, by ticks and um, and number of stocks moving up and moving down and i we do a lot of detailed technical analysis on the different uh, uh, charts so that we can make a determination of of the high probability trade setups we find which one is the, is the best because we're looking for just the very very best all right so that's the alert service now there you'll be you would be alerted by sms message it comes directly to your cell phone um and our motto in the room of course is trade the best and skip the rest and this is what we do we're not taking lots and lots you're not seeing us taking 15 10 15 20 trades a day we're just looking for the best so it's a very fairly low stress type environment where we take these trades and so every alerted trade you're going to get the stock symbol you're going to get the option strike price you get the option ex option expiration date and the price to pay for the option with perhaps a range maybe a dollar to a dollar five uh, something like that but you will get you will get uh, all of this information in a, in a real-time alert to your right to your cell phone and uh, when we sell we'll, we'll send you an alert that tells you what to buy and uh, when to buy it at what price and then you you may get a within that same alert you may get a, a, a target price or you, you may not you may get a target price on a separate email a, a separate text usually i wait till i see what the stock is uh, is doing or what where i think it may be able to go uh, before i set a, a target price i'd like to try to get as much as we can out of it and so i'll i, I may not do that for a, a day or two days 
And anytime we, we, you get an exit price, by the way, it should be, you'll notice GTC on it. It's gonna tell you good till canceled. You always want your, 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 your price targets or your working orders to be active when the market opens in the morning. That's what good to cancel means. All right, so those are, that's how you're gonna get alerted by SMS message. Now, and again, people ask me how, how to, 90% win rate is really high. It's, it's pretty high for this industry. It's, it's uh, not something that very many people achieve. And I, I think the, the reason is we're so patient and we, we, we drill down so much into the uh, criteria that we want to find the best trades that we're, we're only finding the very best ones. So they're much more likely to work. So how do we achieve these stunning results? Well, we're able to identify what institutions are driving a trade and when the market internals are heavily bullish or bearish. Those two things together tell us that we're in the best stock and the market is strong right now. That, those, that's, that's very, very important. Um, so we only take trades when both of these are in our favor. Now, that's not entirely true. If the market internals are neutral, in other words, if there's about as many stocks moving up on up volume and up ticks as there are moving down on down volume and down ticks, then the market is neutral. But we would then focus on the compass system and only be taking trades that institutions are driving. But generally, if we can find trades when they're both in our favor, allowing us to align, align our trades with the institutions and the market, those are gonna give you your very, very best uh, trades. And, um, and our results show that, that that's how we do this. <clears throat> So, and, and I want to just introduce you to the software uh, just briefly, because I, I want you to, um, there's the market closing. <laughs> I want you to uh, know how, what tools we're using to find these trades. And anybody can, anybody can buy these, these trades, but you don't, these, uh, these tools, but you don't have to have them. Uh, if you're in the alert service or in my room, you don't have to have them, but this is what I use to find uh, these trades, uh, along with technical analysis. Uh, I use the compass system to look for stocks that are being moved by institutional buying and selling. It, it also identifies stocks that do not have institutional buying and selling. This is really critical because I don't want to be in any trades if the if, if just other retail traders in there buying and selling them. I don't want to be in there just fighting against the retail traders. I want to be trading with, with the market trend that's being created by the institutions so I can run over all the other retail traders because the retail traders don't have the information that we have. Uh, the second system I look at is the dominator system, and I'll show you some charts that show this. Dominator system displays market internals, and now it's going to produce buy or sell signals when the difference in the number of stocks moving up on up volume and up ticks is way higher than the stocks moving down on down volume and down ticks, and vice versa for short. So we will get a buy signal or a sell, sell signal. If they're roughly the same, they'll, it'll just be neutral. So these are the two pieces of software that I'm going uh, I'm going to show you. Uh, on charts of how I'm finding these trades. And the reason I'm doing this is because I, I want I want you to understand where these trades, if you're in the alert service, I want you to understand where these trades are coming from. Uh, I, I, you know, it's, it's nice to follow trades, but I think it's important to also learn from that and to, and to find uh, how to find these, these, uh, these trades yourself so you can see what they are. All right, so how does Compass System identifies when, when uh, institutions are in the trade. Okay, this is it's how it's done. It's called a triple screen assessment. Now, that is a fancy way to say, we're looking at multiple time frames, and we're looking at it ac across four different indicators. So we're looking at momentum specifically is a really important one. We're looking at the momentum that's, that's, uh, that's occurring across three different time frames. If I'm on the five minute chart, I'm looking at the, this is looking at the five, the 15 and the 45. It's looking at those three different time frames, and it's looking at what momentum is on all four, all three of those time frames. Then we're looking for trend. We're looking to see what the trend is on those four, three different time frames. Then we're looking at money flow across those three different time frames, and the compass system is also looking at quants across the three different time frames. Quant is related instruments that normally trade with that stock. If, for example, I'm looking at the uh, Microsoft, then there's a certain number of stocks that trade in conjunction with Microsoft 70% of the time or more. They're going to be, if Microsoft's going up, they're going to be going up 70% of the time. Uh, if they're not uh, aligned, then the, then the quants are not going to tell us that they're all working that, in that direction. So when all of these things line up, the 
pretty much the only way that all of these things can line up across three different time frames is if the institutions are in there driving this trend. Retail traders cannot produce uh, across three different time frames across four different indicators. It's basically impossible. So you, you can figure that the, the likelihood of getting in and the, the trend at the right time is extremely high. All right, and the, in the market, the dominated system, which, which looks at market internals, is uh, looking at across five different indexes. It's looking across at the Dow, the New York Stock Exchange, Triple Q's, NASDAQ, um, the SPY, S&P 500, and the Russell 2000. And it's looking at the number of stocks moving up on up volume and upticks versus the number of stocks moving down on down volume and down ticks. Not how much they're moving, but how many of them are moving. And uh, so you've got, you've got ticks and you've got volumes that you're looking at. So when there's a large disparity, in other words, let's say you have five or 600 stocks moving up on up volume and up ticks and 100 moving down on down volume and down ticks, then you have a disparity that's large enough to, adjust, uh, to create a buy signal. If it's the other way around, if you've got a 700 going down and 100 going up, then you're going to get a sell signal. And this is what the dominated system looks for. And we use this to, in conjunction with the compass system to identify even higher probability say, trade setups. So if the institutions are buying as, as a Microsoft, for example, and the market internals are also telling you that the market is going up, a lot more stocks going up than going down, not only are you buying a stock that's in an, in an uptrend, very strong, and the institutions are buying it, but you're also trading in the same direction as the market to, to the upside. That's a, that's a huge, huge advantage uh, to anybody trying to trade. I mean, if you're following the market trend and the stocks trend and they correspond, you've got a huge advantage uh, over the rest of the traders in the market at that point in time. And most other traders don't, aren't going to know that. They're, they may be in the trade, but they're not going to know why. Um, so I'm going to show you some charts of some recent trades that we've done uh, these, of these high probability trade setups uh, so you can see where I'm coming from here. All right, this is, uh, this is one we took just uh, last week. This is Disney. Um, now, this is the Compass system. This, this Compass system runs on uh, Thinkorswim, um, and this is, this is the, uh, the indicators, four different ones that we were talking about. This is the quant. This is the multi-time frame momentum. This is the current time frame momentum, and this is our bias or a trend right here. Now, you can see it's all red, so this is pretty easy to see that this is bearish. For the Compass system, red and yellow is bearish, blue and green is bullish. So this indicators will show you that the, that the market is bearish. And we can see the market's bearish, and this is Disney right here. So, so when do we buy Disney? Well, in our system, in our, in our methodology, what we're looking for is we're looking to buy a stock as it breaks down. And the Compass system produces these pop out of the box signals right here. These pop out of the box signals are telling you that the stock is breaking either up or down out of compression. You can see it's breaking out of compression here. The little pink line right here is called the VWAP, the Volume Weighted Average Price. This is very important because you don't want to be trading stocks short if the price is above the VWAP. So we saw Disney, and Disney was bearish. Obviously, you can see how bearish it is here. This is like 10 o'clock in the morning, and it breaks down. So we took the trade right here. This was a, this was a, a pop out of the box signal, stocks breaking down. Everything is telling us the institutions are selling this thing. Um, the denominator was also red, by the way. Um, so we bought it here and we, we wrote it down for a while. Now, do you see how it compresses here? But you notice what, as it compresses, there's not an awful lot of selling going on right here, but the institutions are still selling stock. That doesn't mean that they're, the stock's gonna drop precipitously. It just tells you that the next move is likely to be the downside. So we, we ride it along here, not making too much money here. And then we get a nice pull down here. And it pulls down and we get another pop out of the box signal coming out of compression. And then we get two little green candles. But the two little green candles are not really telling us anything because we know that the system is bearish right now. The institutions are selling this stock. So we stay in it. And this is what these little pop-ups usually are. Our retail traders trying to pick the bottom and trying to uh, think, that they, think that they're getting in at the bottom and, and we're going to take it long and see what happens to them. They get, they get whipsawed. Now, so we stayed in the trade and you can see how the compass system turned to blue right here on this candle, we get out, we get out right here. We actually get out just before that because that tells you though that the institutions, instead of selling on the current time frame, 
this is the five minute time frame, have gone just to buying. So that's that was the one trade we took. And this is a, a, another trade we took the same day. This was Verizon. Um, and again, I just want you to see the the uh, what the indicators look like. They're all red here. So we, we knew that Verizon was bearish. It, it's gapped down in the morning. Everything is bearish. But we didn't buy it here. We waited because you notice how it's riding along this VWAP, the volume weighted average price. Um, and we get a pop out of the box signal right here. Here's where we went into the trade. As it breaks down below this VWAP with a pop out of the box signal, we went short Verizon right here. And we, we just stayed in it. Notice how the system stayed red the whole way down. These are pretty small candles, but we rode this down and we made a nice profit. Actually, we, we, we stayed in longer than this. I couldn't get the, the whole chart in here. We stayed in longer than this. Uh, but, it, you know, Verizon's on a big mover. And I mean, on Verizon, you, your options are very tightly spread and you can you can easily make uh, 30, 40 cents, which is, a, which is a huge move in a stock like Verizon. And again, I just kind of want you to see how we know the institutions are selling this, this stock. Okay. Um, and this was when we did the same day too. Now this was UPST, but notice we took this bullishly. Um, pretty easy to see that it's a bullish setup here. This is the VWAP, we're all above the VWAP. Uh, this little thin green line is the 15 EMA of an EMA. It's a smooth EMA. Um, but see how the uh, the uh, compass system went yellow to blue right here. So this goes. This is telling us that the momentum on the current time frame is going from slightly bearish to slightly bullish, but the rest of them are green. So this is where we we get in right here, right off of this, right off of this um, this move off of this 15 EMA, and we rode it and rode it and rode it all the way up to here, which is where we get out right here at the top. And notice it stayed green the whole time. It tells us that even though it's pulling back, the institutions are still buying the stock. No reason for us to get out. So that was UPST. That was another nice gain. That was three trades we had that day, which is actually a lot for us. Uh, and we did have uh, we did have nice wins in those. Um, this was uh, UPST again. Um, this was a, a, a one that was this, we did we did this the UPST twice in a couple of days. This chart's a little, little blurry, but uh, again you can see here that we had some yellow, and I just kind of wanted to point out the yellow to blue right here. This is telling us that the institutions were buying, then they backed off, then they started buying again, and the stock came right down to this 15 EMA. Buy at support and sell at resistance is one of our main criteria for for trading high probability trade setups. So it bounced off of this 15 EMA and moved right straight up. Uh, well, not straight up, but it moved up pretty nicely. Um, and one, oh, I know the reason I wanted to show this 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 uh, this trade is these are these candles are Heikinachi candles, which I use uh, to look for entries. Heikinachi candles, if you're not familiar with them, um, and some people call them HA candles. Uh, two, it takes two candles to make uh, to make a, one candle takes two regular candles to make one candle. And why that's important is because when, if you're looking for confirmation to enter a trade, a lot of times you've got to wait for support to be found and then you enter the trade off of support. Well, with Heikinashi candles, when you get a candlestick like this that's got a wick and a tail on it, and then you go to a flat bottom, that's a confirmation of a bullish reversal. And it's confirmed because there's two candles, two regular candles making up this candle. So on a bullish reversal like this, on this candlestick right here, and you notice it went from yellow to blue right on that candlestick. Institutions are now coming in. We're getting confirmation using Heikinachi that this is a Heikinachi reversal. This is where we enter the trade and we rode this thing up. And uh, when, you, when you start to get uh, wicks and tails like this, this is where we get out of the trade. It's starting to lose a little bit of momentum, even though we had still had plenty of green on here. Uh, we took profits. You could stay in it, but we, we did take profits in that. So that's, that's the compass system and that's the, uh, the indicators that we look for that I went over. Uh, and I'll try to show you a couple more. Uh, this is a daily chart. You can also use it for daily. You can basically use it whatever time frame you want. But this was meta. Um, and we have a, what's called a dynamic compression zone, this little shaded area. As the stock price moved into that, right off the 15, we bought it overnight and just wrote it up. Uh, we just wrote it up for one day. We didn't stay in it very long, but it was a nice move on meta. You know, this is 295 to 308. That's a, a pretty nice move. And this is a this is a, a daily chart. And you can see it's you see how green it is. You can see that the the institutions have been buying this all the way along here, but the stock wasn't really doing too much. But it was telling us that the nut move was coming. And this is where we got it right out of this compression zone, dynamic compression zone on the pop. 
All right, and this is uh, this is a spy trade we took. And the reason I just show you in these these charts is I want you to see what the uh, what the, the the setups look like uh, using the compass system or the dominated system. Now this is part of the setup that I use for what's called the spy super system, which which you might have seen advertised. Uh, when the spy super system is is basically a system to find the highest probability spy setups uh, to trade long and short by using the compass system and the dominated system in combination. And we, I use both of those. But what we have here is this is the SPY super system. Now, if you look here um, on the compass system, you can see that the, the SPY is moving sideways. We've got, we're below the VWAP, we're actually red on the day, but here's a pop out of the box symbol right here, and everything is red. So this is where you would take the trade right here, right? And write it down and down as it stays short until you get to the, see and notice it turn blue, you're out of the trade down here. Now, what you want you to see for the SPY super system is this is the SPY super system on Compass. Here's the SPY super system at the same time on the dominator system. This is the dominator system. This is showing us what the market internals are. Now, if I go back and look at the, this, the, the entry point right here, it was right here about 11.05. So here is a, here's a, um, a well, no, I'm sorry, 12.05. You got the wrong time wrong here on this thing. Mm. Yeah, right here. So this is where we where we got it. And you see that the you see that the couple things important here about the about the dominated system. The background color tells you what the multi time frame trend in the market is. So this is telling us that the spy is in a, a pink, which means bearish down trend. It's moving to the downside. And here's a dominated system, and here are all the indicators. And you see we got sell signals. We can take we can sell this any place or, or enter this any place. So here's the stock moving sideways and then we get a, a, a pop down here if i look at the compass system right here and i look at the dominated system right here i've got a confirmation of a, a, st a stock that's a spy is moving down and it's moving down with uh, bearishness on the dominated system and bearishness on the compass system and it's coming right off the 15 ema so i'm i'm selling this right at resistance so that's how i found that these that's how the spy super system works and you don't get these these setups all the time. You have to you have to wait for these. But uh, this one is a really nice one. All right, and uh, just uh, some quick trades here. This was Netflix. We had a nice trade in Netflix. Uh, you can see we went from blue to yellow. So the compass system is telling us to go ahead and sell. It's coming off the VWAP with a pop out of the bop single bop sig pop out of the box signal. Sorry, and uh, we rode this down um, from here, which was about uh, 10:30. Uh, to right here, which was about 11:30. That's about an hour. That was a 20 cent profit, and that was a quick, a quick trade in Netflix. But again, you can see how nicely the Compass system identifies institutions buying, selling right here. And uh, this was uh, a, another trade on the spy. This is right off the dominator system. Uh, a lot of my members like to trade uh, cues of spy right off the dominator system. They'll they'll look for a, a breakdown like this, where you get a dark pink background. And you get a sell signal, and the indicators all go red. You go ahead and, and, and sell it here, or buy puts is what we did here. And we buy puts, and the spy trade was three points, uh, $250 profit per contract on this move down right here. And again, the dominated system is, is telling me that clearly the institutions, I mean, the uh, market internals are in our favor on this particular trade. And this was a Tesla trade. And again, I'm, I'm, I'm going to skip through some of these charts because I don't want to take up your whole afternoon. But I, the whole point is for you to be able to see how well this compass system identifies these trades. And when I'm, when I'm sending out a trade to the alert service, this is what I'm using to find these. Here's Tesla for 30% 30 profit right here. Pop out of the box signal, going from blue to yellow. We've got, a, we've got institutions going from buying to selling. And the multi time frame was already red. So we, we rode this down, and that was a 30% profit. That was right at the close of the day that we get out of that trade. And this was a, an overnight trade. This is when I wanted to show, show how it works on overnight. Notice we had a pop out of the box signal here at the end of the day. Notice the compass, uh, the dominators, the compass system is all red here, red or yellow. So we took a, we took a short overnight on this because it was lined up that way with everything red and the gap down. And it went from 120 to 112. And of course, the puts exploded on a trade like that. Uh, very, very uh, big move. Uh, the, the 
and the um, options went up by about seven dollars a contract which is pretty large um, and z another short and z so you can see you can see the setups here you can see the uh, the selling that's occurring the compass system telling us that the institutions are selling these we don't want to be in them unless the institutions are selling them. all right and this is a uh, oxy this was a uh, uh, overnight, this is a daily a day, daily chart right here. See this shaded area, dynamic compression zone. Compass system shows it. We get a nice pop right here. And this was when we took it the next that day. We waited for compression to end. We waited for a pop out of the box signal. Compass system goes from yellow to blue. We buy it here and we take it right up to here. All right, so I'll um, I'll run through these. This is Tesla, same thing. And uh, I just kind of want you to see the the uh, the way the compass system identifies these and anybody who wants the compass system can get the compass system you can buy it and you can get all these exact same indicators as i've got on right here all right and spy another spy nice spy trade to the downside you can see that so again i, I i'm just going to zip through these uh, these charts because they, they it's just an, it's something that i want everybody to understand where these trades are coming from so this is where these High probability trades are coming from. It's extremely, uh, extremely accurate to, to get in a trade when the institutions are in there. This is IBM on a daily chart. You see this pop out of, the, out of the dynamic compression zone, goes from yellow to blue, and up it goes. Same thing here with QSR. This is one I'll show you. This, this is one we took. That this is a daily chart. So this is what I saw on the daily chart. See, it was it went yellow to blue to green. So institutions are buying this. If they have been, they're continuing to buy. Here's where we bought it during the day. We found that that trade overnight, and then we found it the next. We wanted to go long the next day. We follow it along the 15 EMA right here, and on these pop out of the box symbols, when it goes to green right here, goes from to green and a pop out of the box angle, we get in right here, right on this this little arrow right there. We get in and we ride this thing up, and we get out right here when it gets red. QSR. So that was the daily on QSR, the five minute on QSR, and here's the dominator on QSR. So I'm see, I'm looking at the exact same thing. That, a green background, bullish, and the stock moving sideways. Now we don't have a buy signals till way up here. This tells us that there's no sell signals though. So this tells me that the market internals are, are neutral, but the stock is bullish because I can see by my compass system that this is bullish. So as long as this is not, um, on a sell signal, I can take it anywhere. And we took it right here after this compression. But if you wanted to be more conservative, you could wait till you get a buy signal right up here. But that was a nice one. And those are the, that's how we, we find these trades. And this is how we, we uh, allow you to see these. Um, somebody asked me if I could uh, describe the lower section of the dominator. Um, yeah, I can. And, and listen, I've got I've videos and all these things, but the dominator, as I said, it's looking at it's looking at the five different indexes. It's looking at the the Dow, uh, the Qs, uh, the Russell 2000, um, and we want to look at all, all the five indexes that, that we that we look at. Um, and each there's there's a stocks moving up on up volume and stocks moving up on a number of upticks. So you've got you've got basically ten lines here. So you've got up volume upticks, up volume upticks, up volume upticks for each of the indexes. So it looks across all five of these indexes. But the but the buy signals are not going to be uh, sh shown until the disparity between all of the indexes together are enough to, to generate uh, a buy signal. Because if you're if for example if you got the Dow, the Dow only has 30 stocks in it. The Dow only has 30 stocks in it. The Dow could have up, up volume and up ticks. But it's, if the Russell 2000 is is uh, is red, you don't really want to be taking a, a trade at that point in time. Uh, because the Dow is just too small. So the the what the system does is it looks across all five of these indexes, and you don't even have to have these in your chart. I like to have them so I know which indexes are moving in which direction. Uh, but that's that's what these that's what these indicators here at the bottom are. Those are the actual indicators with up volume and up ticks on each line. Okay, and another just a quick another spy trade again, and just to show you how we're finding these. This is a pink background. This tells me the spy is bearish. The multi time frame trend is bearish. I got a sell signal on the spy right here. This this line right here, this red line is the 15 EMA. This is where you go short. You write it down. It starts to kind of compress. 
I wouldn't be staying in any longer than this, even with the sell signals, because I'm not getting any momentum. And I've already made a nice, nice amount of money on the SPY with these three, day, three down candles. Uh, okay, and uh, this is, uh, again, this is the, uh, the, the dominator saying, the showing the same thing. You can see that the, the, the colored background goes from black, which is neutral. So this is bluish, it's actually a light green. Uh, this is slightly bullish and then dark green, very bullish. So you can, you can buy here if you want to, um, right as it goes to light green, or you can wait till you get to dark green with a buy signal. Anywhere in here is good, but you can see these buy signals keep coming. It just keeps moving up. I mean, it just goes up all afternoon on this thing, uh, all day on this thing. So that's, uh, that's uh, what, we, what we look for on the dominator system. So, so you're familiar with the dominator system and the compass system. Um, and here's the Netflix on the dominator system, just so you can see the, 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 the way this works. And it, it's interesting because uh, you notice that these red candles coming in here, uh, this typically is retail traders trying to pick the top. Uh, and, and sell it, and they're selling it. But you notice that we, we never get anything except buy signals all the way up. So this this is what other retail traders don't know, that we know. We've got the compass system to tell us what institutions are doing. We've got the dominated system to tell us what the uh, market internals are. We've got that information that the, that the other retail traders don't have, which is how we can run over them. And here's a SPY, another beautiful SPY trade right here. And I just want you to see what it looks like. Again, you can buy the customer upper system. You can buy the dominator system. You don't have to. Uh, you can be in my room without them, or you can be in the alert service without them. But I want you to see where I'm getting these trades from. You know, people ask me a lot, how do I, how do I get a 90% win rate? This is how I get a 90% win rate. It takes a lot of patience. And, you know, I buy a support, sell it resistance. I trade with the trend. I don't. I never take counter trend trades. Um, you know, and I'm I'm only in trades that institutions are in. It's it's really really important. Uh, and the SPY, another one here. I'll skip through these. There's an, another SPY. Again, this was a SPY here that we took. And here is here it is right here when we get in. You can see the, the compass system, green, the dominator system. Buy signals, they match up, you can buy. All right, so these are specials. And I, I just, this is, I'll go over the, go over the specials. Uh, I just want to tell you a quick story about, about um, how I, have, people ask me, I get a lot of questions on, on how I get into trading, um, how I become a full-time trader. And it's, it's kind of a funny story. Uh, the, um, I was about 14 years ago, I was, I was in IT and I was, I was working for a company and I got laid off about two weeks before Christmas. And I had been part-time trading at the time. Um, I was trading options, and, you know, doing all right, but I mean, I couldn't spend a lot of time on it, um, but I was doing all right. I actually was trading at work <laughs> while I could, but anyway, I got laid off. Uh, just before Christmas. And uh, so I said, well, this is, you know, this is a good time to go go full time. And it was the end of the year. It's very slow around Christmas time. But anyway, I, I, I decided to go full time uh, trading and I um, and, and I started trading and I started doing very well. I mean, I was trading all day. I mean, I love doing it, but I was doing it all very well. So I traded through January, had a really good month in January. Uh, started in February, was having a really good month. And my boss calls me. Uh, and says, um, you know, you can come on back now. We, you know, we've, we've, things have settled down. They had to lay it off because the business got slow. He said, we're, your, your position is ready again. Come on in. And basically, I had to tell him, you know, thanks, but I can't afford to come back to work for you anymore. I just can't do it. And um, and I didn't. I, I started trading full time from that time, and I have been doing that for 14 years since that point. But it's just a funny, funny story. Everybody has different stories how they get into trading. I had been trading part time and learning a lot before that, but uh, I'm, you know, I've been in lots of rooms. But anyway, that's that's kind of the story about how I get in there. So anyway, here's the uh, this is the uh, the alert service that I was just talking about, <clears throat> the summer special. Again, it's 9.97 a year for the alerts, uh, for the alert service that come right to you to your, your uh, cell phone, uh, or 2.97 a quarter. Again, the trades will come via SMS alerts, and if uh, you're one of the first 10 people to sign up for the alert service. You'll get uh, a month in my live trading room. I have the options room where I'm, I'm, I'm in there every day from, uh, from 9.30 to 4 all day long, uh, calling out trades, uh, doing educational work, telling people, people will post a trade for me and I, I tell them what I think of it. They'll post a symbol. We'll take a look at the charts. Um, and then I mention trades that I think are high probability trades. You also have a Discord room where we have two professional traders in there 
um, all day and they're posting charts um, and also answering questions for people. It's very, very, it's, it's meant to be educational. Uh, and you'll also get uh, a masterclass series uh, on all the different videos. I've done them on all of the strategies we use. And um, we do use strategies, buying calls and buying puts, of course, but we also do what's called time spreads or calendar spreads on earnings. And we also do what's called weekly ATMs, which is a, uh, a premium collecting strategy by selling weekly puts against a uh, longer dated put that we've got. And uh, we do debit spreads using weekly expirations and we do credit spreads. Uh, so those are the four, four strategies. I don't do any iron condors. I don't do butterflies. I mean, I do, but I don't, I don't promote them in the room and I don't, I don't uh, send out alerts on those. That's, they tend to be a little bit, uh, you know, most people that don't, that don't trade options are just learning to trade options. That's a little bit too much for them. So that's, that's the, the alert service. Again, 997 a year, and you saw what the results have been uh, with the room. So the, the results are, obviously this gets paid for pretty quickly. Um, and the compass system, if you wanna own the compass system, your investment's only 997 annually for the compass system. Um, and that also includes the market scanner. We have a, a scanner in Thinkorswim. Uh, live, live trading room access for a month with the alert service and the masterclass series that we talked about. And that is the compass system. And if you want both the compass and the dominated system, we have quite a few people that do this. They buy them both because they want to be able to trade themselves. They want to be on their own if they can be. And they can do the, 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 the SPY Super system or any of the systems we do. The, uh, it's 1497 for both the dominator system and the compass system together per year. And again, that would also come with the scanner, the live trading room in my room for a month uh, with the alerts and the masterclass series. So that's, that's, those are the offers uh, on, this, on this system and methodology that we use. Uh, it's it's uh, the strategy that we use and we, we, we teach everybody about how in the room, how to, how to become better traders. That's the whole point, how to become better traders, learn how to trade in most any market conditions or any market conditions uh, and do it in a relatively low stress environment. We, we, we teach discipline and low stress trading. You're not going to see us taking a lot of uh, trades that you'll see like in Wall Street bots or anything like that. We're not chasing stocks up on momentum moves or things like that. It's much too risky to do that. Uh, I don't do any hyper scalping. Every, you know, the, the trades we do are going to be, most of the trades are going to be uh, inter intraday trades, but they usually will last for at least a couple hours or more. And then the swing trades are going to last for a few days. So that's the, uh, those are the, uh, the, uh, the systems we have. Uh, again, summer special here, 997 for the, uh, for the Compass Alert Service, uh, 297 per quarter. And again, you'll get the, you'll get the uh, live trading room for a month and the masterclass series. You learn my secret ingredients. You know, I do go over all of the strategies I use. I mean, I'll show all the charts of why I'm finding this stock, why I like this stock, why I'm getting out of the trade, why I'm getting in the trade, why I don't take a specific trade, uh, all of that, which, which I hope is very educational for, for a lot of the, for the members. Okay, so those are the, uh, those are the, uh, the, the offers, the uh, alert service, Compass system, 997 annually, uh, and the uh, Compass and Dominator system, 997 annually. Now, if, if you, um, us, if you're interested, maybe you have some questions, uh, go ahead and put your, your phone number or your Skype username in the chat box uh, with your name. And um, it's one, of the, one of the folks will call you from right line. They'll just call you one time to answer any questions you might have. And this is the number 786-732-4656. And uh, likely Rory will give you a call and, uh, and answer any questions you've got. All right, so let me see if we have any, any questions here on the, uh, in the question box. I know I've, it's late in the afternoon. Everybody's been in, in this, these webinars a long time, but I, but I appreciate everybody uh, being here. So let me see here we got, what we got. <clears throat> Um, yeah, and you, you'll get, let me ask if there's a replay. Typically, these, these are all recorded, and if you, reset, you register, you'll get them. Um, somebody's asking about how, how, much, uh, uh, how many trades would you have open at one particular time. Most of the time, the most I'll ever have on is, is about 
of five, four or five or six. Uh, I think we have about five or six on right now, but generally most of the trades you're going to have on is going to be in the neighborhood of, of two or three. That, that's generally speaking. We've, with, market's gotten kind of bullish lately, so we've had some trades on. We took two off today, but generally, you know, four or five will probably be the most. How many alerts a day can help being held overnight? Uh, again, this is a good question because a lot of folks are under PDT rules. They're uh, uh, pattern day traders, so they can't they can't trade more than three trades, uh, intraday trades every every five days. So I do a lot, a lot of overnights. I also do the time spreads on earnings, which are all overnight. Uh, so there's a lot of trades that will will keep you out of that kind of a kind of, that kind of a situation. Yeah, you have the, the we have quite a few pattern day traders. So you you obviously have to manage that um, so that you don't don't take more than three. But a lot of these are going to be overnights, and a lot of times you can just you, you can hold them. I mean, even if I have a very bullish trade and I maybe I take it in the 10 in the morning and take it off two in the afternoon, it's still bullish enough that you can you can stay in the trade. But the, but the t the time spreads and the credit spreads and the weekly ATMs are all overnight trades. None of those are going to be intraday trades. Hey, Eddie. <laughs> Thanks very much. Appreciate it. All right, somebody. Terry. Hey, Terry, how are you doing, man? As a strategy, I'll just straight call a put buying. But you would use, I, I don't, I use some, I don't know if you want to call them advanced option strategies. I do time spreads, which are calendar spreads. Uh, and I do those over earnings only to, to capture implied volatility crush. But um, the system is obviously you can use the system for whatever particular strategy you like to use. I mean, you can you can tell on a on a stock that the institutions are buying. There's no reason why you can't do credit spreads on it or I or condors on it if you like to do condors. I won't do I don't do condors or, or butterflies. I mean, if you if your option trader likes to do butterflies, you can do butterflies based on the uh, based on the comp the comp system telling you that the institutions are in there. You just have to pick your strikes. The webinar recorded, I believe it is. Yeah, I believe it is. Jack, hey, thanks very much, Jack. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Albert, appreciate your number. Rory will take care of it. Janet, you too. Thank you very much. Does the stuff will work on Ninja? It does work on Ninja. Um, the, the compass system is actually called Money Flow Tracker. Uh, on Ninja 8, and the Dominator runs only on Ninja. So the Dominator has to run on Ninja. I didn't mention that, but the Dominator runs on Ninja. Uh, I have Compass running on the Toss because I'm familiar with it, and I don't really want to have both of those packages uh, running on Ninja, but they both do run on Ninja. Uh, all those trades you described, spreads, weekly time spreads, set up, a part of the alert service. Yes, the alert service, you'll get alerted on any kind of trades we take. I, in fact, I did a time spread. Uh, tonight, um, today, on, I forget what, what stock I did it on. Um, oh, Roku. I did a I did a time spread on Roku overnight, and that went out on alerts. So that would be uh, that would be one that you would get uh, on the alert service. Our alerts only if you get the trading room. No, the alert service you can get individually. You you can buy, get the alert service right here. This alert service you don't have to be in the room. Now you get you'll get access to the room for a month just to try it out. But you can stay in the alert service without ever being in the room. Um, you, you'll, be, you'll be getting the alerts because in the room I'm, I'm trading um, anything that I put out an alert. I'm trading in the room. But I also trade some things in the room perhaps that are, are not going out on alerts because they're too quick. You know, a spy trade that's going to last for three or four candles. I'm not going to alert on something like that. And so I do call out some things within the room that won't go on alerts. But any of the majors, any of the things that's going to be on there for a while, will go out on alerts. All right. Yeah, you prefer it over toss for both systems. I prefer I prefer toss for the compass system to tell you the truth, um, personally. But that's just that's personal preference. Whatever you're used to. Uh, what service would I sign up for just to get the alert, but not needing to buy access to compass at all? Then just just get the alert service. The alert service you you will get the the trades alerted to you. You don't have to have any of the software. You're just you're going to get an SMS alert. It's going to tell you what we're buying or what we're selling and what price and what stock. 
and you can just look at it on your on your own charts and and look at it and see. Uh, but I just want you to know how I find these trades. I mean, I find these trades using the compass and the dominator system by being in the trades that the institutions are in. So when you send an alert, the user can tell this is this one is only a day trade versus I can hold it overnight. Uh, see, I don't really necessarily specify that because I don't know. When I get into the trade, if, if I hit a specific price target during the day, I might take it off. But I also may put on you know 20 contracts and take 10 contracts on and leave 10 overnight. But generally speaking, if you get a trade from me on the alert service, I'm using my the daily chart is going to align with it. So I'm going long uh, off of a five minute chart but I know the daily chart is bullish. Generally speaking, you can hold that trade overnight and uh, or for a couple of days and still be okay with it because the daily chart is what I'm focused on uh, to, to actually enter the trade. Do I only send trades that meet the compass and dominated criteria? Well, I'll send a lot of trades that don't necessarily meet the, comp the dominated criteria because a lot, of, a lot of times the dominator, which is looking at five minute timeframes, is telling me that the that the market internals are neutral, but if the but I won't be sending any trades out that don't meet the compass setup. The compass setup is important. The compass the compass system is I'm only trying to take trades that the institutions are in. Now keep in mind institutions don't necessarily get in the trade and stay in the trade forever. They can get in and get out. But when we enter the trade and when I alert on it, we, I'm going to know that the institutions are in there at the time. That's the Compass Alert service on the screen right now. Yes, right there. It's, you can get it for a year, 997, which is obviously cheaper, or 297 a quarter. <clears throat> um, yeah, for trades that go against me, am I just accepting the MAC loss? I'd use other criteria to get out early. Um, listen, I don't set stop losses. My, my losses, my stops are all based on technicals. If a, if a stock is, is pulling against me, um, but it's still bullish on the daily chart, this is the key. I get into a trade based on the daily chart. If Then if, then I'm looking at the five minute chart to find a good entry point for it. If the daily chart is bullish and the daily chart stays bullish, I'm gonna stay in the trade. Now I have to take, I have to take into consideration how long it is until expiration. If we get too close to expiration, then sometimes I'll have to either take the loss or roll it out um, or, or to break even, but generally speaking, um, you know, it's, listen, some trades go against you, you'll get a news event overnight and it'll gap down and, you, the, and the option's not worth anything, you know, five cents or something, then you have to take a max loss on those. So I'm going to have, you have some of those. I mean, that's part of trading, but um, I don't, I don't have, I'm, I'm not taking a, getting out of a trade because I'm down a certain percentage or a certain amount of dollars. No, um, it's all technical. I'm getting out based on stock breaking, breaking support or breaking resistance. Thank you, Jonathan. Appreciate it. Um, George, you think you would still have to be monitoring and managing the trades? Well, listen, I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm sending out alerts. The alerts are going to tell you price to get in, and you're going to get an alert telling you to what, what to set for your, your, your target to, to exit. Um, so, if, if, if you've got, if you, if you have a trade on, and you get an alert that says, okay, go ahead and sell this at two dollars and 25 cents you put the sell order in at two dollars and 25 cents good to cancel and you forget about it unless you get an alert that tells you to adjust it it's not a lot of trade management for anybody in the alert service it's a lot of trade management for me because <laughs> because i'm watching this but anybody in the alert service is just getting the information that uh, i'm sending to them based on my management of the trade so you don't have to do that i mean if, if you get in at a certain price and I sell you a sell order to get out at a certain price. We had we closed two trades today uh, that both were profitable. Well, all you had to do was just like when the, the alert went out, you just had to change your put your sell order in and leave it there. Do I have any? I haven't. Do it. Does it? Do I alert if it's if it's breaking down? I mean, you know, on a daily chart, I I don't look at it as a breakdown until after the until close to the end of the day. I mean, stocks fluctuate around a lot. And I tell people in the room, it's very important to, if you start to get freaked out because you start to see a, some five minute candles that are, that are really looking bad, switch over to your daily chart and see what the, what the technicals look like on the daily chart. What's the daily candle look like? 
the daily candles ugly and breaking down, then yeah, we would we would like to get out of the trade, but but not based on some five minute candles. What's the apple, average capital invested in each option? That's up to each person. It depends on your your uh, your account size. Depends on your risk. I mean, I use two thousand dollars just as a baseline, so you can see what what two thousand dollars is. As an example, if you're putting two thousand dollars into a trade. If it's the two dollars a contract for the options, you buy ten. If it's four dollars a contract for the options, you buy five. Um, but everybody has their own. Everybody has their own um, risk tolerance and account size. So you know you can do five hundred, you can do a thousand, you can do you know ten thousand. It just depends on what what your risk is. You know I would I always recommend uh, taking larger size if the if the market's in your favor. If you've got a trending market, and smaller size if the market is choppy. Market's choppy, you want to take smaller size and you want to uh, get out quicker because you're not getting those kind of moves. Today was a fairly large drop for the SPY on the whole day. You all sent an alert for puts today? Just curious. No, I, I, I did not send any anything for puts today because um, we had some puts on Chewy this week, which we uh, which we took profits in. But the, the market broke down and we put in a bullish engulfing, a bearish engulfing bar on the SPY. But the market is still bullish. If, if you look at the, the, the market, you have one down day. I'm not going to. I'm not going to switch. Um, now, if tomorrow it looks bearish, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to find stocks that are bearish on the daily chart. In other words, that are breaking down on the daily chart and in our in our bearish, and the stock is stocks a stock is bearish. Then I'll take those. Um, there's a few of them like that. And Chewy is Chewy's been like that. Um, eBay broke down very bad today on earnings. That, that's fairly bearish. So we look at that in the morning and see. Um, when you when you get an alert to close a trade at a certain price, if we have trouble getting filled, should we be adjusting profit exit to make sure it's filled? I mean, if you know, if it's I, I sent them out, I sent them out with with a, a price target. You have to you you have to use some some judgment. Everybody has to use some some judgment on on the trades. Because if I have a price set to make get out of 250 and the stock's trading at 235 or 240 and you say I'm up money I don't want to risk anymore take it off there's there's nothing wrong with it these are your trades it's your money and you know you you can certainly do those decisions I'm giving you what I feel like is is what where I've got my set of, where my stop is set or where my sell order is set but that doesn't mean you have to do that what was the cost of each of the two trades today. The ones we took off, um, what the, the, the cost is depends on what you paid for them. Um, let me see if I can, I can't remember what they were. Let me, let me look on, hold a sec. Uh, let's see, we had, um, oh yeah, we had lows. We had lows that we get in on the 21st. Now, um, those options we bought for $4.30. So you know, it depends on how many you want. But we bought from 4.30. We sold them today for 5.30. So we made a dollar profit on those. That's about a 25% profit. Um, and then we we had another one in Lyft, which was fairly small. Lyft was was a, a fairly cheap one. We paid like a dollar 89 for those, and we get out like a two bucks or something. We didn't make that. That's been kind of meandering around for a while. So we decided to to take that off. But um, that those are the two that we closed out today. How does this service compare to DTI service? I don't, I don't know DTIs. So I know who they are, but I don't know. Like, do I have an audited trade track? I, I, I mean, I'm, I've, I've, I, I can, I send out emails, uh, webinars, basically videos each month with the, with the, uh, the trades that we've taken that month, and I list the trades um, that we had made money on and lost money on, and I tell you what the overall uh, results for the, for the month is. But I'm not sending them through an auditor, <laughs> so. <clears throat> I mean, if you get, in the, if you get, if you like, don't like the service, that's fine. You don't have to stay in it. But that, that's 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 how I do it. Okay, I think that's all my questions. <laughs> David, I was going to say, with that being all the questions, I think it's a great place to say, could we direct any further questions to the number or the email address for Rightline, and David will be happy to answer them. Um, I have to say, your super system looks amazing. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, whether you want David's trade alerts with a greater than 90% win rate sent directly to your mobile device, 
or to have the entire trade system running up on your computer, Mr. David Wise has put the links for each in the chat box and we've run out of time for today. So if you have any questions, I see a lot of names in the chat box. If anybody else would like to add theirs, their phone number, their Skype, their anything like that, Right Line's number is in the chat box. I'll make sure David receives the information and you will hear from him, Rory, or another member of their staff. Uh, thanks again, David. Incredible numbers. Keep up the Appreciate great work. It, man. You guys, your members love your service. I know I was in your room for a few days and it absolutely works. Ladies and gentlemen, that concludes today's presentation on Trader's Corner. We'll be posting the recording and posting them to our YouTube channel. I'm gonna put another link in the chat box momentarily. Uh, here it is to subscribe. You can easily find the recordings of our summits. And I'd like to thank everyone for being here today. Wish you a wonderful everything. That is all in signing off. Bless everyone.